On day one, I spawned as a little baby monkey in a banana tree. But I only have three hearts! As a monkey, I can climb trees. This is awesome! But where are all my monkey friends? I was all alone when suddenly an ocelot started stealing all the bananas from my tree. Ouch, what did I do to you? I didn't have any weapons to fight, so I quickly jumped down from the tree and ran away. Whew, that was a close one. This water will be a peaceful place to catch my breath. Just when I thought I was safe, I ran into a crocodile. Ah, oh no! He wanted to eat me, but I couldn't fight him either, so I climbed up the tree to get away. After reaching the top, I broke the leaves and took a look around. This looks like a good place to hide for the night. I finally felt safe, but I couldn't help but wonder, why was I the only monkey at the tree? As I watched the sunset, I thought about how beautiful but dangerous this world is. How could a little monkey like me ever make a difference? I just need to find some friends and lay low, but I'll focus on that later and get some rest. On day two, I returned to the banana tree and the ocelot was gone. I'm hungry. I need some of these bananas. I decided to grab as many as I could to take with me on my journey ahead. I didn't see any other monkeys around, so I spent the day gathering wood and stone to make myself some stone tools. While I was doing that, I stumbled across a village of other monkeys. Wow, this place looks great. I'll have to ask someone if they've seen my tribe. I made my way to the top of the hill and saw a wise old monkey looking out at the village. Hey, have you seen any other monkeys like me around? My new friend explained to me that the banana trees in the area were slowly disappearing, and the monkeys were too. I couldn't believe it, so I grabbed any supplies I could around the village and then left to search for my tribe. By day three, I had found a nice little forest to call my new home. This will work great! I climbed up the tallest tree and started working on a treehouse for myself. It was hard work, but I'm not afraid of a little hard work. I took a break from building to work on my food source. I planted some banana trees, which grew really fast. Wow, that is one good looking banana tree. Let's see what these bananas are like. I picked the bananas off the tree and saw they were special golden bananas. I couldn't wait to take a bite. Wow, these are so good. Suddenly I grew into an adult monkey with five hearts. All right, two more hearts. I feel stronger and have a jump boost. I can run faster too. With my new abilities, I finished my treehouse in no time. It's not much, but it's a place to call home. That night I started hearing horrible noises noises outside my treehouse. When I took a look, my house was surrounded by spiders. Oh great, I totally forgot to put torches at the bottom of my base. I hope I can fight these guys off. Good thing I just made myself a sword. Get back you creepy crawlers, I won't let you get me. It was a tough fight, but I was able to clear them all out. Hmm. Maybe I'm tougher than I thought. Or maybe it was just my new sword. Yeah, probably that. With the spiders gone, I could finally get some much needed sleep. On days four and five, I set off to try and find my monkey family, but I ran into the ocelot I saw before. Hey, what are you doing here? He demanded that I give him my bananas so he could give them to his boss. No way I'm not giving you my bananas. Who is your boss and why does he want them? He told me his boss, Buff Tiger, didn't answer to anyone, especially not little monkeys like me. Before I could respond, he attacked me. Ouch, I'm not letting you pick on me this time. That ocelot was way stronger than I thought and hit me really hard. Luckily, I could climb trees and jump really high so I could easily get out of the way and hit him back. It took everything I had but I was able to wear him down and take him out. That was exhausting, but at least I know who I'm up against. But I still had so many questions. Why do they want bananas? And who is this buff tiger guy? What kind of name is that anyway? I was able to beat the ocelot, but there was clearly a bigger fight ahead, so I headed back home to prepare for the battle to come. On days six to eight, I found a cave to do some mining. If I was going to get to the bottom of this, I needed the gear to do it. Whoa, this cave is huge. I bet I'll be able to find all kinds of resources in here. While I was down there, I found flint, coal, and iron. When I got home, I crafted some furnaces, smelted the iron, and crafted an iron axe, pickaxe, sword, as well as some iron boots. It's just a little bit of protection, but these boots are better than nothing. By then, night had fallen and I could hear noises coming from outside the base. Hello? Who's there? I broke a hole in my fencing and took a peek over the edge. It was a bunch of zombies! Oh shoot, I forgot to put out torches again. Hey guys, we don't have to fight. Why don't you just leave me alone? <laughs> Alright, suit yourself. They didn't seem too happy with me being there. Eat iron, flesh face! They left me with no choice, so I fought back with my new sword and won! That felt like a much easier fight with my new equipment. I was feeling better already, but definitely needed some rest, so I hopped into bed for the night. On days 9 and 10, I woke up hungry. I had some more bananas to eat, but I needed to find something more filling than that. I decided to make a boat and use it to explore along the river. When I was exploring, I saw another village in the distance. I'm sure the monkeys there can help me find something good to eat, but as I entered the village, it was empty. Where is everyone? Something seems off. The place was deserted, so I helped myself to some wheat and watermelons to take back home. As I was rowing back home, I saw something moving in the trees. Those must be the missing monkeys from the village. But who's that? On a lower tree, I saw a tiger. Could that be the buff tiger I had been hearing so much about? He didn't look so buff to me. It looked like he was trapping those monkeys. I had to save them. I quickly climbed up a nearby tree and called out to him. Hey, what do you think you're doing with those monkeys? I'm taking these monkeys captive so they can build things for me. It's incredibly difficult when you don't have thumbs. I don't care how many thumbs you have, it isn't right. 
I didn't have a second to lose. I quickly jumped up the other trees to try and get to the trapped monkeys. Buff Tiger saw what I was doing and started moving towards them too. I had to beat him to the top. When I reached the top, I hurried and made a bridge for the monkeys to escape. Quick everyone, run across and we can get out of here. Buff Tiger let out a roar, which seemed to freeze all of them except for one, who hurried and ran across the bridge to my tree. Watch out! Buff Tiger jumped across the tree and broke the end of the bridge, blocking the rest of the monkeys off. I couldn't believe it. I was getting ready to try and jump across when the other monkey called out to me. Don't attack him, he's stronger than he looks. We'll have to try and rescue them later. All I could do was watch as he led them all away. Come on, let's hurry and get out of here. My new friend and I hurried out of the tree and jumped into a boat. Once we had reached the shore, she explained to me how Buff Tiger had kidnapped them from the nearby village. We decided we would team up and stop him. By the way, what's your name? My friends call me Chim Chim. Nice to meet you, Chim Chim. Now let's go kick some tiger tail. On days 11 through 14, Chim Chim and I arrived at the base and got right to work, building a space for her to live in. We extended the base over to the nearby tree and put up some torches. Hey, this is looking really great. It's going to be nice having a roommate around. With Chim Chim set up, I headed out to find some more supplies for the fight ahead. I was walking along when I started hearing a weird noise. What in the world is that? I cut some grass and almost stepped on a Komodo dragon. Ah, get away! I tried hitting it with my sword, but it hit back hard. Oh man, I don't feel so good. The dragon had poisoned me, which brought me down to half a heart. I gotta get out of here. While I was running away, I came across some chickens, which gave me an idea. Hey guys, I need your feathers. I'm sure you won't mind. Huh? Hearing no complaints, I gathered up all their feathers, put down a crafting table, and made myself a bow and some arrows. That dragon won't stand a chance against me now. I ran back over to the dragon and hopped up a tree. Haha, <laughs> good luck getting to me this time. I shot off a couple arrows before the dragon tried to charge me. You can't get me up here. I fired one more arrow and took him out. This thing is definitely going to come in handy. From there, I headed into a dark forest and gathered some wood, mushrooms, dirt, and stone. Once I collected that, I started a mine near my base. While I was down in the mines, I got some iron, gold, and coal. I better go get crafting. I headed back into the base where Chim Chim watched me craft a new set of iron armor. I also put together a spear. I wasn't going to need my sword anymore, so I tossed that over to Chim Chim. Hopefully you won't need this, but hold on to it, just in case. Next, I headed down to the water and cleared out an area to plant a farm. I took out my hoe, tilled the ground, and then planted some wheat seeds. I also made sure to plant some watermelon as well, since it was Chim Chim's favorite food. Then I put down some wood and set up some cocoa beans. Wow, this little starter came camp is already starting to look like a home. On day 15, Chim Chim woke me up before the sun had risen. Chim Chim, what's going on? I couldn't sleep. There's a monkey that I think you need to meet, and he can't wait. Another monkey? Lead the way. Chim Chim led me out of the base, and we entered a dark forest. It's a good thing you know where you're going, otherwise I'd be completely lost. We soon came across a small hut hidden in the thick trees. We entered the hut, and inside was a monkey shaman. Uh, hey there, what's going on? The shaman looked deep into my eyes. The great spirits have long foretold the day when a cursed tiger will seek to enslave all monkeys. They prophesied that he will steal all the bananas and use that to capture and control all the monkeys to do his will. But all hope would not be lost. A monkey would be sent to us who will master the land and defeat the tiger. Zozo, you are that monkey. I was stunned. No, it's not possible. I couldn't stop Buff Tiger before. How could I be the monkey of a legend? I don't have the strength or weapons to possibly save everyone. I'm sorry, but you got the wrong guy. I was too embarrassed to stay there any longer, so I left the hut to head home. I needed to get some rest. On days 16 through 19, I woke up and noticed that Chim Chim was missing. I looked all around the base, but couldn't find her anywhere. Chim Chim! I couldn't think of where she would go, but there was one place I knew that was incredibly dangerous. I really hoped she wouldn't be there. As I walked to the edge of the cliff, I could see Chim Chim trapped in the lava. Hang on, Chim Chim, I'm coming to rescue you. I quickly laid down some blocks and made a bridge to where she was trapped. She must have left the base without bringing any supplies. Quick, come across here before the lava rises anymore. We ran back across to safety. Chim Chim, what were you doing out there? I was really worried about you. After you told the shaman you wouldn't help, I couldn't wait around and do nothing. I was trying to go and find my captured monkey friends when I got trapped. That was really brave of you. You know what? I'll help. I don't think I'm the monkey they're talking about, but if you want to fight Buff Tiger, I can fight too. That seemed to really cheer Chim Chim up. But before we could leave, we heard a squawk from near the lava. We went to take a look and saw an emu trapped on the other side. He needs some help. Don't worry, buddy, I've got you. I put some blocks down and made a bridge for the emu to get across the lava. He followed me across, and so I built some ladders for us to climb out of the hole. When we reached the top, I asked him what he was doing down there. Turns out, he actually lived there, but had gotten trapped when the lava started rising. He explained that he heard us talking about Buff Tiger and knew something he thought might help. He said he had heard about a legendary ancient weapon made specifically to fight tigers. That sounds amazing. What is it and where do we find it? He wished us luck but told us he didn't know where it was, but said if we ran into any other animals, we should be sure to ask them if they know anything. After the emu had left, I was feeling more confident that we could do this. 
Suddenly, I felt a burst of energy and gained two more hearts. I even grew a little in size. All right, Chim Chim, we can figure this out. Let's head back to the base. On days 20 to 22, we got back to the base and saw it was surrounded by creepers. Ah, get back, you mutated pig freaks. I quickly charged with my spear and made sure the creepers couldn't damage our base. After the creepers were gone, Chim Chim said she had something she wanted to talk to me about. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. You're actually much braver than you think. How do you do it? Thanks, Jim. Maybe I am too hard on myself. When I get scared, there is one thing that always helps me. I always think of my hero. He's a big, banana-loving, necktie-wearing ape who isn't afraid of anything. He sounds amazing. I think we should build a statue in his honor. That way we can always remember to be brave. I thought that was a great idea, but before I headed off to get supplies, I finally went ahead and put some torches around the bottom of the tree to stop mobs from spawning there. Yeah, this may have been a little overdue. Then I headed off to the woods to cut down some trees. I wanted the statue to be huge, so I was going to need a ton of wood. I also went out and found some sheep so I could use their wool. I built them a pen and then harvested some cocoa beans so I could dye the sheep brown. This will be the perfect color for the statue. Chim Chim and I then cleared out a space to put the statue. It's going to take a lot of time to build this, but I think it's going to look really cool when we're all done. Once we had finished clearing a space, we started on the first part of the statue. I was glad Chim Chim was there to help. Adventures are always better when they're with a friend. After a lot of hard work, we finally finished the first part. And hey, this is actually the first video I've ever made. If you like it so far, it would mean the world to me if you subscribed and turned on notifications. That way I'll be sure to catch my next adventure. On days 23 to 27, I was in my base when suddenly a zombie in full armor came around the corner. Whoa, where did you come from? Get back, you undead creep. I managed to beat him down with my spear and noticed he dropped some kind of special item. Huh? What's this? It looks like some kind of Swiss army knife. I didn't know anything about this new item, so I decided to head to the desert and test it out. I saw some husks wandering around and gave it a swing. Whoa, this thing can set stuff on fire. There were some rattlesnakes nearby too, so I went and tested it out on them as well. Piece of cake. Then I went and tested it out on some sand and a cactus. It looks like this thing is just as good as a shovel or an axe. A tool this versatile is definitely going to help me in the future. With my test complete, I headed back home. When I arrived at the base, I saw Chim Chim talking to a couple of horses and a donkey. He explained that he heard this was a place safe from Buff Tiger and wanted to stay here too. The more the merrier, my friends. We'd be happy to have you. Our new friends are going to need a place to stay, so I cleared some space at the bottom of the tree and built them a small shelter to live in. That reminded me, I didn't want any more surprise guests climbing into my base, so I broke all of the vines off the trunk of my tree. I am a monkey after all. I definitely didn't need these vines. On days 28 to 32, I went and asked my new horse friend if he knew anything about the legendary weapon the emu had mentioned. He told me he didn't know what the weapon was, but had come across a group of anteaters in a distant forest who were collectors of interesting objects. How can I find these anteaters? I don't know if I can travel that far for that long. He told me that I should hop on his back and he could show me the way. He would get me there in no time. I threw a saddle on the horse's back and we took off into the distance. Chim Chim could keep an eye on things until I got back. After a while, we came to a bridge, but a snapping turtle was blocking the way. Uh-oh, he doesn't look friendly. Let me see if he'll let us pass. Hey there, do you mind letting us by? Hey you, get out of here. This area is controlled by Buff Tiger. No monkeys allowed. No monkeys allowed? We'll see about that. I gave him a hit with my spear, but that was a mistake. He was strong. I quickly ran back and hopped on my horse friend's back. Quick, let's jump across using that tree over there. There was a large tree in the middle of the gap, so we hopped on top of it and then jumped to the other side. See you around, Slowpoke. We had gotten by, but this land was controlled by Buff Tiger? I'd have to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. On days 33 to 36, we found the group of anteaters hanging out in a forest clearing. Hey guys, I heard you may know something about a legendary item that could defeat Buff Tiger? Are you looking for me? Who is that? I looked to my side and standing on top of a tree was Buff Tiger. So, you think some magical object can defeat me? You haven't even seen a fraction of my power. How about we settle this right here, right now? With a roar, Buff Tiger hit me. There was no way I could take him on right now. The best thing I could do was get him to leave the area. I had an idea. Over here, you big brute. I quickly ran back toward the cliff. Where do you think you're going? When he got close, I hit him with my Swiss army knife, which caused him to catch on fire. Oh, oh, oh. On fire, he had no choice but to jump into the river, which carried him away. This isn't over. I will find you. With Buff Tiger gone, I hurried back to the clearing and saw the anteater leader waiting for me. We knew Buff Tiger was hunting monkeys, but it seems like he is attacking anyone who opposes him. I'm sorry to hear it. Buff Tiger will be back though, and it's not safe here anymore. You and your family are welcome to come and live at my base. Thank you, we would love that. On days 37 to 40, I had arrived back at the base with our new anteater friends. While they checked out the new area, Chim Chim and I went to work building them their own wing of the base. We wanted to be sure they felt comfortable after having to flee from their homes. We soon finished and the anteaters moved into their new space. 
Once they were moved in, I talked to their leader and asked him if he knew anything about the legendary item. I have heard of this item before, yes. I don't know what powers it possesses, but I know it can be found in the northern ice fields. The seals there should know more about it. The ice fields, huh? Sounds cold for a monkey. I'll have to make sure I prepare myself for that journey. But before I could do that, Chim Chim and I got to work on the next part of the statue. Things were really starting to come along and I felt like maybe if I could finish the statue before I face Buff Tiger, I could have the courage and bravery of my hero. But while we got a lot done, finishing it was a task for another day. From days 41 to 43, I headed to the mines to do some mining. I was hoping to find some diamonds to upgrade my gear. While I was headed there, one of the anteaters came running up to me from a nearby cave. Hey, are you looking for diamonds? I am actually. Do you know where to find them? He explained that there were diamonds in the cave he had just come out of, but there was a cave centipede blocking the way. If I could kill the centipede, he'd let me have all the diamonds. You're scared of a little centipede? I can squish that, no problem. I headed over to the cave and peeked around the corner. The centipede was way bigger than I thought. No wonder the anteater was scared. I saw a stack of blocks I could climb up, so I climbed to the top and took out my bow. I can shoot him from up here where he can't reach me, no problem. I started shooting him with arrows, but he crawled up the wall and hit me! Uh oh, he can climb walls too! His hits had poisoned me, which brought me down to half a heart! My nice durability was also running out. If it broke, I was toast! Luckily, I was able to finish him off. Whew, that was way too close. With the centipede out of the way, I now noticed that there was a big stash of diamonds at the end of the tunnel! Awesome! Now I'll finally be able to upgrade my tools to diamond! I quickly mined out all of the diamonds, and then I worked on crafting a diamond pickaxe, sword, axe, and shovel. I also had a few extras, so I made myself a diamond helmet. On days 44 to 49, I left the base to travel to the northern ice fields and find the seals the anteaters had told me about. Oh boy, it's freezing! I hope I can find these guys quickly. I don't know how long I can stay out in this. As I was climbing over some snow, I heard a sound coming from the other side. The seals must be over this hill! I jumped over the hill and was surprised to see a couple of polar bears, who immediately started to attack me! I took out my new diamond sword and fought back! I'm much stronger now, you won't be able to take me down! After a few hits, the polar bears were down! Even I was surprised at how quickly I was able to defeat them. Maybe I could be the monkey of legend after all. I kept running across the ice fields when I saw someone getting attacked by a couple polar bears in the distance. As I got closer, I saw it was a huge orangutan fighting them off. By the time I had reached him, he had taken out both of the bears. He was really strong. Hey there, I didn't expect to see another monkey all the way out here. What brings you out this far? The orangutan didn't respond right away, but instead slowly looked me up and down. It's going to get cold soon. We'll need to build a camp for the night. Uh, yeah, okay. The orangutan and I quickly worked together to build an igloo. He didn't say much while we worked, and I was starting to get an uneasy feeling about him. But maybe he was just suspicious of me too. I decided I would try and find out. I started up a fire in the igloo, and he surprised me by asking me a question first. So, what are you doing out here? I'm looking for the seals. I was told by the monkey shaman that I'm the monkey of legend, and there are rumors of a legendary weapon that can help me defeat Buff Tiger. Oh, oh, the shaman must have lost it. How could a small monkey like you be the monkey of legend? No, no, no. I spoke to the shaman and he told me it was my destiny to save the monkeys. It must be your job to help me find the item. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but maybe he was right. He was so strong and had taken down two polar bears with no weapons at all. I knew the shaman had the wrong monkey. Uh, oh, okay, you're probably right. I'll help you in your quest. I know we need to find the seals, but I don't know where they are. They're living in a secret city not far from here. We'll go there in the morning. We both settled down for the night. I couldn't believe I thought I was the monkey of legend. On days 50 to 53, we traveled across the ice fields and soon saw the entrance to the hidden seal village. But before we could get any closer, we ran into the snapping turtle I had seen near the anteater village. You again? How did you get all the way out here? The turtle didn't respond and attacked us. I charged and noticed the orangutan hesitated before joining the fight. But once he joined, we were able to defeat him easily. Thanks for the help. You had me worried for a second there. He didn't respond to that and we headed into the seal village. We soon found the king of the village and asked for his help. He explained to us that although the city was hidden, they too were afraid of Buff Tiger. When we asked him if he knew of the legendary item, he told us that it wasn't located here. Instead, he had a map to its location, which he shared with us. Thanks for sharing this with us. We'll find the item and save everyone. From days 54 to 57, we traveled back to my base and I saw that Chim Chim had found a lot more monkeys. I'm so glad we're able to help all these monkeys. Chim Chim and I got to work on expanding the base. As we worked, I told Chim Chim about everything that had happened. When I told her how the orangutan was actually the monkey of legend, she didn't believe me. The shaman has never been wrong before. I don't know if I trust that orangutan. I believe in you, Zozo. Keep an eye out for anything suspicious. 
While we were talking, the anteater I'd saved from the centipede showed up again. Zozo, I need your help again. My little brother was playing in the jungle and got trapped in a jungle temple. Can you rescue him? I didn't have a moment to spare. Jungle temples were full of traps that could hurt a little anteater. I ran into the jungle and soon found the temple. I could hear the little guy trapped inside. Don't worry, I'm coming for you. As I made my way through the temple, I carefully broke the traps and managed to reach him. And just like that, the little anteater was free. All right, buddy, there you go. The little anteater ran out and I decided to check the chest for any good loot. Whoa, check it out, diamonds. And what's this? A diamond destroyer? This will help me break a bunch of blocks at the same time and does major damage. Nice. On days 58 to 62, Chim Chim and I got to work on our hero statue. It was really starting to come along and I was happy with how it looked. Every time we finished more, I couldn't help but feel a little more brave. I guess that mattered a little less with the orangutan around though, but it was good for me anyway. Speaking of the orangutan, I hadn't seen him in a while. Huh? What could he be up to? I was heading back to the base when I saw it was surrounded by snow leopards. These are followers of Buff Tiger. How do they find the base? I ran up and started attacking all the leopards. How did you find us? Take this. There were so many of them, but they didn't stand a chance against my new weapon. I started to take them out one by one. I had the last leopard cornered when I heard one of the chests in my base opening. Someone was in my base. I quickly climbed up the tree as the last snow leopard ran away. When I reached the top, I saw the orangutan was stealing the legendary item map from my chest. He must have told Buff Tiger where my base was. Why are you doing this? You were the chosen one. I'm sorry, Zozo, but I lied to you about being the monkey of legend. I needed you to trust me so you could lead me back to your base. Buff Tiger said he would kill my family if I didn't help him find you. I've seen how brave you are. You must be the monkey of legend. You don't have to do this. Stay and help me. We can defeat Buff Tiger if we work together. I can't lose my family. I have to bring this map to Buff Tiger and try to save them. I'm sorry. And before I could stop him, he jumped over the edge of the treehouse and escaped into the woods. Wait a second. If he told them about my base, he must have told them about the hidden seal base too. From days 63 to 66, I ran across the land and into the ice fields to find the seal village, but it was too late. Oh no, the village is in ruins. Buff Tiger must have beaten me here. As they ran into the village, I could see that the village was destroyed. Then I saw the Seal King, and he was greatly wounded. Zozo, when we told Buff Tiger we didn't have the map, he attacked. He forced us to tell us where the map led to. Hurry, and go to the Badland Mines. He'll be going there to try and find the weapon first. I'll go find it, and I'll stop him. You have my word. Just then, the Snow Leopard from before jumped down and killed the Seal King. No, how could you? I pulled out my destroyer and quickly finished him off. I couldn't waste any more time. I had to hurry and get to the mines. From day 67 to 70, I traveled to the Badlands to locate the mines. As I was getting closer, I saw someone entering the mines. It was Buff Tiger. He was going to beat me to the treasure. I can't let him beat me again. As I got closer to the entrance, something jumped down from a nearby cliff. It was a giant rocky roller. Get out of my way, I'm coming in. The rocky roller took one look at me and charged. I took a swing, but he knocked me back a lot farther than I thought he would. I don't know if I can beat this guy. I kept trying to hit him, but he took down nearly all of my health. Just then I saw someone coming over the hill. It was the orangutan. He punched the rocky roller and they started to fight. The rocky roller hit him several times, but the orangutan was able to hit him more. But before the orangutan could deliver the final blow, the rocky roller was able to escape. You're back. I'm sorry for everything, Zozo. When I returned to Buff Tiger, he didn't release my family and tried to capture me too. I ran away and knew I had to kill him help you. Boy, am I glad you showed up. Stay here and heal up. I'll see if I can still get to the item inside. On days 71 to 74, I snuck into the mines to see if I could tell where Buff Tiger had gone. I looked around and saw there were a bunch of lanterns down one of the hallways. Buff Tiger must have put these here. This should lead me right to him. I followed the lanterns until I came to a dead end, full of treasure, chests, and some cobwebs. This must be where the item is kept. I can't imagine it's still in here. I took a look in the chest. There was some good treasure, but no special item. Buff Tiger had beaten me to it again. What was I gonna do now? I had no idea where Buff Tiger's base was. I saw a tunnel leading out, which Buff Tiger must have used to escape. I made my way back out of the cave and met back up with the orangutan. Come on, let's head back to the base so we can help you heal and come up with a plan. On day 75 to 78, Chim Chim and I worked on a shelter for the orangutan. He was a big guy, so we needed to make sure he had a nice place to stay. Once we were finished, the orangutan called me over to him. I'm sorry again for everything, Zozo. Here. I think these supplies will be useful for you. 
He threw down a heart of the sea, shark teeth, and prismarine blocks. Wow, thank you! I know just what to do with these! I headed over to a crafting table and used the supplies to make myself a shield of the deep. Nothing is going to get through this. Next, I headed over to my farm to get some supplies. As I was harvesting my crops, the rocky roller came out of nowhere and attacked me again. You again! I'm ready for you this time! By using my new shield, I was able to block his attacks and hit him with my hammer. He was still tough, but with my new tools, I beat him easily this time. And stay down! After the fight, I felt some serious power coursing through me, and I turned into a giant silverback gorilla! Whoa, I'm huge now! And look, I have 20 hearts! I was so excited, I almost didn't notice the Rocky Roller had left a book behind. I picked it up and looked inside. It looks like these are orders from Buff Tiger. In the back of the book, it also had coordinates to the Rocky Roller's base. If I go there, I might be able to find out where Buff Tiger is keeping all the monkeys. I also noticed he had dropped a redstone torch. I better hang on to this. It could be helpful. On day 79 to 84, I used the book to travel to the Rocky Roller's base. I arrived at the coordinates and there was nothing there. There's nothing here, but these are the right coordinates. Did I miss something? I took a look around and saw there was a lever hiding behind some rocks. I pulled the lever and a secret door opened. Bingo, this must be it. After I entered the base, I heard someone walk up behind me. It was a lion. He must be an ally of Buff Tiger. Hang on there. I'm not looking for a fight. I want to defeat Buff Tiger too. Why would you want to do that? Aren't you cats in it together? Not at all. In fact, tigers are one of our greatest enemies. Help me search this base and we can bring him down together. He didn't look like he wanted to fight, so I agreed to work together. We both entered the base to have a look around. There wasn't a whole lot down here and it didn't seem like there was anything of use. Then I noticed some redstone markings on the wall. Wait a second, the rocky roller dropped a redstone torch. I wonder what happens if I put it here. I placed the redstone torch and the blocks moved, revealing a secret room. What could be in here? Inside the room there was a book. I opened it and saw there were some weird symbols inside. These are coordinates to Buff Tiger's base, but someone needs to decipher the code. I know someone who can help. Come on, let's get out of here. But as I started to leave the base, the lion hit the lever and closed the doors before I could get out. Hey, what's the big idea? Open the door. I can't let you do that, monkey. It's true, I want to defeat Buff Tiger, but that's so I can be the Lion King. All monkeys should be serving me, not him. We'll see about that. I took out my destroyer and shield and started fighting him. With my new strength, he didn't stand a chance. He got some hits in, but I was able to strike the fatal blow in no time. On days 85 to 89, I headed to the monkey shaman's hut. I knew he would be able to translate the coordinates. When I arrived, the shaman opened his door and walked out. Zozo, is it really you? My, how you have grown since we last met. I need your help. I found the coordinates to Buff Tiger's base, but it's in some kind of strange language. Can you read it? Ah, that's because these are coordinates for a place not of this world. A different dimension entirely. Not of this world? But he's a tiger. They live in this world. He may look like a tiger now, but he's hiding a dark secret. Take this tiger pearl and build a portal. It will take you where you need to go. I took the pearl and started heading back to the base. What did he mean a dark secret? I guess I would find out soon enough. From days 90 to 94, I headed deep underground and found some obsidian and some copper. While I was down there, I also came across some diamonds. This is just what I needed. I can use this to finish making my armor. Once I had all of the supplies I needed, I headed up to the surface and crafted the rest of my diamond armor. Then I smelted all the copper and made some copper blocks. Then finally, I equipped the rest of my diamond armor. Now I'm ready for a fight. Then I headed outside and put together the special portal. I was all geared up to travel to Buff Tiger's base, but there were still a few more things I needed to finish first. From days 95 to 96, I grabbed Chim Chim and we worked on finishing the statue. I felt like I couldn't face Buff Tiger without finishing it first. This was a monkey I looked up to, and it felt like this was one of the final steps of my preparation. Soon, the statue was complete. This looks amazing, Zozo. I think your monkey hero would be proud. I'll give you a minute to take it in. I think so too. Thanks for all of your help, Chim. I couldn't have done it without you. Chim Chim headed back to the base and I took a long look at the finished statue. Suddenly, I heard a voice coming from the statue. Zozo, I've been watching your progress. You have a big fight ahead of you, but you can do it. You're a braver monkey than I ever was. You are the monkey of legend. Thank you, that means so much to me. I feel like I've finally gotten strong enough to be worthy of the title. You were always worthy. Remember, it's not about how big you are on the outside, but how big you are on the inside. Good luck. Tomorrow, I'm taking the fight to Buff Tiger's front door. On days 97 to 98, I took time to visit with all the animals who had joined our new home. Many of them were scared, but I assured them I would find their friends and families and bring them home. Secretly though, I was feeling nervous because I still hadn't gotten the legendary weapon. Finally, I was ready to light the portal, but as I walked up to it, Chim Chim jumped down in front of me. What's wrong, Chim? I can't let you go in there alone. I want to help. 
I know. I wish you could come with me, but if anything happens to me, everyone here is going to need a strong leader to help them move on. We can't risk losing you too. Chim Chim nodded and moved out of the way. Before I go through, is there anything else you need to say? Yes, everyone who is watching the video should like it and subscribe. There are going to be so many more adventures, and we want everyone to be able to follow along. I couldn't have said it better myself, Chim. Well, here goes nothing. I took a deep breath and threw the tiger pearl into the portal. On day 99, I suddenly appeared on the other side of the portal, standing in a dense jungle. I looked out over the treetops and could see a sprawling city before me. I made my way down the trees and into the city streets. Look at all of this. There's no way a tiger built this. He must have built this with all the monkeys he took prisoner. As I wandered through the city, I saw a sign pointing to the prison. That must be where the monkeys are. I made my way there and soon saw the large prison building. I climbed up the wall and ran into a snow leopard on top. I quickly finished him off and then jumped into the prison yard below. I could see all the monkeys in cages. Don't worry everyone, I'll break you out. I kept fighting the guards until they were all destroyed. Then I quickly started breaking all the cages. Go free everyone, you need to all leave before Buff Tiger shows up. As I broke the rest of the cages, all I could think about was finding the legendary weapon. I had to find it before I faced Buff Tiger, but at least now all the monkeys were free. On day 100, I saw a sign pointing to the palace. That must be Buff Tiger's palace. I'll bet he keeps the legendary item in there. I made my way into the palace and took out a couple of guards. The place was nearly empty. Buff Tiger must be out capturing more monkeys. I then made my way into the basement where I saw a banana katana floating over a pedestal. Could that be what I think it is? Legendary banana katana, infused with potassium. This is it. I heard a tiger growl outside. Buff Tiger, he must be back. I walked outside and saw Buff Tiger was waiting for me with an ocelot by his side. Buff Tiger, this ends today. I have the ultimate weapon. Oh, you really think that rusty artifact can do anything to me? Did you even look at its durability? I looked closer and saw that he was right. The weapon was nearly destroyed. But this was a weapon of legend, wasn't it? Surely it was stronger than it looked. Get him. The ocelot charged. I swung the banana katana and killed the ocelot in one hit, but the weapon broke. Aha, uh -huh. you see what happens when you believe in fairy tales? I was going to let you work for me, but I think I will just end you instead. Suddenly, everything began to shake, and Buff Tiger transformed into an even stronger tiger. This must have been the dark secret the shaman was talking about. How am I going to defeat him? I'm not strong enough. Suddenly, I remembered the words of my hero. It's not about how big you are on the outside, it's how big you are on the inside. He was right. The true power had been in me all along. I was ready. All right, Buff Tiger, let's dance. We charged at each other and exchanged blows. He was incredibly strong, but by using my shield and special powers, I was able to stay in the fight. Why won't you die, you scum? You messed with the wrong monkey. I could feel myself getting stronger with every hit I landed. I was winning. I'm sending you into another dimension, one where you can't come back. With a final strike, Buff Tiger was finally defeated. After Buff Tiger had disappeared, I climbed the hill and saw some monkeys celebrating. Finally, we can all go home. On day one, I spawned in as a rabbit. Oh no, I only have one heart. I'm gonna have to be really careful if I'm gonna survive. But check it out, I can jump high and I'm super fast. I took a look around and I could see there are tons of other bunny friends around. But suddenly, they all ran away. Hey guys, what's going on? Just then, a fox appeared. That must be why the other bunnies ran away. I had to be careful. If that fox landed just one hit on me, I was done for. Luckily, I was able to run really fast and jump super high, so I was able to outrun the fox and get away. The best thing I can do today is just survive. I better find a good place to hide for the night. I took a look around until I found a good spot. I dug into the side of the hill and hunkered down for the night. Maybe I can find all of my bunny friends in the morning. On day two, I woke up and went to go look for my bunny friends. As I arrived back at the spawn point, I didn't see anyone around. Where could everyone have run off to? I wasn't sure where to start looking for them, but I had an idea. Maybe if I can build a really cool bunny house, they'll come back. If I was gonna build a cool bunny house, I needed some tools. So I headed off into the forest to get some supplies. After a while, I had gathered enough supplies to be able to build my first tools. I put as many tools together as I could, including a sword. With my new tools in hand, I headed into the mine to get some stone. As I was mining, I was suddenly attacked by a spider. Whoa, get back! I had to be really careful. If I took even one hit, I was done for. It's a good thing I had made myself a sword though, because with that, I was able to defeat him. Oh man, that was too close. I better get to work. On day three, I got to work starting to build my new base. Since rabbits live underground, I thought it'd be cool to build out a bunch of tunnels underground. It was a lot of hard work, but soon the base was all set up. All right, the base is done, but I don't see any more bunnies. I better go look for them. I headed off into the forest, but I could hear someone up ahead. On top of a tree, I could see a little squirrel. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing up there? I'm up 
here hiding from the Big Bad Wolf. You better watch out too. The Big Bad Wolf? Oh man, he sounds like a lot of trouble. How about we stick together? It'll be safer. I think that's a great idea. On days four to five, the squirrel and I headed into the forest to get some more materials. As we explored the forest, we came across some more friends. The first animal we saw was a raccoon. Hey, have you heard of the Big Bad Wolf? Yeah, that guy's a real jerk, but he's been leaving me alone for the most part. I don't know if I want to get involved. Sorry. Well, I hope you change your mind. The squirrel and I kept going through the forest until we came across a bear and her cubs. Uh-oh, I hope that bear won't eat us. I took a deep breath and walked up to the bear. Hey, do you know the Big Bad Wolf? Yeah, but why would I care about that guy? He doesn't bug me and I don't bug him. Say, you're looking a little tasty. Um, okay, well, thanks for telling me about it. Talk to you later. Bye. The squirrel and I got out of there. I didn't want to risk anything else wanting to hunt me. As we got deeper into the forest, we started to chop down some trees. Hey, hey you! I turned around and looked up into the tree. A monkey was looking down at me. Uh, yeah, what's up? That's my tree! What do you think you're doing chopping down my tree? The monkey was mad, but I only needed a little bit of wood. It didn't matter to him, though, and he jumped down and charged. You're gonna pay for this! Uh-oh, if this monkey hit me, I was a goner. But just then, the squirrel jumped in and helped me out. Together, we were able to put up a good fight. The monkey wasn't gonna be able to hurt both of us. By working together, we were able to defeat him. Sorry, Mr. Monkey, I didn't want to fight you, but you left me with no choice. On day six through eight, the squirrel and I continued through the forest. We were feeling pretty good about ourselves. We had had a couple of victories, and we were getting a lot of supplies. We'd even met a few of the other animals. As I kept wandering through the forest, though, I heard something scary up ahead. As we got closer, we saw the source of the noise. It was the fox, and he had a group of bunnies cornered. You have nowhere to run, and now I'm going to eat you. Oh no, I can't let him eat those other bunnies. But what am I supposed to do? I can't take him on by myself. That's when I remembered I wasn't by myself. I had my squirrel friend with me. Let's do this. The squirrel just started to charge. He didn't even wait for me. Wait, what are you doing? Oh, a little appetizer. The fox took one swing, and the squirrel was immediately defeated. Oh no, my friend. Hmm, looks like there's another snack over there for me too. The fox took one look at me, but I had to get out of there. I'm not going to be his dinner today. I'm I'm sorry, other bunnies, but you're on your own for this one. I ran as fast as I could straight back to my burrow. I couldn't risk having him find out where I lived, or worse, eating me. I was just gonna have to help those other bunnies out another day. I feel bad about leaving all those bunnies behind, but what was I gonna do? I'm just not strong enough. On days 9 to 11, I was feeling bad about running away, but I wasn't strong enough to fight. As I ran through the forest, I came across an abandoned village. Oh look, a ton of carrots! I gathered up as many carrots as I could. There was even a bunch of wheat and pumpkins too. I decided this would be a good place to spend the night. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a strange sound outside. Oh no, there's a bunch of skeletons out there. I ran out of the house with my sword in hand. There was no way I was going to back down this time. I charged out of the house, swinging my sword. I'm not scared of you. I kept swinging until one by one, all of the skeletons were destroyed. Man, these fights are terrifying when you only have one heart, but I feel better now that I've won a fight. Even though I had won the fight, I was too scared to go back to bed. So I decided to spend the night looking through the rest of the village. I found some more food, as well as some other supplies. I even found a whole stash of iron. Awesome, now I can start making some iron gear. I ran back over to the crafting table and put together an iron chest plate and equipped it. On day 12, I emerged from my house in the village and headed back into the forest. I was running through the woods when I saw a carrot on the ground up ahead. Oh, what luck, a free carrot. As I continued through the forest, I saw there were even more carrots. I decided to keep picking them up. I was going to need as many as I could get. Just then, I picked up one of the carrots and suddenly fell through a trap door. Whoa, I landed inside a small room and there were several other rabbits looking at me. Uh, hi guys, what's going on? You're not the big bad wolf. I turned around and saw a large elderly bunny looking down at me. No sir, I'm not. What's going on around here? Oh, I see you're new around here. Let me explain. For years, the forest was a beautiful and peaceful place. All the animals were happy, living in harmony. The wolf would try to hunt us, but we could always get away. Then one day, something changed. The wolf had discovered some kind of magic, which he used to give himself a cloaking ability. Suddenly, we could no longer hide, because we didn't know when he would attack. We have been in hiding ever since. No, how can we stop? Him. There is an ancient relic known as the Rad Glasses, crafted by our bunny ancestors. Its pieces have been scattered across the land, but if you bring them to me, I can craft them anew. They will allow you to see the wolf, even when he cloaks. Do you think you can help us? Not very strong, but I'll do my best. On days 13 to 15, I had arrived back at my base and made a couple improvements to the inside. Then I went outside and started working on a farm and planted some of the carrots I had collected. It wasn't much, but it was a place to call home. I needed to get some sand though, so I headed off to the desert to gather some. I managed to get a bunch of it when suddenly, a group of rattlesnakes came slithering up behind me. Hey guys, can I help you? The rattlesnakes just stared at me, then they attacked. 
Hey, that's not very nice. Luckily their bite wasn't too bad because I still only had a heart. I was able to keep moving and I took them all out. Suddenly I felt a burst of energy and I grew into a bigger killer bunny. And look, now I have five hearts. I'm feeling way better already. On day 16 to 19, I returned back to the base and made a few adjustments now that I had gotten a little bigger and stronger. Later, as I was harvesting some of my crops, I saw a squirrel walking up to the base. Hey, I've been looking for you. Hey there, what's up? I saw you were with my sister when that fox attacked her. She seemed to trust you, so I want to help you too, for my sister. I'll take all the help I can get, and I'm sorry for what happened. I'm much stronger now and won't be running away from anything. We then set off, making some more improvements to the base. It turned out the squirrel's name was Rocky, and he was happy to help. After we had finished upgrading parts of the base, he pulled me aside for a chat. Thanks again for letting me help, Zozo. I had an idea for the base. I think we should build something that will make the other bunnies know that this is a safe place. Oh, I know just what to make, but we're gonna need a lot of orange dye. We ran off into a flower field and got to work, grabbing as many orange tulips as we could to make the dye. On days 20 to 22, we were heading back to our base when the fox popped out from around the corner. Ah, the bunny that got away. I'm gonna get you this time. You aren't hurting anyone this time. I jumped into battle and started swinging away at the fox. Rocky jumped into the fight too. With my new strength, the fox didn't stand a chance. We beat him easily. Nice going, Rocky. How did he find our base? I don't know. The only thing I can think of is that he must have seen me and followed me here. Sorry about that. That's okay. But it reminds me, we need to start looking for the parts to those special glasses. Do you have any ideas of where we could look? I've got one idea. But before we get there, we're gonna need some serious upgrades first. On days 23 to 26, I was deep underground looking for resources. Luckily for me, I was able to find a bunch of iron as well as some coal. This is just what I needed. Now I can finish making my iron armor. I took some of the stone I had collected and used it to craft a furnace. Then I added the coal and iron to smelt myself some iron bars. Once the iron bars were complete, I used them to craft myself iron tools, including an iron sword. Then I used the rest to finish crafting my iron armor. Now I'm really powered up. I decided to keep exploring the cave when I suddenly ran into a group of zombies. Try and fight me now, you flesh heads. The zombies could pack a punch, but they were no match for my new gear. I swung my sword and was able to take them out. I kept going down the tunnel when a spider dropped down from the ceiling. Oh, gross. Spiders are disgusting. As the spider charged at me, I swung my sword. He managed to get a couple bites in, but he couldn't do much against my armor. Soon enough, it was defeated. I wonder what's going to be at the end of the tunnel. Up ahead, I could see something glowing in the distance. What could it be? I walked into a large open room and subscribe? Hey, it's not a bad idea. If you love going on these adventures as much as I do, I'd love for you to hit the button and the bell. That way, you'll never miss out. On days 27 to 31, Rocky and I headed into the woods to look for the first crafting item we'd need for the glasses. I could hear a noise up ahead when suddenly a wolf hopped up on some stone blocks, blocking our path. Ooh, a delicious bunny. The big bad wolf isn't going to mind if I eat you myself. Go on and hide, Rocky. I can take this guy. The wolf and I charged at each other. He was pretty strong, but so was I. He snarled and bit, getting some hits in. He even got me down to half a heart, but I knew I could win. Your bark is worse than your bite. I gave one more swing and took him out. As he disappeared, I saw he dropped some kind of special item. Huh? What's this? I picked it up and saw it was a fire rod. Oh, cool. I wonder what this will do. Later on, I was walking along the water when a crocodile popped out and attacked me. I swung my fire rod, immediately catching him on fire. Whoa, nothing like a well-roasted croc for dinner. The crocodile panicked and jumped back into the water. Yeah, you'll think twice about messing with me next time. On days 32 to 35, Rocky and I arrived in the Badlands. Rocky had told me he had seen something strange in the area and thought it would be worth checking it out. As we rounded the corner, I saw a weird sign. Let the water lift you up. What does that mean? There was a nearby lever, so I gave it a flick and nothing happened. What happens when you jump in the water? Rocky jumped into the water, but there was no effect. I don't think that's it. Let's try hitting one of these buttons. Rocky clicked on one of the buttons on the wall and an arrow came flying out right over Rocky's head. Whoa, I don't think that's it. I guess I'll give this other one a try. I nervously reached forward and hit the button and some redstone dust popped out. Look, you can put the dust here to complete the circuit. I walked over by Rocky and put down the redstone dust. Then I flipped the switch. This time, a column of water came pouring down. That did the trick. I jumped into the column of water and swam to the very top. When I reached the top, there was a chest. Inside of the chest, there were some different brick blocks as well as one glowstone. Hmm, this isn't exactly what I was expecting. Zozo, up here. I followed Rocky up another flight of stairs and saw some glasses frames at the top. This is just what we were looking for. The first piece. The elder rabbit will be excited to see this. On days 36 to 39, Rocky and I returned back to the base. First things first, I needed to craft a new fence. I couldn't risk another attack by the big bad wolf gang, or worse, the wolf himself. By using some of the brick, I was able to make a nice perimeter fence. Once that was complete, Rocky and I worked together to make him his own place too. Thanks for all your help so far, Rocky. I think it'll be good for you to have your own place. I'm happy to be here. Let's build a pen and get some sheep. That way we can work on the statue. Good idea. Rocky and I headed into the forest and managed to find a herd of sheep. Using leads, we roped them up and led them back to their new pen. 
With the sheep all locked up, I then took some orange dye and got to work dyeing all of the sheep orange. Orange, you guys glad you're not dinner? I went ahead and sheared all of the sheep, then collected all of the orange dye. From there, Rocky and I headed off to find a good spot to build the statue. Once we found a suitable location, we got to work clearing a space, building up a base, then working on the statue itself. After a bit, the first part was complete. Nice job, Rocky. This is a good spot to stop. As we were taking down the scaffolding, a group of parrots walked up to us. Hey, hey, you're Bunny. You must be against the big bad wolf then. You'd be correct. What's up? We've been on the run ever since the wolf started cloaking. Nowhere feels safe. I know what you mean, but there's safety in numbers. You guys should come join us at our base. That's just what we need. We'll go gather our things and then we'll meet you there. I told them where to go and they headed off. Back at the base, Rocky and I got to work building them their own house to stay. I couldn't believe the wolf was even hunting birds. We'd do our best to keep them safe. I started days 40 to 43 by putting in some paths throughout the base. The next morning, I got to work harvesting the carrots and planting some pumpkins. Then I filled the rest of the spots with carrots. We've got a lot of new friends starting to show up. I've got to be sure everyone is well fed. Just then, the parrots walked up and I finally got to show them the place I had built for them. They were really excited to have a safe place to rest. After they took a look around, their leader came to talk to me. You're looking for the parts of the rad glasses, right? The ones that let you see the invisible wolf? I am. Do you know something about their parts? Only rumors. I've really only heard about one of the parts, that is. But I don't know if you're gonna love where you have to go to find it. I'll do whatever it takes. On days 44 to 49, I was getting ready to leave my base for the new location. I think it'll be better for you to stay here, Rocky. I don't know if this will be the best place for a squirrel. Rocky understood and agreed to work on the base while I was gone. After a long journey, I finally arrived in the area the parrot had told me about. Oh man, it's freezing here. No wonder the parrot said I wouldn't like it. Just then, I stumbled across an abandoned igloo. This will be a great place to stop and rest. As I left the igloo though, I was suddenly attacked by a snow leopard. Whoa, where did you come from? The snow leopard was vicious. He had giant fangs and powerful claws. He must have set this camp up as a trap. I'll never let the wolf and his allies win. I swung with all my power and took him out. It's a good thing I upgraded all my armor before I left. Otherwise, I'd be rabbit stew. On days 50 to 53, I had finally made it out of the cold and arrived at the place the parrot had mentioned. As I walked up to the tower, I saw there were two wolves standing guard. Hey, can I come in? No. Well, that was a short conversation. I don't know why I even bothered asking. They're wolves. Of course they'll just attack me. This wolf was just a junior guard, so I finished him off easily. You're not getting in my way either. I turned and attacked the other guard too, who didn't put up much of a fight, and I defeated him in no time. All right, let's get that glasses part. I climbed to the top of the tower, but there was another wolf waiting for me. This one was stronger than the others. By using my fire rod though, I managed to light him on fire and eventually take him out, nearly losing my life in the process. Hey there, can you help me out? I took out my axe and started chopping away at the nearby cage. There was no part for the glasses, but there was a bunny trapped inside. Thanks for breaking me out. Let me guess. You were looking for a piece of the glasses. Yeah, I was. Do you know anything about it? I was here looking for it too, but I guess it got moved to a dungeon far away from here. That's what I heard the henchmen saying anyway. Shoot, that is in the complete opposite direction. Well, might as well stop at my base in the meantime. Feel free to join me there. The rabbit agreed, and we headed off for the base. On days 54 to 57, the bunny and I arrived back at the base, which was on fire. Oh no, what's going on? As I got closer, I could see that the base was being attacked by a pack of wolves. Standing outside the base, I could see the big bad wolf. He was giving orders to his men. The wolf gang headed into the base and rounded up all the parrots. They were taking them prisoner. I don't have the glasses yet, but I have to do something. I sprinted into the base, sword in hand. The wolves attacked. Get out of my home. We never did anything to you. One by one, I cut down all the wolves. Soon enough, the only one left was Mr. Big Bad. You're gonna pay for this. I charged at the big bad wolf, leaping into the air, when suddenly he disappeared. Oh, you you coward! I'll find you! On days 58 to 62, I took a look around at all of the damage. I couldn't believe I didn't keep everyone safe. As I walked around, I could see that everyone was gone. That's when I heard a noise from under the table. Rocky, what are you doing under there? Zozo, I was so scared, but this was all my fault. I told the wolves where the base was. He had captured my squirrel friend and said he would hurt him if I didn't tell him where to go. Rocky, you should have told me. We could have rescued your friend together. I know, I'm so sorry. In the end, he didn't let my friend go and just took away all of our new friends. I hope you can forgive me. I felt bad for Rocky. I could tell he was sorry. It's okay. I know you just wanted to help your friend. We can figure it out together. In the meantime, though, we better go get some supplies to rebuild the base. From there, I headed into the mines and managed to find plenty of iron, as well as some gold and coal. I smelted down all of the iron and used it to make some iron bars. Then I headed out to the river and scooped up a bunch of clay. I then used the clay to make more bricks. At long last, I headed outside and replaced the fence with iron bars, while also repairing any other holes with the bricks. It took a while, but soon, the defenses were complete. Those wolves are gonna have 
have a heck of a time breaking in again. On day 63 to 66, I told the bunny and Rocky to hang back at the base while I headed out to the dungeon. This could be dangerous, and I didn't want to lose any more friends. The journey was a long one, and I passed through all kinds of different terrain. As I was passing over a mountain, I saw a wolf in the distance, just as it destroyed a baby elephant. It was the big bad wolf. What have you done? <laughs> I charged at the wolf, but he disappeared again. What kind of monster would attack an innocent elephant? As I looked down, the elephant's mom came over the hill. What have you done to my baby? No, it wasn't me. It was the big bad wolf. The elephant didn't care, and she attacked. I took a few swings to keep her back as I tried to explain, but she wasn't listening. My only option was to run away as fast as I could. On day 67 to 70, I could see the entrance to the cave up ahead. It looked really dark and scary. This must be it. Who knows what's waiting for me inside? I entered the cave and soon found out. Waiting for me was a group of skeletons. Ah, why are you guys so creepy? The skeletons swung their swords and shot their arrows as I jumped around, hitting them with my sword. They got some hits in, but I was able to take them all out. I headed deeper into the caves and saw a spawner. Let's just get rid of this. I can't fight these mobs off for forever. On day 71 to 74, I pushed further into the mines when I saw some diamonds. Wow. Oh, those would help me so much. I quickly put up a bridge to cross over when suddenly the wall exploded and a zombified piglin came bursting through. Whoa! I quickly pulled out my fire rod and lit him up. He lit on fire, but my fire Fire rod broke. Ouch, he's so strong. I swung with my sword as my health dropped, finally taking him out. As he disappeared, he dropped something. I picked huh? it up, a diamond hammer. This thing is powerful, and I'm getting it just in time, too. Excited about my new weapon, I headed back over to the diamonds and mined them out, being careful not to drop them in the lava. With the diamonds in hand, I put down a crafting table and made myself a pair of diamond leggings to replace my iron ones. Maybe we can make it through here after all. On day 75 to 78, I had finally reached a big, empty room. There was a chest on the other side. Hello? Looks like this place is deserted. I walked over to the chest when suddenly I heard a thump behind me. I turned around and saw a giant spider had dropped down from the ceiling. Oh, hey man, you mind if I grab what's in the chest and leave? You wish, buddy boy. You're not getting out of here alive. I thought you might say something like that. Just then, the spider leaped forward and attacked. I got hidden, but not before he started shooting his webs at me. Oh boy, this isn't going to be as easy as I was hoping. Looks like it's time to get my very own lucky rabbit foot. That's just a weird thing to say. The spider charged at me, but I was ready. I jumped out of the way, causing him to jump into the pool of lava. I'll keep my feet, thanks. Just then, I felt the energy surge through me, and I leveled up into a buff bunny man. Whoa, I have ten hearts now, too. I went over to the chest and opened it. Inside were the lenses to the rad glasses, long with a bunch of diamonds. I can't wait to see what the Elder Rabbit can do with these. On day 79 to 84, I arrived at the Elder Rabbit's house. Sir, I've got everything you need to remake the rad glasses. Zozo, well done, well done. This is just what we needed. The Elder Rabbit quickly turned to his enchanting table and assembled the glasses, imbuing them with special power. He turned and tossed them back to me. Take these and take courage. The hope of all bunny kind rests with you now. We know you can do it. Thank you. I'll give it everything I've got. I turned and left his house. Time to get ready for the final final fight. On days 85 to 89, I arrived back at the base and saw the rabbit and Rocky had done a great job improving it. Nice job, you guys. This place looks amazing. Thanks, Zozo. We had a lot more creatures come and join us, so we had to build them all a place to stay. Aren't they scared? Yes, but they believe in you and know this is the safest place for them to be. I sure hope so. That reminds me, we better finish our special project. There could be more creatures out there. Rocky and I headed back out to our statue and got to work finishing it up. This carrot was going to be a beacon to all the animals in the area that this was a safe place. It didn't take long and we were soon finished. Now let's go get prepped. We've got some wolf butt to kick. On days 90 to 94, I was back in the base, putting together some diamond armor. I used the diamonds I had found in the dungeon, as well as some additional ones Rocky had found in the cave. I better go check the chest too. Rocky said he had some stuff for me in there. I opened the chest and saw it was full of healing potions. I grabbed them all and added them to my inventory. I'm feeling pretty stacked. Let's go wolf hunting. On days 95 to 96, I ran across the land in the direction of the wolf's base. It wasn't too long until I hit a river. The wolf's base was supposed to be further downstream, so I chopped down a nearby tree and built myself a boat. As I paddled down the river, I soon entered a dense jungle. It wasn't too long until I came across my first wolf. Hey, leave that cat alone. I ran ashore and started swinging, saving the cat. Thank you. I thought I was a goner for sure. No problem. I'm just glad you're okay. You're so nice. Here, follow me. I saw something I think you'll find useful. Cat set off into the trees as I followed close behind. We soon reached a small stone building covered in cobwebs. I cut down the webs and opened the chest inside. A trident and a shield. You're right. These will help a ton. Thank you. Happy to help. I owe you after all. I invited the cat to stay at my base, to which he happily agreed. I decided to give the trident a test, sticking it into the nearby tree. This thing is awesome. It's definitely going to help in the fight. I headed back to my 
my boat and kept rowing down the river. Suddenly, the crocodile from before popped out. This guy again. I thought I taught him a lesson the last time. The crocodile lunged at me, catching me in his jaws. Oh, let me go! I swung my sword as he kept trying to do damage to me. This guy was tough. Let's see how you like this. I took out my trident and threw it, spearing him into oblivion. Better luck next time, pal. On days 97 to 98, I was rowing down the river when I saw my stop up ahead. I jumped out of the boat and started climbing the mountain. The wolf's lair soon came into view. As I got closer, a couple of wolves attacked. Sorry guys, but you picked the wrong guy for a boss. By using my sword, trident, and shield, I managed to fend them off. I entered the mansion, and more wolves attacked. They were vicious, but they were no match for my new armor and weapons. One by one, I took them out. Let's see, where could this guy be? I'll check the basement. I headed down the stairs and saw a tarantula at the end of the hallway. Who charged? What's with this guy and spiders? The tarantula managed to stick me with a stinger, which poisoned me. It was doing damage, so I had to be quick. Luckily, I was able to take him out as the poison wore off. Let's try upstairs instead. I headed to the second floor as a couple of wolf guards came charging at me. I could tell these guys thought they were cool, but they couldn't get past my shield. Guess they weren't the smartest couple of doggos. I managed to take them both out. I was rounding one of the corners when a monkey came running up to me. Hey you! Oh hey! Wow, you sound just like me! That's because I am you. From the other video. Oh yeah! The video where I survived 100 days as a monkey. That's right! Yeah, I just wanted to stop by and tell people they should come watch my monkey adventure after they finish this one. I think they'll like it. I agree. That was a crazy adventure. Tell Chim Chim I say hi. I will! Good luck with the wolf! Thanks! Wow, what a nice guy. On day 99, I reached the top floor of the lair where the big bad wolf was sitting on his throne, waiting for me. Well, 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 if it isn't the little bunny who cried wolf. You think you're so strong, but you attack bunnies who can't see you. You're a coward. Is that so? Now you're just making me angry, and I was already hungry. You won't like me when I'm hangry. The wolf leaped forward and attacked. He was strong, but I was ready. He got a few bites in, but I landed some blows of my own. I could tell he wasn't expecting me to be so strong. Let's see how you like this. The wolf started summoning in some smaller wolves, who I was able to easily outmaneuver and defeat. Then I hit the wolf with my sword, causing him to retreat. Still a coward, hiding behind others to fight for you, I see. I'm not a coward. I'm just powerful. Enough games. This ends now. Suddenly, the wolf disappeared and started to attack me. And now you're cloaking? You're just proving me right. The wolf reappeared on his throne. Who cares? You'll be gone soon. No one can stop me when I use my powers. I quickly grabbed my rad glasses and put them on. The wolf used his cloaking power again, but I could still see him. What? How did you hit me? Not so invisible after all, are you? How dare you? The wolf let out a flurry of attacks, which caught me off guard, nearly taking all of my health. Maybe I was being a little too cocky. He only had to hit me one more time, and I was done for. Zozo! I looked over and saw Rocky standing by the stairs. Catch! He threw a splash potion at me, which immediately restored all of my health. No! I pulled out my trident and threw it at the no. wolf, destroying him for good. Rocky, I can't believe you followed me here. I'm glad you did, though. You saved the day. But our work here isn't done yet. On day 100, I headed down into the basement and used my hammer to break the animals out of their cages. Be free, my friends. It's safe now. After I had broken all of the animals out, I stood by the door of the mansion as the creatures ran to freedom. Sometime later, I was back at my base, surrounded by all my new friends. Thanks for all of your help, and I'll catch you in my next adventure. On day one, I spawned in as a baby goat. Oh, I'm a tiny little goat. And oh, hoo, hoo, look how high I can jump. Let's see how fast I can climb this hill. I hopped on over, and that's when I realized I could climb the sides of the hills too. Oh, yeah, look at me go. I was feeling pretty good about myself, hip hopping around, when I was suddenly attacked by a raptor. A dinosaur? What century is this? I didn't have time to worry about that, though, because I only had four hearts. The problem was, I had nowhere to run. That's when I noticed I had some sort of special ability. Headbutt. All right, I'll give it a try. I swung my head head and sent the raptor flying straight off the cliff. Sayonara! I headed down the hill. What was a dinosaur doing around here? Suddenly there was a rustling up ahead and a whole pack of raptors were coming right at me. More of them? I don't think I can take on a whole pack. They were closing in fast so I jumped up the side of the hill and started to climb. They couldn't follow me straight up the side of a cliff. Better luck next time, boys! The raptor snarled at me and left. I kept watch for the rest of the day. Who knew if those raptors would attack again? On day two, I headed down off the cliff. I had to be careful, just in case there were any dinosaurs lurking around. Just then, I heard a cry out in the distance. Help! I rushed off toward the sound and saw a little baby goat getting attacked by a couple of foxes. Hang on, buddy. I charged at the foxes with my head, knocking them back. No one was going to be picking on any goats today. They weren't very tough, and I was able to knock them both out. That was a close one. No problem. What's your name? You can call me Billy. That makes sense. Come on, Billy. I know a spot that's safe from all the meanies out here. Billy and I headed back over to my little cave, climbing up the mountain. This will be a safe place for us to stay for the night, but I think we can make it a little nicer. I ran outside and cut down some wood, then used it to make a crafting table. Then I used the crafting table to
able to make a wooden axe. Now I can get all the wood I need. After I'd collected all the wood I needed, I started clearing out the cave, filling it with a nice wood floor. Then I added all the things Billy and I would need for a good starter base. Hopefully nothing would attack us in the night. On day three, Billy and I had decided we would look for supplies, but first, I needed to make some stone tools. Using my crafting table, I made all the tools we could possibly need. Hopefully we could find a good food source. All right, Billy, let's get out there and see what we can find. While we were looking for any resources that might help, we were mostly hoping to find food because we knew we would be getting hungry sooner rather than later. Luckily for us, we soon saw a farm in the distance. Okay, I don't see anyone. If we're really sneaky, we can probably take just a little bit without getting caught. Billy and I got right to harvesting, collecting as much food as we could. Why, hello over there. Uh-oh, it was the farmer. We had to get out of there. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a moment. I don't mind if you eat my crops. In fact, eat as much as you want. Really? No one has ever been this nice to us. Yes, well, there aren't very many friendly animals around here these days. Something dangerous out there seems to be making them disappear. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say it's the dinosaurs taking them all out. Dinosaurs? Huh. Well, I suppose that must be it. If that's the case, why don't you two stay in my bar? for safety. We agreed and followed him into his barn. There were some nice hay bales to lay on. I was a little unsure because our cave seemed pretty safe, but at least there was food and someone to look out for us. The sun set and we put our heads down for the night. On days four through five, Billy and I woke up in the back of the cart pulled by the farmer. Hey, what's going on? The farmer didn't respond and kept looking ahead. That's when I realized we were all tied up and couldn't move. Where are you taking us? The farmer continued to ignore me. After a little while longer, we arrived at a small clearing. The farmer took us out and tied us to a post. Without saying a word, he got back on his horse and left. I've got a bad feeling about this. Just then, I heard a stick break and saw a pack of raptors walking toward us. We had no way to run. It looks like it's the end for us, Billy. Suddenly, the ground began to shake and there was the sound of heavy thuds. The raptors ran away. What's going on? Is it an earthquake? It was worse. A huge T-Rex came stomping around the corner, and he had on some kind of weird looking hat. Aha! My dinner is served. You look delicious. This dinosaur could talk. We had to escape. The T-Rex lunged at us, but we jumped out of the way, causing him to break our rope instead. Hurry, Billy! Run! We took off into the woods. Hopefully we could escape. On day six through eight, we were still running for our lives. The T-Rex was hot on our tails. As we came through a thick section of trees, we managed to slip through leaving the T-Rex behind them. I think we lost him. It was wishful thinking though, as he came stomping around the other side of the trees. Our chase soon led us to a river and I hurried and swam across. Billy was still just a baby though, and his tiny legs couldn't swim very fast. It's okay, Zozo, save yourself. Keep swimming, Billy. I won't leave you behind. Ugh, I hate getting wet. The T-Rex was so close and I wasn't sure if he would make it. But at the last moment, he jumped onto shore and we continued to run. We soon came bursting out of the forest, running across an open plain. Billy kept falling into small ponds, which was always a close call. Let's go, Billy. Maybe we can lose him in the trees. We ran into a purple forest, but it was no use. The T-Rex was still right behind us. Man, this guy must be really hungry. Come on, I have an idea. We circled back into the forest from before, and I headed toward a ravine I had seen earlier. A large tree had fallen across it, so Billy and I hurried and ran across. Before the T-Rex could cross, though, I quickly cut the log, stopping him in his tracks. Nah, you silly goats. You got away this time, but no one can outsmart me now. I'll find you soon enough. The T-Rex turned and ran off. How are we going to survive now? On days 9 through 10, Billy and I were running back to the base as fast as we could. It didn't feel like there was anyone out here that we could trust. Soon, we had arrived back at our cliffside base. Well, Billy, looks like this is going to be our home for the future. Let's fix it up. I got right to work, making our base even cooler than before. I cleared out even more space than before and lined the inside with lots of wood. I also gave us all the equipment we'd need, beds, furnaces, and crafting tables. As far as I knew, we were the only animals that could climb up steep cliffs, so no one else was going to be climbing into our base. So check it out. What do you think of the base? What part do you like the best? With the base completed, I decided to head over to some nearby caves to mine some iron. Luckily, I was able to quickly find some, so I mined it out. I also found some coal, which I was going to need to smelt the iron. I hurried back to the base and got right to work, smelting down all of the iron ore into iron ingots. I then used those to make myself a full set of iron armor, and also used them to make an iron sword, a pickaxe, axe, shovel, and hoe. This is all going to be good for me, but I think Billy is going to need some armor too. With some of the leftover iron, I made Billy some of his own goat armor. He's gonna love this. I brought it down to his base and tossed it out to him. He could barely contain his excitement. We're ready for anything now. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get that farmer back. On days 11 to 12, I left the base to go 
get that farmer. He was going to have a lot of explaining to do for leaving us tied to a post as dinosaur dinner. As I was making my way through the forest, I heard a howl and was suddenly attacked by a pack of wolves. Why is everyone here so mean to me? I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. It's a good thing I had just upgraded my gear though, as I was able to defeat the wolves with no trouble at all. Soon, I was back at the farm and noticed it looked abandoned. Where is that farmer? Don't tell me he's hiding. I then checked the farmhouse and saw the farmer inside, packing his bags. What did you think you were doing? Leaving us to be eaten like that. I hit the farmer and he started to fight back. He clearly wasn't ready for a fight though. Hang on just a second there, please don't hurt me. And why wouldn't I? You weren't very nice to me. Okay, okay, let me explain. Start talking, Slick. What's up with the T-Rex? That T-Rex is crazy. I don't know how he got here in our time or how he learned to talk, but he's been forcing me to feed him all my animals. If I didn't give him more, he was gonna eat me. I decided I couldn't do it anymore though, and I was gonna flee. Time to start myself a vegetable garden somewhere peaceful. I promise I'm not a danger to anyone. I could tell he was sorry for what he had done, so even though I was still upset, I decided to forgive him and let him go. I left as he planted some vegetables I could use later. The farmer was no longer a threat, but what was I going to do about this T-Rex? On days 13 to 15, I arrived back at our base and headed up to Billy's room. When I entered, I barely recognized the place. Whoa, Billy, you've got a lot of work done. Your room looks awesome. Thanks, Zozo. I also thought it'd be fun if we built a special statue. Here, take this wool. I'll show you what to do. Billy and I headed out and got started on the statue. Billy was really excited about what we were building, and I thought it was coming along great. At least, as far as I could tell, it was pretty great. We soon finished the first part. Can you tell what we're building? I'm not really sure quite yet. I jumped down from the statue, and as I was walking, I was attacked by a bunch of spiders. Oh, look, another mob who wants to hurt me. Stay back, you punks. These guys weren't very tough, and I managed to take them out in just a few hits. Uh-oh, I can hear some more spiders in that cave. I better take them out, too. I entered the cave, and sure enough, there were more spiders. One of these spiders was different, though, and had blue eyes. The spiders were pretty mad at me, and they hurt a lot. But if I could survive a T-Rex attacking me, I could fight these guys off, too. I managed to beat them both down. When the blue-eyed guy disappeared, he left behind something interesting. Poisonous essence. Hmm, I'm not sure what I'll do with this, but I'll have to hang on to it for now. Just then, I heard more spider noises echoing from the cave. I headed in deeper. What kind of monster would be waiting for me? On day 16 to 19, I was making my way deeper into the cave when I came across a bunch of brown terracotta. Huh, I don't know what all of this is doing down here, but Billy said we'd need it for the statue. I eagerly mined up all of the terracotta. Who knew when we'd be able to find more? As I scooped up the rest of the terracotta, I heard those spider noises again. Well, let's go down a little deeper, just to take a look. I soon arrived at the very bottom of a deep cave that was full of spider webs. I turned around and saw there was a huge spider on the ceiling. Okay, just stay calm, don't panic. Suddenly, the spider attacked. Spiders, why did it have to be spiders? This big hairy beast did a lot of damage and I wasn't sure if I was going to survive. If I could get the right hits in, I just might make it. I swung my sword as hard as I could and finally was able to take it down. Just then, I felt my strength begin to grow and I leveled up into a bigger goat and I've gained four more hearts. I took a closer look at my headbutt ability and noticed I had an even stronger knockback power and I could jump higher too. I hurried back to my house. I had an idea of what I could do with the poisonous essence. I walked back up to my crafting table and by combining the essence with my iron sword, I crafted a spider sword. Tomorrow I'm heading off to find the T-Rex. On days 20 to 22, I left my base to go find the T-Rex. I wasn't quite ready to fight him, but surely he had a base somewhere. If I could find his base, maybe I could find a way to defeat him. As I walked across the land, I heard a noise up in the distance. Oh, you wild raptors, get away from me. The group of raptors were attacking what looked to be a scientist. He needed my help. Watch out, I'm coming in. I leapt into action and started to fight off the raptors. I was stronger and had better gear, so these raptors didn't know what hit them. They were a feisty bunch, but I was able to knock them all out. Oh my goodness, aren't you just a marvelous little animal? Oh, well thanks. Who are you and what are you doing all the way out here? There's all kinds of strange things going on. The name's Faraday, and uh, yes, I am aware of these things. They are actually all my fault. Your fault? What do you mean? The scientist began to explain. You see, I'm not actually from this time. I am from the future. I invented a time machine helmet that let me travel all the way back to dinosaur times. I ran across the land. I felt so cool knowing that I was the first human to ever step foot on the land. Later that day though, I sat down to rest and a little raptor came and scooped my helmet onto his head. This wouldn't have been the biggest problem, but that T-Rex came along, flipped the raptor into the air, and the helmet landed on his head. Thing is though, my helmet also makes the user smarter, which is why the T-Rex can talk. I had an old prototype helmet that I used to chase the T-Rex through time, but it broke when we got to this present. Luckily, the T-Rex seems pretty happy to be here, since there is plenty of easy food for him. Wow, that is not the story I was expecting to hear when I woke up today. So what can we do to get the helmet back? I have some ideas, but I haven't been able to test any of them out 
out yet. That T-Rex's sidekicks keep attacking me. He must have brought them through time with him. Well, we've got a safe base built into a hill. How about you come live with us? You can do your research in peace there. That would be terrific. On days 23 to 26, I got right to work, building Faraday a lab at our base. There was all kind of technology that he wanted added, and it took a lot of hard work to get it right. But in the end, I was able to make him everything he would need to continue doing research. When it was complete, Faraday went and took a look around to make sure everything was in working order. Later on, I hopped in the elevator and took it for a ride myself. It was kind of fun riding in the elevator and getting to look out the window, but I'd still rather climb up the side of cliffs. I met Faraday in the front of the lab, and he told me how happy he was to finally get started. It was going to take some time for him to figure things out, but he said I should make sure I upgrade my gear for when we finally face off against the T-Rex. On days 27 to 31, I decided that I could use some more upgrades that could keep me safe from attack. Faraday told me there was a special item I could get from bears that could help me with this. Bears are super scary. I sure hope nothing goes wrong as I do this. I headed to a nearby forest and soon saw a small group of bears. With my spider sword in hand, I attacked. Very nice to meet you, sir. The bear didn't seem very happy to beat me and swung at me with their heavy claws. They were pretty tough and it was a hard fight, but in the end, I was able to take him out. There were a couple of other bears nearby too, which I was able to quickly defeat without too much trouble. That's when I saw one of them had dropped what I was looking for. Oh look, steadfast spikes. This makes it harder for bad guys to knock me back. Awesome. I then noticed there were some fruit trees nearby, so I ran through the trees and collected as much fruit as I could. Fruits are the best. I always try to eat them when I can. After I collected the fruits, I decided to do some exploring. As I crossed an empty field, I saw a small house in the distance. Let's see who lives here. I knocked on the door and a raccoon was inside. Who's out there? Hi, I just wanted to see who lived here and make sure you knew about the T-Rex running around. A T-Rex? Big deal. I have a bigger problem. A bigger problem? What could that be? My magic coal is stolen. Your what? My magic coal. It's the best thing I've ever found. Do you mean stole? How I got it isn't important. Do you think you can help me or not? Sure, sure, I'll help. The raccoon explained that a coyote had grabbed it off his doorstep when he wasn't looking and told me where to go to find him. I nodded and headed off for the camp. On days 32 to 35, I soon arrived at the coyote's base. This place is way bigger than the raccoon made it sound. I walked in and was immediately attacked by a pack of wolves. Relax, guys. I'm just looking for a piece of coal. The wolves didn't care and continued to attack. With my attack, I was able to defeat them before they could do too much damage. Now where could this magic coal be? What does that even look like? I kept looking through the base, fighting off the occasional wolf here and there. Eventually, I reached the top of the base as I finished up the rest of the wolves. Hey, who do you think you are coming into my house and messing with my guards? I'm here for Mr. Raccoon. You stole something of his and I'm here to get it back. <laughs> that little raccoon is such a loser. He just gets stuff out of the trash. He's weird, so I like being mean to him. Well, that's no way to treat someone for being different. The coyote and I started to fight. This guy was so mean. It's not okay to talk about people like that. By using my spider sword, I was able to poison him, which was bringing down his health. You're not as tough as you think you are. The coyote and I kept going at each other until at long last, I hit him with the final blow and took him out. That's when I saw he had dropped the magic coal. I don't know what's so special about this, but I better get it back to that raccoon. With the coal in my pocket, I hurried out of the base and headed back toward the raccoon's house. On days 36 to 39, I arrived back at the raccoon's house with his magic coal. After he came out of his house, I tossed it over to him. Woo, my magic coal. I'm so happy to see it again. Thank you, thank you. No problem. I'm just happy I could help. You have done the greatest thing for me. Here, I have something that you might be interested in. The raccoon threw out an interesting looking piece of tech. I don't know what it's for, but maybe that scientist friend of yours could use it. By the way, I get around these parts quite a bit, so if you're ever in need of information, let me know. I can probably help. I thanked him and turned to head back to the base. I wondered if Faraday would know something about this tech. On days 40 to 43, I arrived back to the base and headed up and into the science lab. I saw Faraday working in his lab and knocked on the window. Zozo, it's been a while. How are things going? Really good. While I was out exploring, I came across this strange piece of tech. Do you know anything about it? My Lanta. That's part of the teleportation helmet the T-Rex has. Without this, he's not able to travel through time. Well, that's good, right? It means we have a chance to stop him before he can ruin other timelines. Precisely. I've been doing some research of my own. Let me check my notes here. Faraday went over to his computers and printed out some notes. Ah, uh, yes. I am able to make the needed repairs, but there's a special element I need to do them. That sounds easy enough. Do you know where I can get them? I do, but the catch is that you have to defeat a rather nasty mob to get it. Faraday went on to explain where I needed to go to find them. Hopefully it's not too much of a fight. On days 44 to 49, I headed into the mystical forest Faraday had told me about. As I got closer, I was suddenly attacked by a heavy creeper. Whoa, slow down there, buddy. I swung at him and managed to knock him out. It looked like he had dropped something, which I picked up. 
creeper shards. Was this what Faraday was looking for? I better keep looking around. I kept going through the forest when suddenly a bunch of the creepers began attacking me and exploding. Keep it together, guys. Jeez. I managed to fight my way through the explosions with my ears ringing in my head. I soon stumbled upon a cave. Okay, he did mention it might be in a cave. I'll take a look. I headed into the cave and was attacked by a couple of spiders. I hit them with my spider sword. How do you like a taste of your own medicine? The spiders were soon destroyed and I continued down the cave. It kept going deeper and deeper until I saw something terrifying ahead. Okay, this has got to be it. What is this thing? The earth golem made a terrible sound as it tried to hit me. He definitely didn't like me stomping around in his cave. With his giant arms, he knocked me down to half a heart. My spider sword had poisoned him and I was able to land the final blow. Yes, I got him. As he disappeared, I noticed that he dropped something. This looks like some kind of strange display. This must be what Faraday is after. Just then, I felt that familiar power flow into me and I turned into a bigger and stronger goat. Looks like I've got 13 hearts now too. While I was down there, I also got to work mining out the diamonds in the wall. No wonder this guy didn't want anyone down here. It was filled with good stuff. That should be everything. Let's get this back to Faraday and see what he can do with it. On days 50 to 53, I returned back to the base and headed into the lab. Faraday was hard at work and was very excited to see that I had made it back. I believe this is what you were searching for? Oh, Zozo, you beautiful being. This is going to work perfect. I was feeling pretty good about myself, so I tossed in the creeper shards as well. And what do you think of this? Zozo, this is a ground creeper tono. Please, never give this to me again. Oh, uh, my bad. Faraday said it would take him a few days to get the next project put together, so I headed back up to the base to craft some diamond armor. I decided I could use a full set of armor, so I made that. Then I went ahead and made an entire set of tools. I always felt a little bit more safe after making new diamond gear. With my armor upgraded, I headed outside to go and do some more work on the statue. I had the terracotta I had collected before, so I wanted to make some good progress. So what do you think about the second part? Think you can still guess what it's going to be? I then headed back over to my base. This place could use some more improvements. I decided I wanted to add another level atop the cliff. We hadn't been attacked by any mobs, and I was pretty sure nothing was going to get to us. I was pretty proud of what I was able to build, and thought it looked really cool. This is a nice house, but it is pretty big. I think I should go get Mr. Raccoon and invite him to live here. It's not safe out there. On days 54 to 57, I was heading across the field when I saw that the raccoon's house had been destroyed. As I got closer, I saw him lying in the center of his destroyed house. He was clearly hurt. Oh no, who did this to you? It was those raptors. I guess some of the wolves told them I sent you to get my magic coal back from the coyote, and they attacked me without warning. I'm sorry, I can't help feeling like this is all my fault. Surely I can get you something to save you. It's too late. They took everything I have. And don't worry, it's not your fault. Thanks for being the nice one who was willing to stand up for me. And just like that, the raccoon fell over and disappeared. But before I could do anything else, I heard someone come up behind me. Well, look who it is, boys. You, you have a time traveling helmet. How? The big boss man made it for me. He's real smart now and is good with all them technologies. Speaking of which, we know you're hiding that little science man. Hand him over and we'll let you little goats live. Why would I let you guys have him? You're just going to hurt him or try to get him to make more helmets. We don't need him to make more helmets. Mr. Rex is gonna make all of us our own. Then you won't be able to do nothing. You can make as many helmets as you want, but if there's no one to wear them, that's not gonna do you much good, is it? Well, what do you mean, no one to wear them? Can't you see all my boys here? All that technology on your head and you're still not very smart, are you? I jumped forward and swung at the raptor, knocking him back. There were a lot of them, but I couldn't let them get away with everything. They hurt my friend and they wanted to hurt everyone else I knew. You guys are gonna pay for what you've done. I managed to knock out all of the raptors one by one until only the leader was left. Boy, you're crazy. I'm getting out of here. Get back here, you coward. I chased the raptor into the forest, but unfortunately he managed to get away in the trees. I had to hurry back to Faraday. We were running out of time. On days 58 to 62, I returned back to the base and headed for the lab. I knocked on the window and Faraday came out to meet me. Zozo, what is it? You look worried. The T-Rex has figured out how to make his own helmets and is trying to give them to a whole army of raptors. That, and they hurt one of my new friends. Oh dear, I'm so sorry to hear it. I do have some good news for you though. I haven't got the time travel fixed yet, but I built a tracker into this helmet that will lead you to anyone who has a helmet of their own. Perhaps now we may be able to find their base and hit them where it hurts. I put the helmet on and started it up. Right away I could see a map that showed several X's on it. They must have split up. This is going to be a massive help in our hunt to track them down. Just then, Billy came walking up to us. Zozo, I think you should go for the raptor first. Then we can focus on the T-Rex. Those raptors could be out there, hurting even more innocent animals. That's a good point. Plus, it'll be easier to take down the T-Rex if his sidekicks are gone. I'm on it. On day 63 to 66, I decided that if I was going to fight the raptor, I needed to beef up my gear. I had nearly defeated him last time, so he'd be stronger when we met next. I headed across the land to a lavender field to get 
what I needed. Rumor says there's Alexandrite ore here, which is even stronger than diamonds. I headed into the field and soon found some Alexandrite ore. I mined it up as fast as I could. I couldn't believe I found it so quickly. With my pockets full of ores, I took a look around and saw a big sign on a hill. Oh, that reminds me, don't forget to sub to the channel, otherwise you'll miss our next adventure together. Sometime later, I had arrived back at the base and headed over to the crafting table. With the new ore, I was able to make myself a new helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. I went ahead and equipped everything. Let's get that tracking system booted up and take down that raptor. On day 67 to 70, I stepped outside my house and booted up the tracker. Okay, I can see two X's on the map. Looks like they're still separated. This one looks a little closer to the raccoon's place, so I'm guessing that's the raptor. I headed down from my base and off into the forest. The X was still pretty far away, so I made sure to stop and check every now and then. Oh, it looked like it moved. I better hurry so I can catch up to them. I kept going in the direction of the X, passing through some pretty impressive landscapes. It was too bad there were so many mean dinosaurs about, because the land was really beautiful. I stopped and checked my map one more time. Okay, it looks like I'm pretty close, and that they might be in some kind of structure. It must be their base. I kept making my way there, when suddenly I saw a fortress off in the distance. I could see a bunch of raptors roaming around, and a lot of them had helmets on. Uh-oh, looks like they've made more helmets. I better get in there, and fast. On days 71 to 74, I charged up to the base and attacked the guards. They had helmets of their own, but they didn't seem to be very smart. The T-Rex clearly wasn't very good at making them yet. I defeated the guards and headed into the base. There were even more raptors in here. Where's your leader? I cut through the raptors using my spider sword and other attacks. They didn't stand a chance. I had to hurry, though. If they figured out how to make the helmets perfectly, we'd be in a world of hurt. I'd finally taken out all of the raptors in the courtyard when I noticed they had a storage shed nearby. I started opening the different containers to see if they had anything good. I grabbed some of their supplies, but also saw there were some raptor teeth nearby. Oh, I know just the thing I can make with this. Using the crafting table, I managed to make a raptor tooth sword. Let's see how they like fighting against themselves. On day 75 to 78, I went to go find the raptor leader when he jumped out and hit me. Ouch, get back here. I chased him into the base and down a long flight of stairs. We soon reached an open room. Who do you think you are? One single goat trying to take down a whole base of raptors? This ends here. Get him, boys. Suddenly, all the raptors in the room started to attack. This guy was no leader. He just wanted to make everyone do his dirty work for him. You'd think with all these smart helmets, you guys would actually have some kind of strategy for this fight. The raptors were swarming in on me, but I was able to keep them back using all of my weapons. Their leader watched as I finished taking out all of his henchmen. Why don't you come down here and fight me yourself? Or are you too scared? Scared? Ain't nobody calling me scared. The raptor leader jumped forward and started swinging. It turns out, he was actually pretty tough. I had learned a lot through all of my fights, though, and nothing was going to make me back down. He had to pay for what he did to my raccoon friend. I hit him as hard as I could and could see he would soon be defeated. Heh, <laughs> it doesn't matter that you beat me. You'll never beat Mr. Rex. He's gonna fix the time machine soon, and then there'll be hundreds of raptors and other dinosaurs here. You won't stand a chance. And just like that, he was defeated. He was right though. If we don't stop the T-Rex, we're all gonna be someone's dinner. On day 79 to 84, I was heading back to my base when I saw a nearby cave. It wouldn't hurt to get some more resources, so let's see what we can find. As I approached the cave, I was suddenly attacked by a bunch of mushroom pigs. Oh, I should have known I would run into something like you here. I quickly knocked them out and headed into the cave, fighting some more mushroom pigs along the way. They weren't very strong. There were a lot of them. That's when I noticed there was a bunch of redstone in here. I'm not sure what I can use this for yet, but maybe there's some kind of creative build Faraday can make with it. I continued into the cave, collecting as much redstone as I could find. There were also a bunch of mushroom pigs, which I quickly knocked out of the way. At the very end of the cave, there was a room filled with an insane amount of redstone. Oh yeah, if I ever need more, I know just where to get it. I headed back out of the cave toward my base. I needed to talk to Faraday. Hopefully he had made some progress on the helmet. On days 85 to 89, I had arrived back at the base and headed down into the lab. I gave Faraday a knock on the window and he came out to meet me. I told him all about what had happened with the raptors and how the T-Rex was starting to make even more helmets. Yes, yes, that is very concerning. I have been working on some updates as well though. Let me show you. While you look for that, I also collected some redstone. Maybe it can help. I tossed out the redstone I had gathered when suddenly there was a crackling sound coming from Faraday's pocket. What's this? The substance seems to be reacting with the updated helmet I made. The redstone? That's kind of weird, isn't it? Ah, redstone is what you call it. This material must have disappeared before my time. Are you able to get more of this? I have an idea. Oh yeah, I can definitely get more. I'll be right back. On days 90 to 94, I headed back to the redstone cave. He said he needed more. I'll get him more. I got right to work, mining out a bunch of the redstone. There was no way this wouldn't be enough. It took a long time, but I finally gathered up all the redstone we would need. Soon I was back in the lab and gave Faraday a knock on the window. As always, he was excited to meet me. You've brought me more redstone. I presume? Oh yeah, this should be more than enough to do whatever you're thinking. I tossed all the redstone I had gathered on over to him. Excellent.
Excellent. Here's the upgraded helmet. This blue shield on top should protect you from the effects of the redstone. Faraday then tossed out a bunch of redstone power balls. Now that we've combined these with the redstone, they'll pack a powerful punch against anyone wearing a helmet. In fact, it should disable it, at least for a moment. That'll be awesome. This is going to be a lifesaver, I'm sure. Ah, yes. Speaking of which, there is a special strength ability I've programmed in it as well, but it will only work once, so be sure to only use it when you really need it. I nodded and thanked him for all of his hard work. It's a good thing he got trapped in our time, too. Otherwise, we'd never get out of this mess. On days 95 to 97, I decided I should upgrade the base one more time before heading out to face the T-Rex. Billy was still young and I wanted to make sure he had a safe place to live, just in case things went sideways. Once I had expanded the base a little more, I grabbed Billy and we went outside to work on the last part of the statue. This was a tough one to build, but I think it looks really cool. It would certainly scare off anyone who thinks that they're tougher than us, that is. Soon, we had completed the statue. I was pretty proud of everything we had built so far. I still had a lot of ideas for the future, though. What part of the builds were your favorite? On day 98, I stepped outside the base to have a chat with Billy. All right, Billy, I'm headed off to fight the T-Rex. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Good luck, Zozo. But before you go, there was something I wanted to say. That sounds important. What is it? I just think that everyone needs to subscribe. Otherwise, we'll never win. Oh, that is important. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, as that will give us the strength to win the fight. Billy headed back inside, and I booted up the tracking system. All right, I can see him on the map. It's showtime. I headed off in the direction of the T-Rex. It was now or never. On day 99, I had made it to the edge of the T-Rex's base. He definitely couldn't have built a base like this without some intelligence. This guy isn't going to be like the Raptors. This guy's for real. I made my way closer and took a look up at the tower. There's no time to waste. I'm coming for you, Rexy. I charged into the base and entered the inside of the tower where the T-Rex was waiting for me. I've been waiting for you, Zozo. Mm, that sounds kind of awkward, just standing here, alone, in a tower, waiting for me. Nah, I don't have time for your nonsense. Obviously, I've been doing other things. Oh yeah? Like what? Being sad I took out all of your friends? My friends? Please. There were more dinosaurs here too, but I got hungry. You ate all of the other dinosaurs? You truly are a monster. <laughs> Say what you want, but it doesn't matter. This helmet is nearly fully operational. I can bring dinosaurs in any time I want. And soon, I'll be able to jump time myself. That wasn't good to hear. I had to hurry and take action before you could do anything else. If you think you're so tough, you'll have to get through me first. That's the idea. The T-Rex lunged at me and we started to fight. If I was going to save the future, the time to do so was now. The T-Rex lived up to his reputation, hitting me with some hard hits. It hurt, and my health was dropping fast. Oh, I can't let this guy keep getting these hits on me. I'm not going to last long like this. I refocused and started to get in some more hits of my own. I think he was really surprised by how strong I was, especially when I would hit him with my headbutt. You think you can defeat me? Let me show you what real power is. Suddenly, two portals opened up and more dinosaurs came flying in. No, not the time travel. These dinosaurs were insane. I swung my sword and managed to take them out, but soon there were even more coming in. Don't you see? You can take down as many dinosaurs as you want, but I will always have the upper hand. He was right. I couldn't keep fighting off time traveling dinosaurs forever. What could I do? Oh, wait a second. What am I doing? If I want to stop the time travel, I need to disable his helmet. I reached for the power balls Faraday had given me and started to throw them. As they hit the T-Rex, I could see his helmet start to spark as he ran around in circles. Oh, what is going on? This is it. I've got to use that one-time strength boost. If there was ever a time I needed it, it's now. I clicked the button on my helmet and I started to grow. I even gained more hearts. I was big enough to truly take him on now. This feels amazing. Now I really am the goat. I charged at the T-Rex and landed a hit on him just as the sparking effects were wearing off. What the? How did you get so big? The T-Rex started to spawn in more dinosaurs, but it didn't matter. I quickly cut them down and kept hitting the T-Rex. This is for all the animals you hurt. I could tell I was really hurting him, but he was hurting me too. It was only a matter of time before one of us fell. Who is it going to be? Just then, I delivered the final blow and the T-Rex disappeared, dropping his helmet. I don't believe it. He's gone. But I better hurry. Faraday needs this helmet. On day 100, I returned back to my base. This time, Faraday came out to meet me. Zozo, you're back. You must have done it. I did. And I couldn't have done it without your help. Here, let me give you the helmet back. You know, why don't you hang on to it? I just need this one component. You never know. Something might come up again when I need your help. 
in the future. You never know what's going to happen, but I'm glad that today was a success. In the meantime, I'll be here, ready for when adventure calls. On day one, I spawned in as a little mouse. Ooh, look how cute and tiny I am. But uh-oh, I only have one heart. I've gotta be careful. That's when I noticed that my hunger bar was half the size of a normal one too. Uh-oh, I guess I have a tiny stomach. I better hurry and start getting some supplies. Right away, I started punching trees so that I could get some wood. Using the wood I had collected, I put together a crafting table, then used that to make a wooden pickaxe, shovel, axe, and sword. I packed up my crafting table and started to look for some food. That's when my hunger bar started dropping. I had to hurry. I soon saw a patch of berries. Oh, thank goodness. This is just what I was looking for. Suddenly, I heard a growl and a giant grizzly bear came walking over. Oh, he's going to eat me. I gotta run. I ran and ran through the forest until I felt like I had gotten away. This forest was a dangerous place. Just then, I heard some squeaking up ahead. I soon saw a little mice family. Oh, hey guys, you're just like me. Is it okay if we stick together? A new friend. Yeah, absolutely. Everything is easier when you stick together. My name is Remy. Remy introduced me to the rest of his family. It was nice to have a group of friendly faces. He told me that they had a nice cave to live in, too. We headed over to the cave when suddenly a fox popped out and started to attack us. Oh no, I have to help my new family. Together, we did everything we could to fight off the fox. Luckily for me, our combined power was strong, and we took the fox down. Yeah, you won't be messing with us again. We then all went into the cave. It was small, but cozy. The perfect place to settle for the night. I just hoped that tomorrow I could find some more food. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. On day two, I headed into the cave to get some coal. I was able to quickly find some and mined it out. I also grabbed some stone. Time for this mouse to get an upgrade. I put down my crafting table and used it to put together some stone tools. I also made some torches. I headed over to our cave and set up the torches. This should help keep the mobs away. My hunger was starting to drop again, so I decided to go out and look for some more food. As I ran through the forest, I could see something on the ground. But as I got closer, I could see it was just a flower. Man, where is all the food? I didn't have too much time to think about it though, as the grizzly bear from before showed up again. Oh, this guy again? I can't risk it with one heart. I had stone tools, but there was no way I could take him on. I soon arrived back at the cave to talk to my mouse friends. Have you guys been able to find any food? Everywhere I look is either empty or has a hungry bear. Oh, you're not alone. We can't find anything either. But that's because of the humans. The humans? What do you mean? There's been a lot of humans coming through here, and they've been taking all of the food. It's been hard for us to find anything. I felt really bad for them, and they agreed to try and go look for food. I wanted to do something to make them happy, so I went outside and gathered up some of the materials. Using everything I had collected, I started to fix up the cave. We might not have any food, but at least we could have some beds to sleep in. It's the best I could do, but I just wanted to say thank you for letting me stay here. I'm really starting to feel like I'm part of your family. On day three, I woke up to a loud noise. There was a human in our cave. He had put my mouse family into bags, and I was next. Let them go. I had tried to hit him, but he nearly took me out. I had no choice but to run. You can run, but I'm gonna find you eventually. I kept running until the human was far behind me. What was I going to do now? How could this happen to my family? That guy was huge. But one day, I'm gonna be big and strong too. Mark my words. I'm gonna save my family from the humans. On days four to five, I set off to find myself a new place to live. If I was going to get big and strong, I needed a safe place to sleep at night and store my gear. I soon found myself a nice cliffside and dug into the side of it. I wanted something cozy like the last cave, but I was gonna make it a little nicer. Time to get some building supplies. I headed out into the forest and gathered wood, as well as all the other materials I was going to need. This was going to be a classy rat's nest. I then got to work building all of the rooms. I decided to build something even bigger than what I needed, including rooms for other mice. I was determined to save my mouse family, and they were going to need a room when they came to live with me. Soon, the base was completed, and I decided to get some rest. In the middle of the night, I heard some noise outside. Uh-oh, I forgot to put out torches. I gotta take care of these zombies. I got right to work, fighting off the zombies, but I had to be careful, because I still only had one heart. Luckily for me, I was able to survive and took them all out. I better get those torches up quick. The next day, I headed outside to take a look around the area. What is that over there? I went down into the forest and soon came upon a small, half-built structure. Inside was another mouse. Hey, you're just like me. Am I? Because I'm looking real buff while you're just a skinny little guy. I'm not a mouse. I'm a vole. What are you doing out here? My family was kidnapped by the humans, and I'm going to rescue them. But I'm worried about getting food first. Boy, are you right about that. How am I supposed to keep to my all-protein diet with those humans taking all the food? They also got my family, too. I think they're keeping them as pets. Oh, these humans are ruining everything. Let's team up and take them down. Yeah, let's do it. Two more voles had popped up from nearby. Whoa, where did you guys come from? I thought you were the only one. Oh, yeah. These are my brothers. They're around. What's up, little guy? You look like you could use a protein shake. Uh, thanks. Well, the more the merrier, I suppose. Come on, you guys should live at my base with me. Tomorrow, we can figure out the food. The voles agreed, and we headed out. On day six to eight, I was wandering through the forest when I finally came across a berry bush, but it was empty. That's when I saw a raccoon taking off the last few berries. Oh, hey, would you mind sparing a few berries? I haven't eaten in days. Heh, <laughs> that's just how it works out here, bud. Do I have enough to spare? Yeah, I do, but I guess I'm just a jerk. Sorry, not sorry. 
I couldn't believe this guy. Well, you're right about one thing. You are a jerk. I had had enough. It was time to start fighting back. Give me those berries. I jumped into action and started fighting the raccoon. I caught him off guard. He didn't expect a little mouse like me to be this strong. I managed to beat him in no time. As he disappeared, he dropped a bunch of berries. Finally, some food. I took a bite of the berries when I suddenly felt my strength begin to grow and I leveled up. I had gotten even stronger and now I have four hearts. Awesome. With my belly more full than before, I decided to head into a cave. Lucky for me, I found a whole bunch of iron. By using my pickaxe, I managed to mine a whole bunch of iron, enough to make myself all kinds of iron equipment. As I headed back toward the base, I also came across some sugar cane. Even more food. Today is just my lucky day. I managed to collect a decent amount of sugar cane when suddenly the grizzly bear appeared again. I'm not running away this time. I jumped into action, but it was a mistake. This bear was just way too strong. Okay, looks like I'm running away this time. Today was just not the day to beat a bear, but hey, at least I got some food. Back at the base, I started planting the sugar cane. If I could get some more ingredients, I'd have myself a nice food source. I can also use it to make books. I was hoping to build a library in the base. Once the sugar cane was all planted, I went back to my base and started smelting the iron ore I'd collected. With the iron ingots, I made myself a full set of iron armor, then made all of the tools I would need as well. I'm feeling much better already. I then decided to upgrade the base by adding in a library. I felt like the voles might like it. I just wanted to make sure they were comfortable and happy to be here. Hey guys, come check out the new library. The voles headed upstairs to take a look around. Reading is for nerds, but even I gotta admit, this is a pretty nice looking place. Good going, Pipsqueak. On days 9 to 10, I woke up to the voles coming into my room. Bro, we're starving. We gotta do something about this food situation. Good morning. I agree, but I feel like I've run out of places to look. There is this one place, but only someone small and sneaky could go there. Like you. I could give it a go. Where is it? There's a human farm near here, just full of stuff. If you can get in there and steal some of their food, we could start our own farm. That sounds a little risky, but at this point, I'm not sure what choice I have. I'll do it. The voles told me where I needed to go, and I went and waited outside for nighttime. Once it was good and dark, I snuck down and soon saw the farm. These humans have so much food. Why are they taking everything from the forest? I quickly gathered as much food as I could. We were finally going to have a reliable food source. Once I had grabbed a good amount of food, I noticed a chest nearby. Inside was a box of hats. I wonder what this is all about. Just then, I heard a bark, and a dog came running over to me. Hey, why are you barking at me? Don't you know the humans are taking everyone's food? The dog stopped barking. They're taking everyone's food? He's my best friend, but that doesn't seem like a very nice thing to do. Suddenly, I heard a shout, and the farmer came running out. Hey, you, get on out of here. I had no choice but to run away. Those humans were dangerous, and I would never rescue my family if they captured me too. After a bit of running, I made it back to my base. I threw some potatoes into the furnace and started making some beetroot soup. I also baked some bread. With all kinds of good food in my pockets, I headed over to the vole's room. I'm back, and look what I've got. I started tossing the food out, much to the vole's delight. We'd never have to be hungry again. After everyone had eaten, I showed them the hat box too. Everyone picked out their favorite hats and put them on. We were all pretty excited about it. The next day, I went outside and started working on a farm. Once it was all set up, I tilled the land and planted all the different plants. Finally, I could focus on my main mission of rescuing my family. On days 11 to 12, I woke up to the voles coming into my room again. But this time, they weren't complaining. They were excited because they had something to show me. Apparently, it was a fancy statue. I went outside to take a look. So, what do you think? We all worked really hard on it. It's a mouse, just like you. Wow, guys, that is really nice. Thanks for making this for me. You know what could be really fun? What's that? Why don't we make one together? There's more than one of us here, so I think it just makes sense for there to be more than one statue. Yeah, that sounds dope. But we don't really want to build another one, so you can make it. We can't wait to see it. First off, I decided to go out and start collecting all the flowers I would need to make dye. I was going to find some sheep later, so I ran around getting everything I would need. Once I had gotten all the flowers I needed, I snuck back to the human's farm. I snuck upstairs and managed to grab some shears out of the chest. Then I went over to the sheep and dyed them all the different colors I would need. I had just collected a decent amount of wool when the farmer and dog came running out. Uh-oh, here they come again. I've got a bolt. The farmer shouted and the dog barked, but I was able to get out of there just in time. Back at the base, I got to work building the first part of the statue. It meant a lot to me that the voles had made me a statue, so I thought it'd be nice to make something too. I still needed some more supplies, so I stopped at the first part. On days 13 to 15, I was out exploring the woods when I came across a beehive. Oh, we could use some honey. This will be very helpful. I gathered it up and then saw another one, so I gathered the honey from there too. That's when I noticed a small house on top of the hill. A house that small must be for a mouse. I ran up the hill to find out. The door opened and inside was a feeble old mouse. Why, hello, dear. What brings you out to these parts? Hi, I'm out gathering some supplies for my friends. I've got to search pretty far for special items since the humans are taking all of our resources. Ah, those pesky humans. They're just the worst. It's high time the Mouse of Myth comes along. The Mouse of Myth? Who's that? Ah, oh, have you not heard the story? Legend says that when the humans begin to ruin the mouse lands, a brave and mighty mouse will rise up, growing to be even bigger and stronger than the humans. That mouse will save all mouse kind. 
Really? Wow, that actually sounds a lot like the situation I'm going through right now. Perhaps you are the mouse of myth then. Ever experienced sudden bursts of strength? Once, but I think that was because I hadn't eaten in a few days. The mouse of myth sounds way stronger than me. Well, the mouse of myth will be confident in himself, so perhaps it's not you after all. Oh yeah, uh, maybe not. We chatted a while longer, but all I could think about was the mouse of myth. I hoped that could be me, but maybe she was right. I didn't feel confident in it at all. I soon left to go back to my base. On days 16 to 19, I woke up to the voles coming into my room again. Yo, Zozo, you've been proven to be pretty tough after all, so we had a favor to ask. What's going on? Some of our buddies got themselves into a bit of a situation, and we were hoping you could bail them out. I'll see what I can do. Show me the way. I followed the voles out of the base and out across the land. They had soon led me into a dense jungle where we came across some squirrels stuck in a tree. There was a Tasmanian devil down at the bottom, and he wasn't letting them down. Out of the way, mister! I charged at the Tasmanian devil, and we started to fight. Why won't you leave those poor squirrels alone? The voles cheered me on as we continued to fight. This little guy was intense, but I was quick and took him out in no time. Bro, nice one! The vole called up to his squirrel friends to let them know it was safe, and they came down to chat. Yo, that was sick! We thought we were never gonna get out of that tree. No worries, guys. I'm just glad we could help. Say, if you want, you should come live at our base with us. There's a lot of dangerous creatures out here. Gnarly, bruh. We'd love to live there with you guys. Just then, I felt strength coming to me, and I grew in size, and I've gained even more hearts than before. Dude, nice gains. I didn't know a mouse could beef up like that. Soon we all left and headed back to the base. I had grown in size again. Maybe I could be the mouse of myth. I'd have to figure that out another day. Back at the base, I got right to work building the squirrels a place to live. I started with some steps and a ladder, then got to work making them a tree house. I figured they would be happiest living in a tree, so I made it the best I could. Then I filled the inside with all the comforts they could need. Soon, I was done. I really hope they like it here. On days 20 to 22, I got woken up again, but this time, it wasn't by the voles. What is that sound? I ran outside and saw the base was surrounded by zombies. But where had all of the torches gone? I couldn't worry about that now, though. I had some zombies to take care of. I ran down the hill and quickly attacked them. They weren't super tough, so I was able to defeat them quickly. All right, I gotta figure out what happened. But just then, another group of zombies came over the hill. More of them? Oh, brother. I started swinging my sword and was able to take a few more of them out. But how many more were there going to be? I don't know if I can fight them off forever. It was close, but I managed to finish them off. Okay, enough of that. I better get more torches. But then, even more zombies came over the hill, and this time, they were covered in iron armor. What is going on? I kept swinging my sword and was getting hits in, but these guys were way tougher with their armor. It was starting to look a little close, but I finally fought them all off. Oh, I can't fight anymore. Hopefully that's it. But it wasn't it. More iron-wearing zombies came over the hill, and this time, they had skeletons with them. Uh-oh, I don't think I can survive this. I started to fight them off, but it was too hard. I ran under the statue for cover, but I was surrounded. Just then, the voles came charging out of the base and attacked the zombies. Hang on, Zozo. We're here to hell. With our combined power, we were able to start fighting back and start taking out the bad guys. Even the squirrels got into the fight. At long last, the zombies were finally defeated. This time, no more zombies or skeletons came over the hill. Soon, we were back in the base. Thanks, guys. I thought I was a goner. We thought we ought to help you out for once. I'm sure glad you did. We've got to figure out what happened to our torches, though. Otherwise, we'll be in big trouble. Oh, right. We might know something about that. The voles explained that they had taken all of the torches and put them in the library. Apparently it was too dark for them to see what they were reading. It turns out reading is actually pretty dope, but we didn't think about the zombies. My bad, homie. I told them it was okay and got to work setting up some new torches outside. We'll have to try and make even better defenses tomorrow. On days 23 to 26, I left my base to go and gather some more supplies. Our base had nearly been taken over last night and we needed some serious upgrades. First, I dug up a bunch of clay. I was going to make bricks, so I needed to grab as much clay as I could. I then brought it back to my base, where I began smelting it into bricks. Before I started working on the wall, though, I decided to build a nice walkway down to the farm. It was going to be much better than having to get wet every time we needed to get a bite to eat. With the new bridge complete, I then got to work on the new walls. There were some natural mountains around the entrance to our base, but I thought it'd be smart to plug up the gaps with some walls. After all, a wall is no good if someone can just walk right through it. Once the walls are finished, my next project was building a guard tower. If we had something nice and tall, we'd be able to keep a close eye out for any more zombies, or even worse, humans. It took a bit, but the tower was soon complete, too. As I was admiring the build from the courtyard, one of the squirrels came outside to meet me. Hey, man, nice building. You're really good at this. Thanks. I just want us to be as safe as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm actually a pretty good cook. If you wouldn't mind building me a kitchen, I'd be happy to make food for everyone. Oh, that's a great idea. Before I started on the kitchen, though, I first grabbed some food from the farm. There was no point in building a kitchen if there's no food to store in it. With all the food in my pockets, I headed inside and got to work on the kitchen. I made sure to set up everything he needed and filled the pantry with all of the food. I couldn't wait to see what he'd make. 
mistake. Later that night, I was up in the tower to see how well our defenses work. I could see a big group of zombies outside of the gate, but they had no chance of getting in. I'd call that a success. Now I just had to hope nothing bigger would stop by. On days 27 to 31, I was keeping watch from the tower when the bear from earlier showed up. This guy again? I'm so sick of him always trying to ruin my day. I ran down and headed outside the gate. You've tried to take my food too many times. I'm not letting you in here. The bear just laughed and let out a roar. He wasn't much of the talking type, but he was still a jerk. Just then, he charged. The bear was still really strong, but this time, I wasn't going to run away or back down. I was stronger, and he was going to have the fight of his life. With my sword in hand, I swung as hard as I could, knocking him back. He let out a roar, but it was too late. I hit him with the final blow, and he was defeated. Well, aren't you just the toughest little mouse I've ever seen? I looked up at a nearby tree and saw a crane looking down at me. Oh man, you have no idea. That bear has been trying to finish me off for days. I just couldn't let him win. Well, it's not every day you see a mouse beating a bear. Have you ever considered joining a fighting league? All of the toughest animals around are in ours, and you'd be perfect. Oh, I appreciate the offer, but I can't. I'm on a quest to save my family, not become the ultimate mouse champion. Oh, but you don't understand. This will help you. By showing your bravery, you can inspire the crowd who want to help in your cause. Not to mention, you can earn some serious money by winning fights. Money that could help you. Uh, okay. I guess there's no harm in checking it out. Where do I need to go? The crane told me where to go, and I said I would head over there after preparing a little bit. He thanked me and took off. Later that day, I was deep in a cave, looking for resources. If I was going to win any fights, I needed the best gear I could get. That's when I noticed there were tons of diamonds in this cave. I mined out as many as I could. This was just what I needed. With my pockets overflowing with diamonds, I headed out of the cave. Back at the base, I got right to crafting, making myself a full set of diamond armor, a helmet, boots, leggings, and a chest plate. I then used them to make a pickaxe, shovel, axe, and sword. There's no way I'm going to lose any fights now. On days 32 to 35, I made my way to the location the crane had told me about. Standing outside the entrance was the crane. Good evening, sir. I'm so thrilled you could make it. You've got quite the challenger tonight, but I think you will do splendidly. Okay, I'm all ready to fight, so bring it on. The crane motioned for me to enter, and I headed in. The arena was brightly lit, or at least the fighting area was. I could hear a crowd in the darkness, though, so I knew the place was packed. As I stood in the arena, I saw a gate open at the other end. It looked like my challenger was a Shiba Inu. I could take this guy. A bell rang and the fight was on. The Shiba was tough, but so was I. As we fought, the crowd cheered. As we both landed blows, they oohed and awed. They seemed like they were really into it. If I can win this fight, all the animals watching will be able to help me rescue my family. I've got to win. The Shiba Inu put up a good fight, but with my new weapons and armor, there was really no contest. I soon defeated him, and the crowd went wild. As they cheered, a bunch of emeralds started dropping into the arena, as well as XP points. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these emeralds, but I'm sure I can figure something out. This is awesome. Just then, a bunch of lapis and obsidian dropped in as well. Excited, I ran around picking up my rewards as the crowd continued to cheer. I gave one final wave to the crowd, then headed back down and out of the arena to meet with the crane. Congratulations. I just knew you could win. Thanks. That was actually a lot of fun. I think all the animals were really excited for me, too. Oh, yes. The crowd loved you. Please, feel free to come back soon. I'm sure the crowd was very inspired by you. I thanked the crane for inviting me and ran back toward my base. I made a stop by the sheep farm first, though, and grabbed a bunch of dyed wool. I was going to need this for the statue. Back at the base, I took the wool I had collected and got to work on the next part. I kept going until I ran out of wool again. I couldn't wait to see what it would look like when I was done. On days 36 to 39, I was exploring a nearby acacia forest when I saw something strange in the distance. Is that a mouse? She's really beating that wolf up. The mouse soon defeated the wolf, and I hurried over to talk to her. Whoa, nice moves. That was super impressive. Thanks. I thought I was the only big, strong mouse out here, but I see I'm not the only one. My name is Bella. My name's Zozo. There's actually a whole group of us living just back over the mountains. You should come live at our base with us. Are you sure? I don't want to intrude. Oh, no, it would be great. We could train together and everything. I feel like I could learn a lot from you. Well, all right. Show me the way. We headed off back in the direction of the base. Once we arrived, I got right to work making her room. It was going to be awesome having such a tough mouse around. Soon, her room was complete. On days 40 to 43, I met Bella in the kitchen. Hey, Zozo, I'm going to go out and train. Do you want to come with? That would be awesome. You can teach me all of your moves. Right on. Just give me a second. Bella went over to the crafting table and made herself a new purple hat. It was really cool. She was then ready to go, so we headed out. Back in the acacia forest, I watched as Bella took on a whole pack of wolves. I couldn't believe she wasn't even scared. The wolves were fighting their hardest, but Bella wasn't even breaking a sweat. Soon, she had defeated all of the wolves. Zozo, why don't you hop in on this next one? Another pack of wolves charged at us, and I hopped in. I've got a tip for you. Instead of just hitting, jump into the air and hit them as you're coming down. You'll do even more damage than normal. I gave it a try and she was right. I tried it on as many wolves as I could and together we defeated them all no problem. Later we were taking a break when I had a question to ask her. So how come you train so hard? What makes you want to fight so much? That's a good question. I wasn't always like this, but one day I met an old mouse woman in the middle of nowhere. She told me this story about a mouse who could grow in size and was really strong. I had been fighting mobs just before then and had grown in size a little myself. That was
was when I realized I had to be the one in the legend. I had to be the mouse of myth. Really? I think I met the same mouse. I heard the exact same story. I couldn't believe that I might be the mouse of myth, though. Well, that makes sense, though, because you're not. I knew without a doubt the legend was about me. And so I've dedicated myself to training in order to fulfill my destiny. You really thought you were the mouse of myth? <laughs> That's cute. Come on, I'll race you back to the base. Bella took off, but I couldn't help feeling a little disappointed. I mean, she was really talented, so it did make sense. But I was really starting to believe I might be the Mouse of Myth. We'd just have to see how everything played out. On days 44 to 49, I decided to get some more work done on the statue. I had collected a decent amount of materials for my last raid, so I got quite a bit done. I was even able to do the tail, which I thought turned out pretty good. I was taking a moment to look at how things had gone so far when the voles came running out. Zozo, come quick. There's a human at the gate, and he's asking for you. A human? You guys keep an eye out from above. This could mean trouble. I ran over to the gates, and sure enough, there was a human on the other side. But this human was dressed like a mailman. What do you want, human? Don't you worry, little rat. I'm not here to cause you any trouble. Yet. I'm here with a message from all of us humans. What could you thugs have to say to me? We wrote it all down, but watch out. We know about your little base out here. We've seen you and your friends training too. We could destroy all of you if we wanted to, but we'll let it slide on one condition. Yeah? And what's that? Stop messing with our farms and stealing from us. Otherwise, you and all your little rodents can say goodbye. Okay, I'll agree to that on one condition. You let my mouse family and all other animals go. <laughs> they didn't tell me you had a sense of humor, but seriously, knock it off or we'll knock you out. The human turned and walked off. Who do these humans think they are? It's time to teach them a real lesson. On days 50 to 53, Bella and I snuck up to the sheep farm I had been visiting. But this time, I saw they had built a huge wall around it. Looks like we inspired them to up their security, but I think I know how to beat that. Bella pulled out her shovel. Shovel? Shovel. Bella and I got right to work, building a tunnel. I had been here enough times to know just where I needed to go to pop out under the sheep pen. We tunneled our way through and popped up right underneath them. Holy sheep, where did you two come from? Oh, I didn't know you guys could talk. Uh, sorry for dyeing you different colors and stealing your wool. Are you serious? You're the only one who has been cutting our wool, and it's hot out here. You're doing us a favor. Oh, well, that's great to hear. You guys wouldn't happen to want to live in my base, would you? We thought you'd never ask. The humans are the worst. We all jumped into the tunnel and ran back out from under the wall. This was going to make the humans so mad. It was perfect. Back at the base, I got right to work building the sheep a nice farmhouse to live in. They didn't even have a roof over their heads before. This was going to be much better. Now we just needed to sit back and see how the humans would react. On days 54 to 57, I was down in the mines gathering some more materials. The humans would probably want to attack me at some point, so I needed to make some upgrades. Once I had collected everything I needed in the mines, I headed upstairs and went over to the crafting table. Using the obsidian I had gotten from the arena, I managed to put together an enchanting table. Time to really upgrade my gear. I went into the library and cleared out a space for the enchanting table. I surrounded the room with bookshelves and placed the table at the center of the room. Then I went through all of my gear and gave them different enchantments to make them stronger. I'm gonna be one tough mouse to beat now. I then went outside and got to work on the next part of the statue. This time it was all about the details, starting with a torch in its left hand. Then I got to work on a sword for the right hand. This was my favorite part of the build for sure. This statue is looking great. On days 58 to 62, I decided to make some more improvements to the base, starting with the bridge. I took down some of what I had done before, then began adding in some new railings and overhangs. As a final touch, I added in some hanging lanterns. Speaking of lanterns, I thought they looked quite a bit nicer than torches, so I went around the base and replaced all the torches with lanterns. I also added a doorbell. The least any invading human can do is ring the bell first. I then headed inside and cleared out a wall and added a window. Inside, I put some cushions and bookshelves to make a sitting room. The voles were really getting into their books, so I thought they'd enjoy the space. Later that evening, I was lounging in the sitting room with Bella. I've just got to tell you, Zozo, you're a really great friend. To me, the voles, everyone you meet. And plus, this base looks amazing. Thanks, Bella. That means a lot coming from you. On days 63 to 66, I heard someone ringing the doorbell and went out to take a look. Perched outside was the crane. Good morning, sir. It would seem your next challenger is ready. He'll be even tougher than before, but the crowd has been begging to see you in action again. I think you really made an impression on them. Okay, great. I'll be there. Later on, I was back at the arena. The gate opened and I stepped into the ring. The crowd was still in darkness, but they sounded excited to see me. Across the arena, I saw a honey badger had stepped in to face me. We squared off, and as soon as the bell was rung, we leapt into action. The crane was right. This honey badger was way stronger than my last fight, and his claws were really hurting. Sorry, but I've got a family to fight for. I thought about everything Bella had told me about, and tried to put it into action. Once I started landing the more powerful blows, I could tell it was only a matter of time. Soon, the badger was defeated. The crowd went wild. I did it! Like before, emeralds started to drop from the ceiling, followed by some lapis, netherite ingots, and health potions. There was also a mythical potion, which said it could only be used by a mythical hero. Huh, I wonder what this is about. It's supposed to taste like bananas, too. I bet among 
monkey of legend would be into this. Just then, I noticed there were two small honey badgers crying on the other side of one of the gates. Hey, uh, that wasn't your dad, was it? No, our real dad was taken away by humans long ago, but that badger you just fought had agreed to take us in. He just needed to win the fight to get the resources to take care of us. Oh wow, I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea he was also fighting for her family. It's okay, he knew the risks. We know that you're just trying to rescue your family from the humans too. We're just tired of them ruining all of our lives. You know what? Why don't you two come live in my base with me? There's all kinds of animals there who would love to be your family. Wow, that would be amazing. The two little badgers followed me back to our base. They were excited to finally have a place to call home. I went ahead and dug out a room for them to stay too. Who knows how long these two little guys had been looking for a home. On days 67 to 70, I headed out of the base. Things were really starting to come along. Where is everyone? I walked out and saw the voles were outside harvesting some wheat, but Bella was out there giving them commands. What is she doing? I headed down to talk to her. Hey, what are you doing? Telling everyone what to do. Oh, hey, Zozo. I figured that since I was the mouse of myth, I should probably be the one calling the shots around here. I don't really know why you keep saying you're the mouse of myth. There's not really any proof. For all you know, it's me. Oh, yeah? Well, if you were the mouse of myth, you'd already have the frost slayer sword. The what? Yeah, see? You don't even know what it is. Part of the legend is that the mouse of myth is able to get it from the great northern tundra. Well, you don't have it either. In fact, I'm going to get it right now. Oh, yeah? Not if I get it first. Bella and I took off for the great northern tundra. I would show her. We soon arrived, and boy, was it cold. We were both so worried about getting there first, we ran right into a pack of polar bears. Uh-oh. We both fought hard to stay alive, but it was clear we couldn't fight them off fighting on our own. We changed our strategy and saw that by working together, we were able to take them all out. Ah, oh, Bella, what are we doing? We're going to get ourselves into some serious trouble if we don't work together. You're right. We're being really hasty. How about this? We both work together to get the sword. Once we get there, we can just see who the sword chooses. It's not really up to us who the Mouse of Myth is, anyway. Exactly. All right, let's go get that sword. On day 71 to 74, Bella and I continued deeper into the tundra. As we traveled through the ice spikes, we soon came across a dungeon. This must be the place. No matter what happens, we'll still be friends. Deal? Deal. Bella and I ran down the stairs and into the dungeon. It's full of water. How are we going to get through? Just then, we noticed some levers at the top of the stairs. These must control the platforms down there. Here, you go down and I'll work these levers. I ran down by the water as Bella started flipping switches. After hitting the first one, a platform came out of the wall. I jumped over to it. Bella continued hitting the switches and more platforms came out of the wall. I had some close calls jumping between them, but eventually I made it to the next passageway. Hang on a second. There's a lever in here. Let me hit it and see what it does. I flipped the switch and a shortcut opened up for Bella. She hopped down. Nice hopping. Let's see what else is in here. We kept going down the hallway when suddenly a bunch of poison snowballs came flying out of the wall, hitting us. Ouch, those really hurt. There was a small passageway, so we ducked through there to heal up. Zozo, I have to be honest with you. What is it? I know I'm really confident all the time, but the truth is, I'm not sure if I'm actually the mouse of myth. The old mouse woman had just told me a story so specific, I felt like it had to be me. Yeah, it was the same thing for me. But you know what we haven't considered yet? What's that? Maybe she was just making the whole thing up to trick mice like us to take on the humans. You know what? You're probably right. As if we didn't have enough reason to want to fight them. I guess we'll find out soon enough anyway. I agreed. That's when I noticed something odd about the box we were next to. Hey, is there something in this? We looked inside and saw there was a fancy new helmet inside. My diamond helmet was still in good shape, so I let Bella take it. We decided to keep pushing on and ran out into the snowballs. We took some hits, but made it through. We soon entered a big room that was full of bad guys. We sprang into action, fighting them off. Some of them cast magic spells that dropped explosive ice blocks on us. They were really tough, but nothing could break the power of our friendship. We quickly cleared the room. I think this might be the last room up ahead. Let's finish this together. On day 75 to 78, we stepped into a large room where a snow troll was standing in the center of the room. But look what he was standing in front of. The frost lair. I can see it. Let's get that troll out of our way. Bella and I sprinted in, swinging our weapons as hard as we could. This guy was unbelievably strong. His blows did a lot of damage, and no matter how hard we hit him, it seemed like he wasn't even hurt. This guy is crazy. I don't know if we can beat him. Our health was dropping fast, too. Maybe neither of us was the Mouse of Myth, and it was all going to end here. But just then, I had an idea. Bella, follow my lead. Hey, don't. Dum -dum, over here! We took off running, and he followed us over by one of the support pillars. He swung his stone column at me, but I jumped out of the way, causing him to hit the support pillar. There was a crack, and suddenly, the whole pillar fell over, smashing the troll. Zozo, that was brilliant. Go on, you can grab the sword first. I stepped up and took a hold of the sword. Suddenly, nothing happened. It was just a normal sword. There's nothing special about this sword. Here, I tossed the sword over to Bella, who picked it up. You're right. This is just like holding any other sword. That legend must not be true. Otherwise, only one of us could have held this. True, or maybe it's just about anyone. No one is born the Mouse of Myth. You become it by trying. Suddenly, there was a rumbling sound, and the roof started to cave in. Without the support column, we were all in danger. We ran as fast as we could and made it out of the room just in time. 
On day 79 to 84, we had made it back to the base and settled back in for the night. The next day, I had a lot of work to do. I started by doubling the size of our farm so everyone would have plenty to eat. Then I got busy putting in a path around it. This was going to be much easier to navigate. Then I went over and put together an archery range for the squirrels. They had been really helpful when the zombies had attacked, so I wanted to give them an even better training ground. Nice shooting, guys. If humans show up here, they aren't going to know what hit them. The vaults had also mentioned to me how they were reading all about gardening and wanted to try their hand at maintaining a garden. So I put in a small garden for them to manage as well. Yeah, we better get the pruners out. These roses are already looking a little wild. And keep a close eye on those poppies. I'd hate to see them fall to the weeds. With so many animals around, the outdoors were starting to get a little untidy, so I made a small storage shack for us to stash all of our odds and ends. Part of these improvements was also getting a better space for us to improve our weapons and armor, so I built a smithy area for us to do everything we needed to do. I thought it turned out pretty nice. With the new smithy, I took some time to fix up all of my diamond gear, as Bella fired up the blast furnace to make improvements to her equipment too. Then I headed inside to the smithing table, where I used all of the netherite I had one in the arena to upgrade my diamond gear to netherite. Then I brought the new gear over to the enchanting table where I enchanted all of my netherite equipment. I'm going to be one unstoppable mouse now. And finally, our last project was upgrading our walls, which the voles offered to help with. At this point, our humble little rat base was becoming a full-on castle. We gave the walls major upgrades and even built a large tower. On days 85 to 89, the vole came running into my room with a warning. Zozo, the humans are outside the walls. Come quickly. I hurried and ran to the walls and could see a small army of humans were preparing to charge, but the squirrels were in position and ready to fire. Hold steady, guys. Here they come. The humans began to charge as the squirrels unleashed their arrows. Their training had paid off, and they were deadly shots. Several humans fell as they ran toward the base. It's working. The humans had lost many of their soldiers and started to run away. Yeah, nice job, everyone. They aren't tough at all. What I didn't realize was that this was just a decoy. A powerful warrior had scaled the mountain behind us and jumped into our base. What was that? I turned and saw a warrior standing in the courtyard. He said nothing as he stared up at me. Charge! I leapt into action, swinging my sword, but if there was anything I had learned, it was that friends are stronger together. Bella came running out of the base, followed by the voles. The squirrels started shooting arrows down as well. Even with our combined power, though, it was quite the fight. Keep going, everyone. We can defeat this guy. The warrior was strong, and his armor was hard to crack. Eventually, we managed to knock him over the cliff as he landed in the water. We kept on him, and I swung my new frost slayer sword with all my might. At long last, he was finally defeated. We did it. The humans will never take our land, and they certainly won't take our freedom. Suddenly, I felt strength coming into me, and I leveled up, gaining eight more hearts. We will never be conquered. On days 90 to 94, I ran into Bella in the lobby, but she looked really sad. Bella, what's wrong? I thought you'd be excited after our successful fight. I am excited about our win, but I'm just really down about this Mouse of Myth stuff. I mean, I dedicated my entire life believing I was fulfilling my destiny, but it's looking more like it was all a lie. You know what? I think we should go talk to that old mouse woman. Even if it's all a lie, you can at least be at peace knowing the truth. Bella agreed and we headed out. We soon arrived back at the old woman's house. I told Bella to stay back while I knocked on on the door. As the old woman came out, she was excited to see me. Oh, look who it is. Could it be our very own Mouse of Myth? Cut it, lady. We came here to find out the truth. We? Just then, Bella jumped up, which caught the old woman by surprise. We? Why did you tell both of us the same legend? Is there a Mouse of Myth or not? Oh, uh, I, yes. Er, no. I, uh, uh okay, okay. The truth. The truth is that I made it all up. Why would you do that? That lie nearly destroyed our friendship. Oh, I'm sorry. I never would have wanted that. The humans have been messing with mice for decades, and no one ever seemed brave enough to stand up to them. I just thought if I made up a story, I might be able to inspire someone to actually do it. They took my family years ago, and I've always wanted revenge. Well, I suppose there are worse things to lie about. We do want to teach them a lesson, and are actually strong enough to do something about it after all. Bella agreed, and we had a nice chat with the old woman about her family. She sounded lonely living out here, so I invited her to stay at the base with us. She agreed, but on one condition. We had to rebuild her house exactly the same. I took some time to take down her house so that we'd have all the right pieces. Then later, back at the base, I reconstructed it so it would be exactly how it was before. She was delighted to have a familiar but safe place to stay. On days 95 to 97, I walked out of the base to see the crane waiting for me. Oh, good morning again, sir. I know you've got your hands full, but your next challenger is ready for you. The crowd has said that they wish to see you fight once more. I'm sure they will make it worth your while. Well, one more round of upgrades before we fight the humans would be nice. Okay, I'll do it. The crane nodded before flying up and away. Later that day, I arrived back at the arena entrance, ready for my fight. I entered in and headed back into the arena. As the gate opened on the other side, I was shocked to see who it was. Bella, what are you doing here? It's okay, Zozo. We don't have to fight to the death. I've been doing these fights too so that I can train. Come on, it'll be a fun training exercise. We can see who is actually the strongest. Well, all right. I don't know if the crowd will like it, but obviously I don't want either of us to be eliminated. Of course 
course not. Bring it on. Bella and I charged at each other. We weren't planning on taking each other out, but neither of us were holding back. The crowd was going absolutely crazy. Bella, is this too much? Maybe we should stop. No, listen to them. They're loving it. We've got to give them a good show if we want them to still pay out at the end. It didn't feel right to me, but we kept fighting on. Bella was such an amazing fighter, but she had taught me all of her moves. I landed a really hard hit, and Bella backed off. Oh, okay. I think we need to stop there. Nice hit, Zozo. Yeah, of course. You really had me on the ropes. Once the crowd realized what was happening, they started to boo. I could hear the crane's voice coming from the stands. Zozo, what are you waiting for? Finish her off. What? No, she's my friend. Fine, but people came here expecting a finale, and I'm going to give it to them. Just then, the crane dropped in from the darkness, finishing off Bella. What have you done? The animals watching are going to support me against you. <laughs> you mean these animals? I looked at the balcony and saw that the crowd had stepped closer, revealing themselves to be humans. I couldn't believe the crane had been working for them this whole time. I could feel my blood beginning to boil, and in my rage, I grew into a large, ferocious rat. You're gonna pay for that. I charged at the crane, hitting him again and again, defeating him in no time. I could hear the humans laughing as one of them shouted for the guards. The gate opened and a bunch of human guards came running in. Get out of my way. The guards thought they could stop my rampage, but I was way too angry. I swung my sword with all my might and quickly took them all out. I could tell the humans watching were starting to get nervous. Don't think that you're getting away either. With my new strength, I jumped from the arena into the balcony and started to attack. They didn't realize who they were messing with. I managed to take several of them out as they tried to run away. Enough is enough. I've got to end this. I jumped back into the arena and ran out of the building. On day 98, I had made it back to my base, and my rage had turned to sadness. I couldn't believe Bella was gone. As I looked at the statue, I wanted to do something nice to remember her. Atop the mouse statue, I took some time to add the same hat that Bella had worn when we first met. She had always said it was one of her favorites. That night, I was looking at the statue, when suddenly, Bella appeared in front of me. Zozo, thank you for dedicating the statue to me. I want you to know that everything is okay. But it was never supposed to be like this. We were supposed to take down the humans together. I know, but the truth is, I don't think you need me. I spent a lot of time thinking Thinking about the Mouse of Myth, the old woman may have made it up, and in doing so, she also made it come true. You have become the Mouse of Myth, and I'm so proud to have been your friend. I shed a tear and thanked her for everything she had taught me. I felt like it was finally time to fulfill my destiny. It was time to save my family and the world. On day 99, I met with all of my friends in our base. Okay guys, it's time. If any of you want to stay behind, you can. No one will hold it against you. No one said a word. They were ready to fight. Very well. Get geared up. We attack at nightfall. Before leaving, I ran over to the chest and grabbed the mythical potion, as well as the health potions I had gotten earlier. The team regrouped in the lobby, and we headed out for the human's base. On my way out, I paused to look at the mouse statue. I could feel Bella was with us. We soon reached the gates to the human's town, but how are we going to get in? Don't worry, guys. I know just what to do. The vault slipped through a small hole in the side of the guard tower, popping out inside of the base. He ran over to the lever and flipped it, letting us all in. Nice going! Let's get him! We stormed into the base, running into a couple of humans. All together, we took them out with ease. Off in the distance, I could see the farmer. This time, he was geared up to fight. There they are, Bosco. Take him out. Bosco? Bosco attacked his owner, taking him out. Then he ran over to us. You've had me thinking more than I have in my whole life. These humans have been so mean to other animals, and I can't be part of it. I'm here to help. With Bosco now on our team, we charged into the streets. There were several humans geared up to fight, but they weren't ready for us. We all unleashed our attacks, knocking them out of our way. Keep going, guys. We're doing great. We kept fighting through the streets and soon came upon a mansion in the middle of town. This had to be where my family was being kept. We charged the doors and quickly took out the guards. But how are we going to get in? Hang on, folks. I'll get us in there somehow. The vole started sniffing around and soon found another hole on the side of the building. He crawled through, dropping into a library maze. Good thing I got into reading. I just have to follow the titles back to A, and then I'll be back at the front. Using the authors as his guide, the vole wove through the maze until he noticed a hole. Nice, a shortcut. He popped out and flipped the switch, letting us all inside. Just then, there was a sound in the town, and we could see the whole army was coming for us. Quick, Zozo, go. We can hold them off. Yeah, man, your family needs you. You guys are the best. I will see you soon. I ran into the basement as the rest of my friends stayed back. As I entered the basement, I could see it was filled with animals, including my mouse family. Remy, it's me. We've got to get you guys out of here. Zozo, I can't believe it. Look how big and strong you are. Just then, I heard the gate slam and hurried back up the stairs. Well, 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 if it isn't the rat that got away, I should have captured you when I had the chance. You, you are just the worst. No monologues. I jumped into action, swinging my sword 
sword. Where had all my friends gone? Did he hurt them? I didn't have too long to think about it though, as he was really starting to hurt me. My health was dropping, and so my only option was to run away and heal up. What's wrong? Too afraid to fight? I had just gotten my health restored when the human caught up to me. I was going to keep you as a pet, but something like you is too powerful to be kept alive. We kept fighting, but I was starting to lose hope. He was too strong. I hurried and ran up the stairs to the roof to heal some more, hiding around the corner. Come out, come out, little mousy. I just want to talk. This human had been the cause of so many problems. He had destroyed and captured so many of my friends. He was going to pay. I took out the mythical potion. If I'm truly the mouse of myth, this will help me. I drank the potion down and felt a powerful surge of energy. I gained more hearts and felt even stronger than before. It had worked. It was time to end this. What the? How can a little rat become so powerful? What is this? This is what happens when you mess with a guy's friends, his family, his world. The human had backed up against the edge. No, okay, okay, surely we can work some Something out. Nope, it's over. I lunged forward and knocked him off the roof, sending him falling to the ground below. He's gone, but where are my friends? On day 100, I heard a shout as all of my friends came running over the bridge. It turned out they had pushed the soldiers all the way back into the town and defeated them. I made my way back into the dungeon and finally released my family along with all the other animals. We laughed and we cried. It had been too long. Back at the base, everyone celebrated. Even all the way from Mousy Heaven, I felt like I could hear Bella jumping for joy. Our fight was finally over. On day one, I spawned in as a stray cat. I've only got a few hearts, but look how quick I am. I noticed that I was starting to feel hungry, so I immediately started looking for food. As I explored, I soon saw a small village up ahead. I checked one of the houses and noticed that there was some meat on the table. Oh, perfect, just what I need. I hopped up on the table and grabbed it. Hey, get out of my house. The human clearly didn't want me here. I wasn't ready for a fight, so all I could do was run. I kept running until I was back in the woods from before. Why was he so mean to me? This is going to be a hard 100 days if no one wants to be my friend. I kept exploring the woods when I saw a group of cats up ahead. More cats! Hi guys! Oh hey, you must be new around here. We were just trying to figure out how we were going to get some dinner. You're telling me. I just took some meat from one guy's house and he chased me all around. But here, I'll share it with you guys. The cats were really thankful and excited about the meat. They must have been really hungry. I was glad to have met them. We were going to have all kinds of great adventures together. Before we had realized it, night had fallen. That was when we were suddenly attacked by a zombie. Quick, into the trees. My new cat friends had all climbed into the trees, but I wasn't fast enough. I had no choice but to fight. Luckily, the zombie wasn't very strong, and I was able to fight him off. But that was just one, and a whole group of skeletons were suddenly on me. I've gotta get away! I ran off and soon saw a thick tree. I hurried and punched a hole in it, where I was able to crawl inside, away from the skeletons. That was way too risky. I'll have to stay in here for the night. On day two, I woke up to one of my new cat friends punching a hole in the tree. Come on, Zozo, we've gotta start looking for food. What do you mean? I thought cats got to lay around and be lazy all day. That's just house cats. Strays like us have to work hard all day to survive. Come on! I hopped out of the tree and got to work punching some trees and collecting wood. With the wood I collected, I made a crafting table, then used the crafting table to make a wood pickaxe shovel, axe, and sword. I'm gonna have to get even more wood if I'm gonna make myself a proper base. Using my new wood axe, I got to work chopping down some more wood. That's when I heard the sound of a spider and was suddenly attacked. Back off, you creepy crawler. The claws were still stronger than a wooden sword, so I swung them and managed to take the spider out. Not too much later, even more spiders attacked. I was really quick and nimble, so I had no problem taking them out too. All right, that's enough spider fighting. I need to get working on that base. I climbed up a nearby tree and started working on a treehouse. It was hard enough that we would have to scrounge for food. We didn't need to be constantly fighting off mobs too. Speaking of food though, I saw a small bird had landed on the other side of my treehouse. Ooh, that bird looks delicious. I positioned myself, then sprang forward, missing the platform. There was a loud crunch as I hit the ground. I landed on my feet, but falling from a big height still hurt. To my surprise though, my health started going up. That's when a counter appeared, showing that my nine lives were now down to eight. Just then, my cat friend came running over. Oh, thank goodness. I heard you fall and was worried it might have been your last life. Nope, I've still got eight to go. Oh, well, you're lucky. The rest of us have been strays for a while, and we're all down to our last one. Hopefully, you're never in our position. There was no time to talk, though, as suddenly, a pack of wolves came out of nowhere and attacked. Zozo, run! We all split up and ran off in different directions. Why were these wolves chasing us? Come here, you little snack. Oh, because they wanted to eat us. Of course. I managed to jump into my tree and climb up to the top. Thankfully, the wolves were too big to fit in my tree. You got away this time, but we'll be back. You can't get away from our boss.
I didn't like the sound of that, but at least for now, they were leaving me alone. As long as I can climb trees, I'm sure I'll be safe. Later, my cat friends climbed up with me, and together we all watched the sunset. At least we all had each other. On day three, I woke up to a terrifying sound. The sound of wolf howls. It was scary, but we were still safe in the trees. But that's when I saw him. What is that? A giant wolf monster was headed our way. This must be the other wolf's boss. You can't hide from me. The monster wolf climbed up the side of the tree, up onto our platform. Watch out, guys. Run! We all ran off in different directions, but it was too late. The wolves managed to get all of my friends, knocking them out one by one. No, oh, my friends! There was nothing more I could do. Somehow I was the lucky one, and they didn't notice me up in the tree. As the wolves left, all I could think about was how alone I felt. Those wolves are gonna pay for what they've done. Mark my words! On days four to five, I woke up in my unfinished base. It's not safe here in the forest. I'll have to find a new place to live. I left the forest and headed off. I had heard once that cats were originally desert animals, so I decided I would find a desert far from here to live in. I'm sure wolves won't like the desert heat, too. A desert will be twice as safe. As I entered the desert, I decided that I was going to build the greatest cat tower the world had ever seen. Plus, it would be really safe to live in. Triple safety. If I'm gonna do this, I've gotta get stone, and lots of it. I found myself a nice cave and snuck down into it, mining up as much stone as I could. While I was down there, I also made sure to grab some coal that could be used to power my furnace later. Let's get crafting. Using a crafting table, I used my new stone to make myself a stone pickaxe. I also made myself a stone shovel, sword, and axe. Next up, wood. I needed tons of wood, so much that I cleared out an entire area of trees. With my inventory now full of all the building supplies I needed, I started to build the first level of my cat tower that would also double as my starter base. Once I had finished the outside, I got to work filling up the inside. I put up some pictures as well as all the tables I was going to need. Soon, the first level was complete. All right, I think this is going to be a very safe place for me to live. Just as I was saying that, there was an explosion that blew a hole in my wall. What was that? I took a closer look and saw that the base was under attack by creepers. Luckily, there was only one more, so I tried to fight it off. It exploded too, but at least it didn't cause any additional damage to the base. Looks like I better put some torches out. I got right to work, surrounding the base with as many torches as I could. I didn't even want to risk having more creepers blowing me up in the night. Once all the torches were out, I was feeling a little hungry. That's when I saw some desert rabbits hopping around nearby. Dinner! I ran around after the rabbits until I finally managed to take one down. I cooked the meat back at the base and chowed down. That sure was tasty, but I'm gonna have to find out an easier way to eat if I'm going to live here much longer. On day six to eight, I got up and headed out the door. It was enough delay. I needed to start getting ready to fight back against the wolves. It wasn't too long and I found myself heading down into a cave. Time to find some iron. Just inside the cave were several iron veins, so I got right to work mining them all out. After a while, I had gotten plenty of iron and I heard a growl behind me. Who's there? What are you doing in my cave? Leave now or I'll be forced to take you down. Please, I just wanted to collect some iron. These evil wolves destroyed all of my friends, and now I have nowhere to call home. I know your pain. My family was taken from me when I was young too. Not by wolves, but by poachers at a nearby village. I've been all alone ever since. Why don't you take revenge on those poachers? Have you seen yourself? You're a big, powerful lion. Uh, you know, I never really thought about it. I guess I didn't realize just how big I've gotten. Yeah, let's do it. Although first I've got to drop this stuff off at my base. You can come along if you'd like. The lion and I ran back over to my base. When we arrived, the lion was impressed. Wow, this is quite the place you've got here. Much better than my cold cave. Thanks. Give me a bit here to get ready to go. I tossed the iron I had collected into the furnace and smelted it all down. When it was done, I got crafting and made myself a full set of iron armor. I even made myself a full set of iron equipment, which the lion was really impressed by. Turned out he was actually really nice. Oh and his name was Lenny. On days nine to 10, Lenny and I traveled to the village where the poachers were living. As soon as we got there, we could see the poachers. There were tons of small animals in cages, and they even had the lion's family's heads mounted on the wall. These guys were sick. Lenny wasted no time and attacked. I tried to jump in too so that I could help as much as possible. Lenny was so strong and managed to take most of them out. Suddenly, a couple of poachers surrounded him, and it wasn't looking good. Heads up, I jumped down from above and managed to take out the poachers. There were a few more left, but together we were able to take them all out. Nice job, Lenny. I know it can't replace your family, but at least justice has been served. Thank you for encouraging me, Zozo. I feel much better than I did before. I also feel hungry. These little birds look delicious. Oh, hang on. I know we like to eat meat, but these guys don't deserve the same fate as your family. Let's let them go. Lenny was disappointed, but agreed. So we let them all out of their cages. I'm pretty sure some of them got away from Lenny just a little faster than they normally would have. We then headed over to the nearby farm and gathered up as many seeds as we could. If we really wanted to help animals, it looked like 
like we might have to get used to a little more grain in our diets. Except when it comes to chickens. I took out a few chickens to eat later. I was still a carnivore after all. With all that out of the way, I asked Lenny if he wanted to live in my base with me, to which he happily agreed. Back at the base, I got right to work making Lenny his own bedroom. I felt bad he had been living in a cold cave alone all this time, so I did my best to make it really nice. On days 11 to 12, I went to find Lenny to ask him some questions. I asked him if he knew anything about the huge wolf that had taken out his family, but he said he wasn't sure. There was, however, a wise elephant that I could ask. I made my way to a nearby savanna to find the elephant. I tried asking all the animals I passed, but none of them seemed to know who I was talking about. As I was looking, I was suddenly attacked by a pack of hyenas. Leave me alone, you giggle freaks. I managed to hurt some of the hyenas. There were way too many of them. I was still just a little cat and had to get out of there. I managed to make it out of there, which is when I saw a baby elephant. Oh, I bet they know something. I ran over to them. Hey, I'm looking for a wise old elephant. Do you know where I can find them? I do. Come with me. I can show you. As we traveled, I noticed she seemed kind of sad. I soon found out why. We arrived in an elephant graveyard, and she brought me to a grave. This is the elephant you are looking for. She was my grandmother and raised me after my parents died. I am sorry to say, but she passed recently. I'm sorry to hear that. I heard she was able to help a lot of people. She was. In fact, she taught me how to help people the way she did. She would look into the water and could see things. Do you think you'd be able to help me? A wolf has been destroying all of my friends and their families. I need to find him and stop him. I would, but I'm too scared to try it by myself. Before I could say another word though, the hyenas from earlier attacked. But this time I couldn't run away. I had to protect my new friend. As I was fighting the hyenas, the baby elephant ran away. It was a hard fight. These guys were strong and there were a lot of them, but I couldn't fail now. I mustered up the courage and destroyed them all. On days 13 to 15, I went off to search for the baby elephant. That fight must have really spooked her. I've gotta let her know everything is okay. As I ran across the land, I soon saw her at the stream. She was really scared. Hey, I'm sorry about that back there, but everything is okay now. You fought off all of those hyenas? That was really brave of you. Thank you, but can I let you in on a little secret? What's that? I was actually really scared. They had attacked me before and the first time, I ran away. Really? Why didn't you run away this time? I thought about it, but I knew you needed my help. So I did my best to be brave. The elephant thought about it for a bit. Okay, I will try using my abilities. You want to see where the wolf lives? I'll see what I can do. We looked into the stream and she started to explain what she saw. It looks like he built himself an ice fortress in the great tundra. He'll often lead his wolf pack out to attack other animals like cats. But he isn't doing it for food. He's doing it for fun. This doesn't look good. Thank you for doing that. I know it wasn't easy, but you were great. I have to defeat him, but I know I'm not strong enough yet. Say, what's your name? Oh, it's Delilah. Delightful. Would you want to come live at my base with me? It might feel safer there. Oh, well, thank you, but I feel like I'm not ready to leave the land of my grandma yet. But please, come see me anytime. I thanked her and took off. As I was crossing the stream, though, I was suddenly attacked by a crocodile. I already hated water enough. Now there were things attacking me. Come on, you little snapper, leave me alone. I tried to run away, but he was too quick. It looked like my only option was to fight. It wasn't too long, and he managed to take me out. That's when I saw my life counter change from eight lives to seven. Oh no, that's not good. Problem was, I still couldn't run. The croc was vicious and wouldn't leave me alone. Suddenly, I had lost another life. Oh, I can't take much more of this. Luckily for me though, I had been getting hits in, and even though he had taken two of my lives, I was able to finally take his. And he only had one. And stay down. I decided to explore the bank a little more and soon saw the nook where the crocodile must have been hiding. I looked inside and there was a chest. Oh, look at all these fish, my favorite food. And in the middle, there was a mystical fruit salad. I don't really like fruit, but I'll give it a go. I scarfed it down and it turns out it was delicious. Just then, I felt some power surge through me and I got bigger with more hearts. Wow, maybe there's something to this eating fruit thing. On day 16 to 19, I arrived back at the base. I met up with Lenny and he told me that he was feeling really hungry. Hey, you can have some of this fish I just got. He was pretty happy about that. Then I decided I should start planting seeds as we would need to have a good food source. I decided to build the farm into the tower and thought that worked really well. This farm looks great. I was thinking about the fight with the crocodile and how I had lost so many lives. I was going to have to be more careful. So to do that, I decided to craft myself a bow. That way I won't have to be so close to danger all the time. But first, I'm gonna need some string. I took off in the direction of a nearby cave and soon found some spiders. The spiders weren't nearly as happy to see me as I was to see them, and in no time, I had gotten myself enough string to make my bow. Now that I had everything I needed, I was able to quickly put together a bow for myself. It was just in time too, because a black bear had walked up behind me. 
I hope this thing works. I started firing the bow, landing hits with my arrows. The bear was angry with me, but I was feeling way better with my ranged weapon. Soon enough, I had taken him out. On days 20 to 22, I had the urge, the urge to build. It was statue time. But in order to do that, I was gonna need some wool. I went and talked to Lenny about it, and he told me there was a herd of sheep nearby he was thinking of hunting. No, you can't hunt these guys. We'll need their wool. Lenny was disappointed, but agreed. He wasn't taking to a plant-based diet as easily as I was. I headed off in the direction Lenny had mentioned and soon saw the sheep. I took out my wheat and led them back toward my base. When we arrived, I quickly put together a pen, then locked them all inside. That's when Lenny came around the corner. Okay, dinner. Lenny, wait. You promised you weren't going to eat them, remember? They're for wool, not food. Ah, shoot. Fine. Next up, I needed to get some dye to turn the sheep into the proper colors. I went to the plains biome and found some corn flowers. Using the flowers, I was able to make some blue dye and dye the sheep blue. Now it was time to get started. Using the wool, I started on the first part. I feel like this one is going to turn out even better than anything I've built so far, but you'll have to be the judge of that. Soon, the first part was complete. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, you'll miss out on all my future adventures. On days 23 to 26, I felt like it was time to learn more about this wolf monster and travel to the Arctic where he lived. As I got closer, I heard some wolf howls and hurried up into a tree to hide. I'm not letting them catch me off guard this time. Just then, I saw the wolves come by, and as they got closer, I saw that I had a good shot with my bow. Only there weren't so many of them. I decided it wasn't worth the risk, especially with the wolf monster there. But now I knew for sure that he lived here. As I watched them, I saw them go toward a snowy village. They attacked some of the villagers and took out their livestock. These guys were horrible. They continued through the village, taking everything out. When there was nothing left, they left the village. Why would they do something like this? Now that they were gone, I went to investigate the village. There were some crops here, and it didn't look like the villagers were going to be needing them anytime soon, so I picked up as much as I could. As I was going through the village, I suddenly ran into a baby wolf. What the, what are you doing here? Hey you, leave me alone or else. I'm super mean because I'm a wolf. Look buddy, you're not fooling anyone. All the other wolves are gone. Fight me if you want, but we know how it's gonna end. Ah oh, shucks, you're right. The other guys knew I was gonna get shown up by a cat. They'd bully me so bad, even worse than they already do. Why do you think I'm here? They're always leaving me behind and being so mean. I couldn't help but feel bad for this little guy. Look, it's okay. I remember what it was like being a little cat. Why do you say you come join me instead? These guys don't sound like they really care about you. You can say that again. You know what? I'm out of here. Just because we're all wolves doesn't mean I have to put up with them. He was pretty fired up, but I was glad I could help him out. We took off back to the base. On days 27 to 31, we arrived back at the base. The baby wolf, whose name was Willie, immediately tried to eat the sheep. Hang on, hang on, those are our friends, not food. Here, let me get you something. I tossed him some fish, which he was happy to have. That's when Lenny came walking up to us. It turned out he had really been starting to enjoy the veggie life and wanted to share some with us. We headed up to the garden and Lenny tossed some new food out for us. I took a bite. Oh wow, these are really good. You aren't joking. Just then, I grew a little bigger and gained more hearts. Well, would you look at that? Eating veggies is actually good for you. You get more hearts and stay healthy. Nice. I then realized that Willie had nowhere to stay, so I got busy building him his own section of the base. It wasn't big, but it would be perfect for him. Since Lenny was so interested in farming now, I decided I would put a barn together for him too. This way he could put all his farming tools in one place and hopefully continue to not eat the sheep. Soon, the build was complete. I was starting to run low on wood, so I headed over to the nearby birch forest to stock up. I collected all the wood I needed, then decided to head back. On my way back, I was suddenly attacked by a giant cockroach. How oh, gross. If I would have known there were bugs like this here, I wouldn't have chosen to live here. I had managed to make my way into a tree where I was able to pick them off with the bow. But suddenly, Willie came running into the fight. Willie, no, stay back. Willie ignored me and kept fighting. But it turned out he was actually a really good fighter. Soon, we had taken them out. Oh, nice moves. Those other wolves better watch out. You'd be able to kick their butts. Willie told me I was being too nice and we headed back to the base. Later on, I had gone into the mines where I found some iron. I figured Willie could use some armor, so I collected it as much as I could. Back of the base, I smelted down the iron, then used the iron ingots to make him his very own set of iron armor. I went and gave it to him, which he was very excited about. On days 32 to 35, I woke up to the sound of meowing. Could that be more cats? 
I went to take a look and it turned out there were a bunch of cats out there. Oh, hey guys, how did you find me? There's a giant cat tower in the middle of the desert. How could we miss it? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good point. They asked if they could live here, and I of course agreed. That did leave me with a problem, though. I couldn't fit all of them in my room. So I got right to work making them their own rooms at the top of the tower. I couldn't believe more cats were around. I would have to keep an eye out for some more of them. Once I had finished building their houses, I went to work on the statue with Willie. I had to get the next part done. If my cat tower was drawing people in, I'm sure a big statue would bring them in too. Soon, we finished the second part. Back at the base, I decided to check in with the cats. They had settled in nicely. Hey, do you guys know of any other cats? I'd love to help as many as I can. Well, there is this one woman we had heard of who takes in cats and cares for them. We were actually on our way there when we found your base. You could try checking there. They explained to me where I needed to go. I wanted to make as many cat friends as I could. We would be stronger together. On days 36 to 39, I arrived in the desert the cats had mentioned, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Hmm, let me see if someone can help me. I talked to every animal I ran into, hoping they could point me in the right direction. But everyone I talked to said they hadn't heard of her. That's when I suddenly stumbled upon a huge desert pyramid. Well, it's not the house I'm looking for, but maybe there's something useful in here. I headed into the pyramid, which is when I saw a horde of zombies at the bottom. Luckily, I still had my bow, so I used that to hurry and take most of them out. Then I jumped down and finished the rest of them off with my sword. As I explored, I came across more zombies, but I was able to fight them off. Just then, I saw a button with a sign next to it. Just a normal button, trust me. Okay. I hit the button and another button rose up out of the ground. I shrugged and hit that button. I heard a noise in the other room and ran over to see a hole had opened up in the ground. Oh, what could be down here? I went down in the hole and found another button. This is getting a little ridiculous. I hit the button, which revealed a hidden room, full of gold. Wait, seriously? I thought for sure this must have been a trap. I entered the room and started picking up all of the loot. This was some good stuff. I checked the chest and saw there was an enchanting book for Punch 2. Oh, now my bow is really going to be able to knock people back. I was feeling pretty good about things, so I headed back out of the pyramid, off to try and find the woman's house. On days 40 to 43, I was running through some hills when I saw a group of llamas. Hey, do you guys know where I could find a cat lady's house? To my luck, they knew exactly who I was talking about. Turns out the house was just over the hill. They told me to be careful though, the lady was pretty weird. I ran in the direction they had pointed and soon saw the house in the distance. I ran up to the house when a woman came running out. Oh, it's another kitty! Here, kitty, kitty! Here, kitty, kitty! Oh, wow, you're super friendly. I heard you had a bunch of cats here, and I'd love to meet them. Oh, yes, I love cats. They're the best. Maybe you can even stay here with me. Oh, well, maybe. I've kind of got my own thing going, but I'd love to say hi to everyone. Well, please, please come in. Let me show you around. The woman led me into her house and showed me around to the different rooms. I could hear some cats, but none of the rooms we went into seemed to have any cats. Something seemed off, but maybe it was just how much she seemed to love cats. And this final room is my favorite. It's where all the cats live. Finally. I stepped into the room, but all of the cats were in cages. What was going on? You can be my newest friend! Suddenly, I was hit with a potion and went to sleep. On days 44 to 49, I woke up inside of one of the cages on the wall. The crazy cat lady had captured me. I tried my best to break out, but she had taken all of my tools. Is there anyone out there? Yeah, man, I can hear you. Just give up. There's no way to get out of this place. What do you mean? How did you guys end up here? We all thought this was going to be a good place for us strays to live, but she keeps us locked up in cages. She likes cats, but she likes them so much, she never wants us to leave, even for a second. The cat lady had come into the room and was going around feeding the other cats. This might be my moment to escape. As she came to my cage and opened it, I pounced. Out of my way, lady. I saw a chest nearby. My stuff must be in there. Inside, I could see I was right and tried to grab as much of it as I could. But it was no use as I was hit by another one of her potions, which put me back to sleep. I woke up again, back in the cage. Tried punching the walls again, but it was no use. I told you, it's better just to give up. This is our life now. How long have you been in here anyway? Oh, I don't even remember anymore. It's been years. Years? I can't be here for years. What's going to happen to all my friends without me? On days 50 to 53, I awoke in my cage to the sound of panting. It was Willie. Uh -huh. Willie, what are you doing here? Something about this cat lady seemed fishy to me, so I followed you, just in case. Boy, am I glad you did. Willie opened the cage and I hopped out. I was free. I ran over to the chest and grabbed all my stuff. Just then, the cat lady came in. Is that? Is that a wolf? I hate dogs and especially wolves! I'll take care of you! The cat lady drank down a potion and turned into a witch. All right, Willie, we can take this lady. We all jumped into battle. She might have been crazy, but she was also crazy strong. Even with our combined power, we couldn't defeat her. Suddenly, I lost one of my lives. Oh, shoot, now I'm down to five. I can't let her beat me. I focused all of my energy and took her out. 
Just then, there was a surge of energy, and Willy leveled up. Whoa, Willy, look at you. You're even stronger than before. Willy was super excited. Next, we decided to take a look around the house and managed to find an enchanted diamond helmet. Oh, nice. I'm going to be even more protected than before. Maybe I can hold on to my remaining five lives now. I then met up with the other cats and invited them to come live at my base with me. They happily agreed, and we set off. On days 54 to 57, I made it back to the base and got right to work making additions to the base. With all the new cats, we were going to need some serious upgrades. They had spent so long in cages, I wanted to make sure they had a nice place to live. Soon, the room was complete. Later on, I was chatting with the cats when they told me how hungry they were. I was pretty much out of fish, and I couldn't ask them to stick to a plant-based diet. Although to be fair, Lenny had really gotten into it. Hang on guys, I've got an idea. I headed back down to the base and went over to the water. Using my shovel, I dug out the land until I was able to connect the small pond near our base to the river. Now the water would run right by our front door and fish could swim right up. I felt like it still needed something though, so I got to work building a fishing dock. We could store our fish and relax here while the cats could cast a line into the water. Once the dock was complete, I led all the cats over to check it out. What do you guys think? We should be swimming in fish in no time. They were all happy as they threw their lines into the water. They'd never have to be hungry again. On days 58 to 62, I collected some wool off the sheep, then headed back over to the statue. I got to work on the next part. I'm sure it's pretty clear what I'm building at this point, but what do you think? Was this what you were expecting me to build? Once I had finished my work on the statue, I remembered I had gotten some enchanting books. Using my new book, I was able to add the punch enchantment to the bow. This will certainly pack a punch now. My bow was great, but I was going to need armor to match, so I left the base to go to a nearby mine. At the bottom of the mine, I could see a bunch of monsters, so I decided to take the new bow for a spin. It was working great, and I managed to take out a ton of them. Some of them got really close to me, but I still managed to take them out, one by one. Whew, hopefully there's not any more of them down here. I kept exploring and soon came across another group of creepers. Oh no, not more of these guys. I tried to take them out, but couldn't stop them all from exploding. Ouch! But what's that? I noticed the explosion had revealed an unnatural block and could hear skeletons on the other side. I broke a block, which revealed the entrance to a dungeon. On days 63 to 66, I knocked out the rest of the blocks and was immediately rushed by some skeletons. Oh, get out of here, you psychos. These skeletons were fast. It's a good thing I came prepared. They tried their best to take one more of my lives, but I managed to fight them all off. All right, let's see what's going on back here. I entered the dungeon and could see more skeletons. Using my bow, I quickly fired at them and took them out. That's when I noticed a button in the middle of the room. What does this do? Unfortunately, it was a trap. More skeleton archers rose up from the ground. I was surrounded. They fired their arrows as I jumped to get out of the way. Luckily, I could take some cover, but even as I jumped out to hit them, it was still too hard. Oh, wait a second, they're stuck. I can just leave. I headed into the hallway. I guess whoever laid that trap didn't think it all the way through. I went and explored the hallways. I wasn't sure where to go next. Then I came across a sign that said treasure room. Huh? Oh, that sounds great to me. I ran into the hallway, falling into a hole. It was another trap. Oh man, I should have known that would happen. I landed in a stone room where there was no way out. Suddenly, the wall across from me started moving. I was going to get crushed. There's got to be a way out. I noticed some different looking blocks and started mining. At the last second, I burst through and fell down another hole. This time, though, I landed in a pool of water. Oh, this place is crazy. I've got to watch my step. Up ahead, I hit a button to open the door and walked through as lava fell from the ceiling. Luckily, I made it through the door quick enough before it could hurt me. The next room was full of lava with platforms I had to jump to. That would have been easy, except the place was full of skeleton archers. I tried to cross, but they knocked me into the lava. Ooh, hot, hot. I managed to crawl out before the lava burnt me to a crisp. I started shooting arrows at the skeleton, taking a couple of them out. That's when I noticed there was a chest and some diamonds up ahead. Oh, I've got to get to that. To reach it though, there was one more archer. I took careful aim and fired, taking him out. The treasure is all mine. I hopped the rest of the way up and opened the chest. Inside, there was a diamond block as well as a bunch of diamonds. This is exactly what I was searching for. With everything out of the chest, I then mined out all of the diamonds in the wall. My pockets were now overflowing with goodies. Now how do I get out of here? I hopped across the room and saw a door, which I barely managed to get through after grabbing onto some vines. I swam up a waterfall and followed the hallways until I saw another room with a chest. Okay, there's gotta be a trap in here. I stepped forward slowly and set off a trap. That arrow nearly took my head off. I think there's only one way through. I took off at a sprint as the arrows flew by. Inside the chest was more diamonds as well as some XP potions. I ran back through the traps, then loaded up on the XP. I went back through the hallways and soon saw another path through. I guess this must be the way out. I stepped forward when suddenly a bunch of lava came falling from the ceiling, trapping me inside the room. That was way too close. As I looked into the room though, I saw it was full of skeletons, including a big buff skeleton. There was no time to lose. I immediately started shooting my bow, taking out as many of them as I could. I got some hits in, but it was getting dicey. I didn't notice the buff skeleton had me in his sights, and after a good hit, he knocked out one of my lives. Oh no, now I only have four left. Over half 
of them are gone. I didn't have any other choice though. I had to keep fighting. I had managed to hit him a bunch, so he couldn't have had much health left. I hid behind a pole, then struck him with my claws, taking him out. Yeah, who's the tough guy now? And we'll just pretend that you didn't take one of my lives. That's when I noticed that I had actually picked up his head. Ooh, creepy. I wonder what else is in here. I ran around the room and saw a chest, which had an infinity enchantment in it, as well as some gold. In another chest, I also found a brand new bow. I knew just what to do next. At a nearby anvil, I added the infinity enchantment to my new bow, which gave me endless arrows. By now my pockets were filled with goodies, so I used some cobblestone to block the lava and left the dungeon. Back at the base, I stuck my mutant skeleton head above my door. Now everyone knows that this house belongs to one tough kitty. Now that I had a bunch of diamonds, I went over to the crafting table and got right to work, crafting myself an entire set of diamond armor. I was going to be super protected now. With the armor done, I also made myself a full set of diamond tools. It was just about time, as the iron tools just weren't going to cut it anymore. With all of the tools finished, I grabbed Willy and we got to work on the next part of the statue. It was time to add some details in, and I was excited to see how it was going to look. It didn't take too long, and we soon finished the next part. Back at the base, I was feeling like I was almost ready to take on the wolf monster, but asked Willy if he had any ideas of what I could do to power up. Well, there's a special set of claws I've heard about. They're strong enough to rip through wolf hide. That sounds like just what I need. Where do I find them? There's a fort pretty far away from here that they are rumored to be in, but it's got some tough mobs defending it. I can show you the way. That would be awesome. But first, let me go check with Lenny to see if he has any new veggies for me to take on the journey. I went up to the garden with Lenny, and he gathered me a fresh set of food. Thanks, buddy. You've gotten good at this. On days 71 to 74, Willie and I had reached a snowy taiga biome when suddenly we were attacked by a polar bear. I had just upgraded all of my gear, so the polar bear didn't really stand a chance against me. Together, we defeated him easily. Yeah, that was so easy! Suddenly, a bunch of polar bears came running out. Oh, this is not easy! The polar bears were really mad at us, and we were taking a lot of hits. This situation was all too familiar, and I suddenly lost another one of my lives. Oh no, only three left now! I had lost another life, but we had made good progress, and together, we were able to take out the last of the polar bears. It helped that Willie was now a full-grown wolf. We soon found a cave and settled in out of the cold. Thanks for coming along with me, Willie. I thought all wolves were bad, but you've shown me that's not the truth. Willie didn't say anything and started walking around in circles. It was kind of strange, but maybe he just wasn't comfortable expressing his feelings. It was getting pretty cold when Willie set out a campfire. Oh, just in time. We both settled in for the night. On days 75 to 78, Willie and I reached the snowy fortress deep in the taiga. This must be where the claws are. We entered the fort, but as we walked through, I couldn't help but notice the place seemed empty. There might have been a battle here long ago, but there was definitely no one here now. As we entered another section, the doors closed behind us. Oh no, it must be a trap. Get ready, Willie. That's when I realized it wasn't an enemy who set the trap. It was Willie. I'm sorry, Zozo, but I can't resist my natural instincts. I tried, but cats are just too delicious. What are you saying? Come on, we're friends. I have a lot of respect for you. I didn't know a cat could be this strong, but I have to do this. And once you're gone, I'm going to lead the pack to all the other cats in the base. Willie, get a hold of yourself. This isn't the right way. I'm sorry, Zozo, but it's the end. And just like that, we began to fight. Willie had gotten really strong, and his blows really hurt. I couldn't believe his instincts were this powerful. Please, Willie, it doesn't have to be like this. But it was too late. He was done talking, and I could see his wolf instincts had completely taken over. He kept swinging at me and managed to take another one of my lives. Ugh, only two left. I hurried and climbed up some trees, making my way to the top of the ruins. From there, I started firing arrows, landing some blows. Willie ran around, trying to avoid my arrows. It was making him really mad. I wasn't going to be able to finish it this way, though. I had to land a blow up close. I hurried and climbed higher into the ruins, firing arrows as I went. Get back down here! I climbed out the side of the ruins as Willie continued to look up where I was before. I snuck up behind him and delivered a sneak attack. It was just a few hits more, and he was finally defeated. Willie, why? I'm sorry it had to come to this. I ran outside and picked a flower. I carried it back inside and laid it where Willie had disappeared. I'll see you in the next life, my friend. On day 79 to 84, I was feeling really sad about the loss of Willie. I couldn't help but think though, Willie was super strong and he was just a regular wolf. What chance did I have against the wolf monster? That's when I remembered Delilah the elephant could help. I traveled back to the savannah and just in time too. Up ahead, I could see Delilah had been captured by poachers. You thugs, get away from my friend. I charged in as the poachers turned to fight. I had no time for these punks and I had to save my friend. There was no way I was going to lose two friends in such a short amount of time. I was way stronger than the last time we had fought poachers and so at long last, I took them all out. Oh, Zozo, you showed up just in time. I don't know where I'd be without you. Or well, I guess I do. I'd be dead. You mustn't talk like that. 
but I was hoping you could help me with something. Oh sure, anything. I need to defeat the wolf monster still, but I'm wondering if there are any special items out there that could help me. Could you take a look? Delilah agreed and took a look into some nearby water. Okay, I can see the nether. There's a huge fortress there. And inside, oh, there's some claws. They look like they're strong enough to rip through wolf skin. So those claws are real. Do you know how I can get there? It's showing me a path to the nether portal. It's actually not that far from your base. Wow, that's great news. I'll have to go get them. But before I do, are you sure you still don't want to live at my base? There's so many poachers out here. Oh, I've definitely changed my mind. I would love to live there. Delilah and I headed back toward my base. As we got closer, she caught sight of my statue. An elephant. I love it. It reminds me of my grandma. I miss her so much. I wish I could have met her. I'm almost finished with that statue too. Just one more part to go, but I think you'll think it's pretty cool. From there, I got right to work building Delilah her own room at the base. The poor girl girl kept getting attacked, so I was glad she decided to come and live at the base with us. Her room was going to be at the top, so she was definitely going to be safe. Soon, her room was complete. Here you go. I really hope you like it here. Delilah assured me she would, and she especially loved the view out of her window. On days 85 to 89, I headed straight for the nether portal. I had to get those claws. Oh no, it looks totally destroyed. Hopefully there's some more obsidian in this chest. I opened the chest and luckily, there was everything I needed. Someone must have been here before. Just then, a snapping turtle came walking right over the chest and attacked. Ah, you're so slow and creepy. He wasn't very strong and I took him out quickly. Then another animal attacked me out of nowhere. This guy wasn't strong either and I took him out too. All right, enough. Let's do this. I quickly fixed up the portal, replacing all the missing obsidian blocks. I stepped into the portal and was teleported to the nether. I stepped out into a soul sand valley and could see a few endermen roaming around. As long as I don't look at them, I should be good. But as I got closer, they turned and started to attack me. I guess they just really wanted me to stay away. Once I had taken them out, I took a look at my surroundings. That's when I noticed some ancient debris in the wall. Oh yeah, I can make some netherite gear with this. I mined out the debris and stored it away for later. It was time to explore. I took off into the nether, traveling across dangerous terrain and fighting off endermen. I found some more ancient debris too. There were also some gas that showed up, but I was able to take care of them with my bow. Soon, I saw it in the distance, the fortress from Delilah's village. There it is! I just need to get across this lava, and the claws will be mine! I started jumping across the broken path, being sure not to fall into the lava. As I entered the fortress, I was suddenly attacked by a hellhound and a couple of wither skeletons. Oh, I should have known something would be waiting for me. I tried to climb up some platforms as quickly as I could and started taking them out with my bow. The wither skeletons were getting too close for comfort, but luckily I was able to take them down. Now it's your turn. I jumped down and started swinging my sword, showing the hellhound who was boss. Even the dogs in a different dimension are mean. I kept swinging my sword and finally took the hellhound out. That was a tough fight. He destroyed most of my armor. But the important thing was that I had won. I went over to the chest and took a look inside. There was tons of loot, and most important, the claws were inside. I can't believe it, I got them. I took out the claws and equipped them. That's when I felt the energy surge through me, and I grew into a huge, super buff cat. Whoa, I'm extremely ripped, and I have way more hearts. It was time to take the fight to the wolf. On days 90 to 94, I returned to the base to see all of my new friends. It was quite the sight to see everyone so happy. We had all been affected by the wolf monster in one way or another, and it was great to see that despite it all, we had all found a place to call home. I was too big to fit in the door now, so I knocked out a space and grabbed some supplies out of a chest. Then I made myself a fancy new moving door. Ah yes, this will work perfectly. Now that I had a functioning door, I took the ancient debris I had collected and smelted it into some netherite scraps. Then I took some of the diamonds I had collected and made an entire set of diamond armor. Now I'll need a smithing table. I got the smithing table put together and then combined the netherite scraps with some gold bars to make some netherite ingots. Using the new ingots, I was able to then convert all my diamond gear into netherite. Now let's finish the statue. I headed outside and finished putting all of the details on the elephant. I thought it looked really nice and I was glad that it reminded Delilah of her grandma. Well, what do you think? Is this your favorite build I've done so far? Or did you like another one more? With the statue complete, it was time to say goodbye. I met with all of my friends outside. Thanks for all of your support, guys. I'm going to go fight the wolf, but I'm still not sure how I'm going to beat him. I was thinking about it, and didn't you say that crazy cat lady threw a potion at you that knocked you out? Maybe she had other potions that could come in handy for your fight. Oh, that's a great idea. I'll have to go stop by there and see what I can find. Good luck, Zozo. I know you'll make us all proud. The rest of the animals chimed in. I never could have done it without all of their support. Time to get that wolf. 
On days 95 to 97, I arrived back at the cat lady's house. All right, let's see what's going on in here. I ran up to the house to get inside. As I tried to take a look around, I realized I was too big for the doors, so I knocked out the walls to make myself some space. Something tells me she's not gonna mind. As I checked around the house, I eventually opened up her bedside table and found a bunch of blindness potions. No wonder she always had these on her. The lady literally slept next to them, but these will help in a fight. With the potions in my pockets, I headed off toward the wolf monster's base. I soon reached a snowy area and could hear the howling of wolves in the distance, but this time, I wasn't running. This time, I was heading straight for them. Hey, you boys, check out this cat. He thinks he's real tough walking into our land like this. Your pride will be the end of you. I'm gonna take down your entire pack. Oh, cry me a hairball, fuzzbag. Bring it on. We lunged at each other and started swinging. These guys thought I was weak because I was a cat, but they quickly found out I was super strong. I could tell they were scared, and soon, only one of them was left. You're no cat, you're a freak. Just wait until the boss hears about this. The last wolf ran off to tell his boss. Yeah, not even a warning is going to save him from me. The wolf wasn't very smart though. He was leading me right to their base. Soon enough, I saw a large fortress in the distance. This must be it. I walked up and started to explore. I could feel something behind me. I turned around and saw there was a huge sub behind me. Quick, subscribe to the channel. We must win this fight. On day 98, I charged into the base and was immediately attacked by some wolves. Out of the way, you mangy mutts. I swung my massive arms and knocked the wolves out. With my strength, these guys were a breeze. Soon, the room had been cleared. That's when I noticed something horrible. Is that what I think it is? On the stairs, there was a mounted animal head. These guys were a bunch of sickos. They had to be stopped. In the next room, there were even more wolves. Get a load of this, chumps. I smacked the wolves as they crumpled beneath my blows. They were able to get some hits in, but they were no match. No one was going to stop me from reaching my goal. Once they were all destroyed, I noticed what was on the table. More animal heads. I won't let them add any more. As I left the room, I noticed a button on a nearby wall. I hit it and a wall opened, revealing a storage room. Oh nice, I bet there's something good in here. I started opening up chests and found a lot of gold, including some golden apples. Then I saw something out of the ordinary. There's warnings on this chest. Must be something good in here. I opened the chest and saw I had several potions of leaping. That would surely give me an advantage in the fight. Now I just had to find the monster. On day 99, I wandered through the halls and eventually walked into the Great Hall. The wolf monster was seated on a golden throne. Oh, what is this? A cat walking right into my house? Who do you think you are? You know who I am. You destroyed my entire group of friends. Yeah, you'll have to be more specific. I do it all the time. It's literally all I do. I'm Zozo. Oh, Zozo. Yeah, I still don't know who you are. It doesn't matter. Today is the day I take my revenge. Yeah, yeah, get this cat out of my sight. Suddenly, the wolves around the table charged. He might not know who I am, but he was about to find out. I knocked out his wolves in no time. Ugh, I always knew I was surrounded by a bunch of weaklings. I'll do this myself. The wolf monster charged at me. The fight had begun. This was ending today. He was still strong and was really knocking me down. I ran away to try to get some space, eating some food to heal. Get over here, you little cat. I tried fighting him as I went, getting hits in here and there. I soon made it up a set of stairs, turning in time to start firing down arrows at the wolf monster. Oh, knock it off! I kept firing arrows until he had reached me. He kept hitting me, and eventually I saw my life counter appear again. I only had one life left. I had to make it count. I kept running through the castle, trying to play it safe. Every now and then he would catch up, and I would swing my claws to knock him back. Some of his wolves even tried to jump into the fight, but I was able to knock them away. My health was starting to get really low though. All right, let's see what he thinks of this. I took out one of my blinding potions and managed to hit him. Oh, I can't see. What did you do? The wolf ran off as I hurried and ducked for cover. I was safe for a moment, so I hurried and ate a golden apple. I had been getting hits in, but it didn't seem to be enough. It was time to try something new. I could hear the wolf in the hallway up ahead, so I snuck up behind him and smacked him. Surprise! Oh, you sneaky little cat. We exchanged some more blows, and I ran off, making more space. I was really starting to hurt him now. Just then, we ran into a room with a couple of his wolf cronies. Get this guy off my back! I thought wolves didn't run away from anything. As I went back out to fight, I saw the wolf had disappeared. Where did he go? I kept searching around the place until I ran into a strange sign. Place sacrificial heads. Oh, I don't love that, but maybe it could help me. I ran around the palace and gathered up a few of the animal heads. Then I placed them on the altar. Suddenly, a hidden door opened, and the wolf monster was hiding on the other side. There he is! I ran up to face him. Give it up, man. You can't beat me! The wolf shook his head. He wasn't going to go down easily. We charged as his sidekicks attacked. It was an epic battle, but they were no match for me. I even tried using the leaping potions, which helped me to get to higher ground and use my bow. This is for everyone you've hurt! I swung my claws, hitting him again and again. 
He wasn't even sorry for what he had done. At long last, I swung my claws, destroying him for good. Goodbye. The wolf was finally gone. Now we could all live our lives in peace. On day 100, I made it back to the base. All of my friends were there to greet me, and I couldn't believe the fight was done. We were finally free from danger. The world was once again a place of peace. On day one, I spawned in as a kangaroo. Hoo ha, I'm a tiny little kangaroo. Look how bouncy I am. I was so busy bouncing, I barely noticed the little Tasmanian devil that started to attack me. Back away. I swung my fist and punched that little baby right out of here. Hot oh, dang, I'm tiny, but I can pack a punch. I took a look around for some trees to start my adventures when a much bigger Tasmanian devil came out. Uh-oh, looks like I made the dad angry. I gotta hop on out of here. I ran away as the Tasmanian devil looked angrily on. If I could find my kangaroo family, I knew I would be safe. As I hopped around, I could see I was all alone. So I made myself a simple shelter to spend the night. Maybe tomorrow I can find my family. On day two, I headed back over to where I spawned in and saw the Tasmanian devil was nowhere to be seen. Looks like the coast is clear. Let's get that wood. I started punching the trees and had soon gathered a good amount of wood. Using the wood, I managed to make myself some wood tools that would come in handy later. Turned out that later was now, as a snake came out of nowhere and attacked. Where did you come from? I swung at the snake, hitting him right in the face. It didn't take long and I was able to take him out. Not bad, my guy. I looked over and saw an emu was watching. Why don't you come over here and let me get a sample of that power. You want to fight me? Just box. Let's go. I didn't see the harm in a little training, so I started swinging. The emu was a good fighter and had clearly been well trained. After a bit of sparring, he stopped. Yeah, you've got some real talent, but you've got lots to learn. Let me introduce you to my trainer. He'll have you becoming a real fighter in no time. I agreed and followed him. As we walked, he introduced himself as Ernie. We soon arrived at an old rundown gym. As we entered inside, I soon saw who his trainer was. It was an old turtle. Master Balboa, I ran into this kangaroo, and I think he's got some real promise. The old turtle looked me up and down. Hmm. I don't see much here. I won't train him. Oh, come on. Maybe he can help with the... Silence? Okay, he can stay here. Be ready for training at sunrise. I don't know why this Master Balboa was so hard on me, but I agreed to be trained and went to bed in the gym. On day three, I was woken up by Master Balboa. Already sleeping in, I see. Hmm, beggars can't be choosers. Up, up. You will start by cleaning this place. I took a look around the gym and saw that there was a lot of work to be done. There was a lot of stuff that needed to be cleared out, and there was a lot of room for improvement. I wonder how long it had been since someone had cleaned this place up. Once I had done a fair bit of cleaning, I decided that I didn't want to be sleeping on the floor anymore, so I made myself a small room for me to sleep in. It wasn't anything fancy, just a place to rest. After I had finished, Master Balboa came up to me. Too good to sleep on the floor, are you? Every student sleeps on the floor and earns his dues. I don't know why you think you are different. I'm not trying to offend anyone, I just thought it might be a little more comfortable. One can never do the uncomfortable from a place of comfort. You do well to remember that strength is forged in the trials of fire. Man, this guy was always speaking in weird sayings. Just then, a mountain tortoise appeared. Uh-oh, this guy looks like he wants to hurt me. Let's get out of here. No, Zozo, this is your fire. Fight him and forge the strength you need to win. Uh, okay, I'll give it a shot. The tortoise was tough. He was really hitting hard and I wasn't feeling confident I could win. That's when I could hear Master Balboa shouting at me. A tortoise's strength doesn't come from the hardness of his shell, but from the will of his heart. What? Don't hit the shell, hit his soft spots. Oh, right. I focused on the tortoise's neck and started landing some good hits. In no time, he was taken out. After he had disappeared, I felt some adrenaline coursing through me and I leveled up into an even stronger kangaroo. I have even more hearts now too. Ernie was really impressed and shouted his encouragement to me. I thought I even saw Master Balboa crack a smile. Just maybe. On days four to five, I found myself facing off with Ernie. My skills had improved, but my emu friend really knew how to fight. As we fought, I asked him some questions. So have you seen any other kangaroos around? I can't be the only one. Ernie didn't say anything, but I could tell he had something to say. Master Balboa spoke up instead. There are many animals who have trained here. One of these animals was a legendary kangaroo. He was one of the greatest fighters to pass through this gym. Even he, among many others, was unable to defeat the buff bear. All have failed. I hate that buff bear. I've seen too many of my friends fall to him. Nothing will stop me from destroying him. Patience, Ernie. Rage is a cancer that can blind even the clearest of vision. Ernie calmed down, but I could still sense his frustration beneath the surface. I felt his anger though. That buff bear was going to pay. On days six to eight, I woke up with an idea. If we're really going to take down this buff bear, we're gonna need better training facilities. I think I can help with that. After I had gathered some stone, I was suddenly attacked by the Tasmanian devil for my first day. Joke was on him though. I was even stronger now. Let's see how you like this. I swung my fist and really let him have it. I don't think he was expecting me to be so strong and I was able to knock him out in no time. Someone bit off more than they could chew. I grabbed a little more sand, then headed back to the base. Now that I had a bunch of materials, I used them to start improvements to the gym. I felt like I had a strong purpose and a clear mind. Master Balboa would be proud of that. After a lot of sweat and hard work, all the improvements were complete, at least for now. 
now. On days 9 to 10, Ernie and I were out for a jog. The problem was, Ernie was so much faster than me, he had to keep waiting for me to catch up. He didn't seem to mind, though. <laughs> What a slowpoke. I looked over and saw a monkey was watching us. Hey, that's not a very nice thing to say. You're right. I'm not very nice. I'm nicer than that dump you call a gym, though. I'm sorry. Who are you? Eh, hey, why do you care? You're not gonna be around much longer anyway. What do you mean? My master buff bear is gonna wipe you and all your little friends out soon enough. You're all just a bunch of weaklings. Buff bear? You think buff bear can beat us? Ernie jumped at the monkey and they started to fight. Yeah, get him, Ernie! The monkey and Ernie were pretty evenly matched, but I believed in Ernie! Just then, someone else came running into the fight. It was the buff bear! Ernie, watch out! Ernie was outnumbered. I had to help! Hehe, <laughs> more Balboa students for me to destroy. You guys are pathetic. We were holding on. The buff bear was strong. I was starting to get worried about Ernie. Stop this at once! Master Balboa had arrived. He seemed to catch us all off guard as everyone stopped fighting. Balboa, crawled out of your shell to train some more weaklings, I see. Bear, your strength is your weakness. <laughs> are you two really listening to this old fool? Don't insult him. You're a real jerk. I challenge you to a fight. Ernie? No. Yeah, I'll fight you, little guy. Looks like you better go with your babysitter. You know where to find me. Master Balboa then pulled us away as Buff Bear and his monkey henchmen left. Ernie, I told you your anger could be your downfall. Master Balboa, I've been training so hard. I know I can beat him. Master Balboa didn't seem so sure, but didn't say anything else. If you're going to go through with this, you'll need all the help you can get. I'll do what I can to help you prepare. On days 11 to 12, I decided to continue doing some upgrades to the gym. Ernie was going to need every advantage, so I made sure to give the gym the improvements it needed to give him the edge. It's going to take more than a nice gym to win this fight, so we better get some upgraded gear. I took off and soon found myself in a forest. I headed into a nearby cave and quickly found some iron. Just what I was looking for. I had collected the iron I needed when suddenly I was attacked by a sunbird. What the? Where did you come from? I tried to hit him, but he was too tough. My health was starting to drain though, so I had to get out of there. I ran off. How could I beat him? Then I had an idea. I climbed up to get higher than the sunbird, then jumped off. Heads up! By doing this, I was able to land the final blow. That's when I saw he had dropped some items. Wow. Oh, nice! These will be perfect for the base. You saved me! Confused, I turned and saw Platypus was talking to me. That sunbird wouldn't leave me alone. Well, he'll leave you alone now, but it is pretty dangerous out here. Do you have a safe place to stay? No, oh, not really. I'm all alone out here. Well, why don't you come live in my training gym with me? Oh, I've always wanted to be stronger. That sounds great! We headed off for the gym. We soon arrived, and I had a chat with Master Balboa. Zozo, I'm not running a charity here. You can't just invite anyone you meet to live here. But he was all alone. I can build him his own place. He won't be a bother. I'm sure of it. Hmm. Well, these are dangerous times. Very well. I quickly got to work putting together a room for the platypus, whose name was Perry. I wasn't sure how much training Master Balboa was going to let him do, but in any case, he would have a place to stay. I also took some time to build myself a crafting area. Once my crafting area was set up, I smelted all the iron I had gathered. With all the iron smelted, I then took all of the iron ingots and used them to make myself a fancy new set of iron tools. I also used them to make myself some iron armor. The iron armor is still a little big for me though, so I'll save it for later. On days 13 to 15, I woke up to a strange noise. We were being attacked by a gang of monkeys. Buff Bear's cronies, we've got to stop them. I jumped into the battle, hitting as many monkeys as I could. I couldn't believe Buff Bear would send a hit squad like this. I was taking some of them out, but they just kept coming. Suddenly, Buff Bear entered, and the fight was really on. Ernie and Master Balboa tried to fight him off, but it looks like they were in real trouble. Then, out of nowhere, I was trapped in a cage. All I could do was watch as Buff Bear attacked my friends. Master Balboa took a hard hit. Ernie was now in danger. This looks like the end for him. No! Oh, wait, it was just a dream. Thank goodness. I was still feeling nervous about it though, so I went to talk to Ernie. I told him about my dream and that I didn't think it'd be a good idea for him to go through with the fight. Ernie just laughed it off, saying I was being paranoid. He was sure he could win the fight. I hope so, but keep an eye out for any funny business. On days 16 to 19, I woke up and saw that Master Balboa and Ernie were already hard at work training. Whoops, Master Balboa isn't going to like that I slept in again. I was still feeling a little nervous about Ernie's fight though, so I went to talk to him about it. He told me that I needed to stop worrying. That's when Master Balboa started to talk to me. Zozo, enough jibber jabber. You already slept too late. It's time to train. Yeah, sorry. I had a pretty bad dream. What's well, on the schedule for today? Master Balboa led us over to a corner of the gym. There's a spider infestation down there that I don't want to deal with. The two of you can get down there and clean it up. There's more equipment on the way, and we need space for it. Oh, man. All right, we're on it. Ernie and I broke all the boards, as well as the spider webs. Master Balboa was right. It was a mess down here. We got right to work destroying all of the spiders in our way. I wondered how long they had been down here. I really hope Master Balboa knows what he's doing. This is nasty. Soon enough, the spiders were all cleared out. We then got to work patching up all of the broken sections. This place was in rough shape, but we were sure we could get it looking nice in no time. As we finished, Master Balboa came down to meet us. Zozo, there's a delivery waiting for us. 
Go ahead and bring everything down. I ran upstairs and greeted the delivery man. He handed me the boxes of equipment and I took everything downstairs. Inside of the boxes was a bunch of exercise equipment. Well, boys, hop to it. Ernie and I unloaded all of the equipment and got everything set up. There were a lot of good areas to train in now. Just in time, too, because Master Balboa was ready for us. Time to hit the equipment. Ernie and I ran around the gym following Master Balboa's instructions. It was a lot of hard work, but Ernie had a big fight ahead and we really needed to push him to be his best. The new equipment was great, too. I was definitely going to be sore tomorrow. As we finished our workout, I could really feel my heart pumping. Suddenly, I grew into an even bigger kangaroo and gained more hearts. Whoa, I feel great. As we all celebrated my new strength, Perry came down the stairs. Wow, you've grown. I wanted to find you guys as I know something that might help. There are some powerful boxing gloves in a far off land that makes the user punch even harder than normal. That's just what we could use. Perry explained where we needed to go. I told Ernie to keep training and I would go find the gloves. On days 20 to 22, I headed out to go find the special gloves. Perry told me where to go, but mentioned it was very dangerous. As I got closer, I could see why. This outpost is crawling with desert raiders. This isn't going to be easy. I snuck my way up to the front door as a patrol of raiders walked by. Maybe I could sneak in. I moved further into the base, trying to hide behind things. I had gotten much bigger though, and that was harder to do. They soon spotted me and attacked. Looks like I'm gonna have to fight my way through this one. There were a lot of raiders, but with my new strength, it wasn't too much of a challenge to knock them out of the way. I had to be careful though, because if I got too cocky, they could easily overrun me with their numbers and take me down. Soon, I had fought my way to the top of the base. As I moved to take the power gloves, I heard a noise. A buff raider was looking at me and charged. Bring it on. This guy was no ordinary raider. He was stronger than the others and had a different weapon. As he hit me, I even caught on fire. Whoa, tone it down, big guy. The fire hurt, but I had to keep fighting. I couldn't let Ernie down. I kept on punching and hitting until finally I landed the final blow. The power gloves are all mine now. I walked up to the gloves and picked them up. They fit like a glove. As I left the base, another raider tried to attack me, but I punched him so hard he went flying. The other guy simply turned and tried to run away. I've got the power now. As I arrived back at the base, I could see Ernie outside training. I could tell he was feeling a bit nervous. Hey Ernie, are you feeling nervous? I'm here to support you no matter what. There's no shame in calling it off. No. I can't call it off. I've been waiting for this my whole life. All right, if you say so. In any case, I have some good news. I got the power gloves. These should give you a serious leg up. I tossed the gloves over to him and he was super excited about it. I could tell this really raised his spirits. I was still nervous about him doing the fight, but there was no way I was going to change his mind. On days 23 to 26, it was time for the big fight. We all made our way to the arena and soon arrived. Ernie was in high spirits and we were feeling pretty good. Maybe he could win this thing after all. As we approached, the monkey from before stopped us. Hi, you chumps. Buff Bear wants to make this fight a little more interesting. Oh boy, what's that? This fight won't be to the death, just until someone gives up. If the emu here wins, which he won't, Master Bear will let any of the captured birds go. But if he loses, he'll be Master Bear's servant for life. There's something fishy about this, Ernie. I don't think it's a good idea. Tell your boss I'll take it, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the birds go free. The monkey chuckled and went to tell his boss. Later, Ernie had stepped into the ring and we could hear something up above us. Buff Bear had hung cages all around the arena, cages that were filled with all of Ernie's friends. This guy was a sicko. An announcer stepped into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another Rumble Fantastical. In the red corner, we have the powerful, the mighty, the undefeated Buff Bear. The crowd went absolutely nuts with cheering. He was definitely going to have the home field advantage. And in the blue corner is an emu. The announcer walked off. You got this, Ernie. Make us proud, son. There was a ding, and the fight was on. Ernie and Buff Bear jumped at each other. They were both landing some heavy hits. Come on, Ernie, show him who's boss. Ernie was swinging his hardest, and it looked like he was actually winning. I bet Buff Bear wasn't expecting those power gloves. <laughs> What's wrong, Bear? Scared you finally met your end? Ew, I guess I'll start trying now. Buff Bear started hitting even harder than before. He wasn't bluffing. He had just been toying with Ernie. Ernie, watch out! Buff Bear was really landing blows now. All Ernie could do was try to defend, but it was no use. This fight wasn't going to last much longer. Okay, okay, I yield. You win. I'll be your servant. Please, I have enough servants. You think I'm not going to give my friends a good show? No, no, you, you made a deal. Oops, guess I lied. Ernie, watch out! Buff Bear swung his claws and destroyed Ernie for good. No! The crowd went wild as Buff Bear celebrated with them. Oh, let's get him! No, Zozo, I can't lose you too. Quick, grab the gloves and let's get out of here. I jumped into the arena and collected the power gloves. Master Balboa and I got out of there as fast as we could. On days 27 to 31, we had made it back to the gym. I couldn't believe Ernie was gone. We'd only known each other for a short time, but it felt like we had become brothers. I went outside and saw Master Balboa looking off into the distance. We'll get our revenge on Buff Bear. I know it. Master Balboa sighed. 
Zozo, it is impossible. I can't keep letting this cycle repeat itself. Ernie said the same thing to me when our last student was defeated, and that student said the same thing when we lost the one before. I am a failure as a teacher. I should just close up the gym and be done. No, you can't do that. I've learned so much from you, and I know I have much more to learn. If you're gone, it will be like I've lost everyone. Master Balboa thought about it for a moment. Fine, we can continue. But you must promise you won't challenge that bear. Training is for the strengthening of the self, not the domination of others. I smiled. He was back to himself. I promised to train for my own betterment, not for the destruction of others. I meant what I said, but there was something inside of me that was telling me I needed to avenge Ernie. I didn't feel like I needed to mention that to Master Balboa, though, so I changed the subject. I think we should do something to honor Ernie, and I know just what to do. Using some of the supplies from the gym, I got to work building a statue. I had a special idea in mind, and I think you'll like it when I'm done. It wasn't too much longer, and the first part of the statue was complete. On days 32 to 35, I went to have a chat with Perry. Even if we weren't going to challenge the buff bear and his monkeys, we needed to be strong enough to defend ourselves. Perry said he was ready to begin training, and I decided it would be good to go and try to recruit more animals. I headed out into the land, and soon came across an abandoned farm. I didn't see anyone, so I decided to go ahead and grab some of the nearby crops. As I was finishing up, I heard a cry in the distance. What was that? The sound got closer. That's when I saw a baby pig was under attack by a group of cougars. Help me, help me! I charged in, punching the cougars. Leave him alone! The cougars must have been so hungry, they didn't even pay attention to me. The poor little piggy was really in trouble. I took a few swings, and soon, all of the cougars were gone. Hey there, buddy. Are you okay? Yes, but no. This was my family's farm. My family was captured and taken away by the henchmen of Buff Bear. I was next. Thank goodness you came along. Happy to help, but it's not safe out here. Please, come stay at my gym with me and my friends. You'll be much safer there. Pig was thrilled at this idea. Oh, and his name was Wilbur. On days 36 to 39, Wilbur and I had arrived back at the base. I brought him inside and introduced him to Perry, who was hard at work training on a dummy. Perry, I'd like you to meet Wilbur. He's going to be staying with us, and I thought he'd make for a great training partner. Perry and Wilbur started chatting and hit it off right away. Then they ran off to go do some training. While they were doing that, I decided to go outside and work on the farm. Using the crops I had collected, I planted everything to give us a nice food supply. With the farm set up, I then got right to work, building Wilbur his own room. The poor guy was missing his family, but at least we could give him a home here in the meantime. Once the room was complete, I headed back to the ring to guide Perry and Wilbur in a practice fight. The two of them weren't very strong yet, but we would get them there. Master Balboa came over. Ah, oh, and who do we have here? I introduced Wilbur to Master Balboa, who seemed happy to see him there. He didn't seem to be quite as strict as he was when I first arrived. But remember, the things you learn here are for your defense only, not for attacking others. Speaking of which, I have something to share with you, Zozo. What is it? If we are to be prepared for an attack, we must have every advantage available to us. There is a powerful defensive item that you need to find. Master Balboa then explained the direction I needed to go. He wasn't sure of its exact location, but another animal in the area may have heard of it. I set off right away. On days 40 to 43, I was still traveling across the land toward the special item. Off in the distance, I could see a watering hole. Oh, perfect, I could use a drink. As I got closer though, I was stopped by a gazelle. Hang on, you can't go over there. Why not? Don't you see that line? He attacks anyone who tries to drink. He's a real jerk. A real jerk, huh? I've got a thing for getting rid of jerks. Well, if you can get rid of them, I'll give you something good. Sounds like a deal. Hang on a second. I hopped over to the lion. Without a word, he attacked. Wow, they weren't joking. You are a jerk. This guy was tough, but he had no training. His fighting style was messy, and he just tried to swing mindlessly at me. I bobbed and weaved, landing blows. He still got some hits in, but in the end, I managed to take him out. You did it. Wow, that was really impressive. Here, take this. The gazelle tossed out a specialized pickaxe. As I looked closer, I could see it was enchanted with efficiency and fortune. Whoa, this is a massive help. Thank you. I ran off and soon found a cave. I had to put this thing to use right away. As I explored the cave, I soon found what I was looking for. Diamonds. The perfect thing at a time like this. I'm going to be able to upgrade all of my gear. My pockets were soon full of diamonds, and I headed out to keep looking for the special item. On days 54 to 49, I was finishing up my diamond mining. Suddenly, I heard a noise behind me. What the heck is that? A giant two-legged monster was looking at me. It attacked! I had never seen a monster like this before, but it was really powerful. I was starting to get worried because my health was really dropping. It doesn't look like I'm gonna make it. Just then, a colorful warrior came stepping in and finished it off. Whoa, you're super strong. Where did you come from? Technically, I came from 1,000 years ago. Whoa, are you some kind of time traveler? No, not exactly. 
In my lifetime, I was cursed by some evil witches, and now I can't rest until I've defeated the ancient ghost warrior. Ghost warrior? That sounds spooky. What is that, and where do you find one? Follow me. I took off after the ancient warrior, and we soon arrived at an old temple. As we got closer, I could see there was some kind of magical force field blocking our way in. The ancient warrior explained that in order to bring down the shield, we'd have to defeat three nearby ghost shamans. I have come here many times, but I'm not strong enough on my own. If I could get your help, there would be something in it for you, too. Inside of this temple is a powerful defensive item that can only be used by the living. That sounds like the item I've been searching for. I'm in. On days 50 to 53, the warrior and I soon saw the fire tower looming in the distance. On top, the fire ghost shaman was waiting. We charged up the tower, fighting blazes along the way. Out of the way, hotheads. The warrior was really impressed with my skills. We soon reached the top. The fire ghost shaman took one look at us, then attacked. We had an intense battle while he set off explosions around us. It was hard to believe that there were two more of these guys. With the combined power of the warrior and me, though, we managed to finally defeat him. After he disappeared, we noticed that he had dropped a key. Oh, we can use this to unlock the barrier. Two more to go. Sometime later, we arrived at the ice tower. It was a huge ice spike protruding out of an icy wasteland. It was quite the sight to behold. Let's get to it. This time, the tower was covered in skeletal warriors. They were vicious in their attacks, and at times, I was scared they were going to knock me off the tower. We got lucky, though, and managed to make it to the top. Problem was, there was no one there. Where is he? Do you think someone defeated him already? Without warning, some ice in the wall broke, and the ice shaman came charging out. Quite the entrance there, sir. The ice shaman put up a big fight. As we battled, he shot ice spikes up from the ground which were really scary. A hit from those would do some serious damage. We were tough though and managed to take him out. He too dropped a key, which we picked up. Later, we arrived at the final tower, the Storm Tower. It too was an impressive sight, towering over the surrounding land. We didn't have time to be impressed though. We had a key to collect. We charged up the tower, racing to the top. Protecting the tower was a small army of lightning alays. They would shriek as they flew in, trying to hit us. These guys are freaking me out. It took a lot of effort, but at long last, we had almost reached the top. There was just one problem. Looks like we've got some jumping to do. Hopefully we don't fall off. The platforms had been covered in water and were a little slick, but we were doing okay. That's when a small storm cloud opened up and started shooting lightning at us. You can't be serious. We kept hopping across the platforms, doing our best to avoid the lightning strike, which, as you can imagine, is not the easiest thing to do. Yet somehow we managed to reach the top. There was a burst of lightning and the storm shaman appeared, floating on a thundercloud. Let's show this prehistoric storm junkie who they're messing with. The shaman started to fight us, shooting lightning as he went. Come on, man, cool it with the lightning. He was quick, but not too quick. We hit him again and again, taking some hits of our own. It was a close battle, but in the end, we were able to come out on top. And there's the last key. Yes. We picked it up. It was time to let our warrior rest. On days 54 to 57, we had returned to the temple. The warrior stepped forward and placed the keys in the elemental circle. As he did so, each key floated in place until at long last, the barrier was destroyed. We entered the temple and went up the stairs. As we reached the top, I could see the item floating on a table. The eye of the tiger. Yes. That must be it. We ran forward to grab it, but heard a strange noise stopping in our tracks. What was that? Suddenly, the ground broke and we fell down a long hole. Oof. Where are we? Who dares enter my tomb? Sitting in front of us on a throne was the ancient ghost warrior. He was dressed in a tiger skin. There was no way I was going to get that item without defeating this guy. All right, Catman, let's dance. Ghost warrior charred. The battle was fierce and everyone was getting in some hard hit. The thing is though, we were winning. For an endless being, you aren't very tough. We landed a pretty heavy blow, which sent the ghost warrior running back to his throne. Feel the wrath of the elemental beings. Suddenly a small force field appeared and the three elemental shamans came running through the portals. These guys again? We can do this. It was hard enough fighting these guys one-on-one, -on -one, but all three at once was a real challenge. Before, we had always outnumbered them, so this was a tough fight. Luckily, these reanimated warriors weren't as tough as the ones in the towers, as they didn't seem to be able to use their special attacks. Hang on, buddy, we can beat them. Slowly but surely, we were able to start taking them out. As one would fall, the force field would weaken, until finally, they were all gone. Oh, I will end this. The ghost warrior attacked us again, but it was clear we were too powerful. He tried his best, but soon, he was destroyed. Thank you for your help, Zozo. Please, go and claim the Eye of the Tiger. I will stay here and assume my final rest. You're a mighty warrior. Enjoy your afterlife. I ran up the stairs and grabbed the Eye of the Tiger off the pedestal. Huh, I don't know what exactly this does, but I guess I'll find out. As I went to exit the temple, I saw the warrior standing at the bottom of the temple steps. What are you doing here? I thought you were on your way to the afterlife. Well, I did too, but nothing happened. Did you get the item? I did, but I'm not sure what it does exactly. You will never leave this place. The ghost warrior had reappeared at the top of the stairs and came charging at me. He hit me super hard, but I immediately responded with an even stronger counterattack, knocking him out in one hit. Whoa, what was that? It was the item. It lets you deliver a powerful blow, but only if you take a powerful hit yourself. Interesting. Say, if you're not going to be disappearing anytime soon, why don't you join me on my quest? 
I've got nothing else to do. Sounds great. Awesome. By the way, what's your name? I bet it's something really cool and ancient sounding. Tim. Tim? Like short for Timothy? That is correct. Okay, well, that's still cool. Let's go. On days 58 to 62, Tim and I arrived back at the base. I headed straight to Master Balboa to tell him about the item I had found. That is most impressive, Zozo. I'm so happy that you made it back in one piece. <laughs> Master Balboa let out a cough. That didn't sound so good, but I didn't want to press him. He was also looking a little shaky. With Tim at the base, I needed to make sure he had a place to stay. I wasn't sure if undead, timeless ancient warriors needed to sleep or not, but I did my best to make him a comfortable place. At the very least, he could just enjoy the feng shui. Tim then called me over to him and told me that his 1,000 years of life came with some training tips. Following his instructions, I made some improvements to the gym. These are really going to help us out. With Tim all set up, I then headed over to the crafting table to make use of all the diamonds I had found. It had been something of a miracle that I was able to win all the battles I did using subpar armor. Soon, I had everything upgraded and was ready for my next fight. On days 63 to 66, I decided to get some more work done on Ernie's statue. I had gotten a decent amount done when I heard a noise coming from the base. As I looked, I saw the base was under attack by the monkeys. And this time, it wasn't a dream. You scumbags, get back! I started to fight off the monkeys, taking a lot of them out. Buff Bear was strong, but his students weren't. He must not be a very good teacher. I then hurried and ran inside the gym, where there's a pack of monkeys attacking Master Balboa. Get away from him! Master Balboa was holding his own, but I could tell he was eventually going to be overrun. I helped fight off the monkeys until only the henchman monkey was left. <laughs> You may have defeated our little army, but as long as you keep training and getting more members of your gym, we'll keep giving you these little visits. Enough is enough. We will never give up. Tell your boss this is an official challenge. I challenge him to a fight to the death. Oh, okay, pal. Your funeral. The monkey turned and ran off. I ran over to Master Balboa. He wasn't looking so good. <coughs> Zozo, why did you do that? You promised me you wouldn't fight him. I promised I would only fight out of self-defense. They attacked us. Isn't that what I'm doing? Master Balboa let out a cough. He had been seriously injured. Uh, we don't, we don't have to worry about that right now. You need to rest up and heal your wounds. I'm sorry. I led him to his bed to rest. Things weren't looking good. On day 67 to 70, I got to work, building a medical area that would have all the things that could help Master Balboa to heal. I hoped he could pull through. When I was done, I went to check on him again, but things were not looking good. Zozo, I don't know how much time I have left, but I need to talk to you about this fight. Master Balboa, it's okay. Save your energy. I know what you're going to say. We don't have to talk about this now. We do, Zozo. I just want you to consider something. You can live your life in peace at this gym, restoring it and training the next generation of protectors. You don't have to throw your life away in the pursuit of revenge. Don't answer me now. Just promise you will think about it. Mm -hmm. I promised him I would think about it. While I thought about it, though, I decided to get to work repairing the gym. The monkeys had caused a lot of damage, and we needed to get things back in case they attacked again. Once the repairs were complete, I went around the outside of the gym, putting up a fence. A little extra security could make a big difference in the future. As I was finishing up the fence, Perry came over to talk to me. Hey, I've got some information you might find useful. I know where you can find that monkey. Oh, do you? Because I wouldn't mind having a little chat with him. There's a club nearby that he likes to hang out at. I'll tell you the way. Perry explained how to find the club, and I set off. If I decided not to fight Buff Bear, at the very least, I was going to take out his monkey. On day 71 to 74, I arrived outside the club Perry had told me about. There were some bouncers standing outside. Out of the way, boys, or I'll move you myself. The bouncers weren't interested in my threats, and we started to fight. How bold of them to think they were going to stop me. I was able to knock both of them out pretty quickly. As I stepped into the club, there was a shout, and a bunch of monkeys started to swarm me. Bring it on, you tree rats. Where's your leader? I smacked the monkeys left and right, sending them crashing into the tables and chairs. I wasn't in the mood for their sad attempts to take me out. I only had one thing on my mind. Revenge. Come on, where is he? I know he's hiding around here. More and more waves of monkeys came running out, but it didn't matter. I tossed them around like stuffed animals and took them out quickly. If they weren't going to show me where the henchman was hiding, I was just going to have to start destroying their club. I ran around the room, busting up the tables and chairs. I ran around, breaking everything I could. If he was going to come to my house and break my stuff, I had no problem going to his and doing the same. Surely this would draw the monkey henchman out. Out. On day 75 to 78, a nearby door opened, and the henchman finally revealed himself. Hey, what's the big idea? I thought we told you where you could stick your little kangaroo paws. Did you really think you could come to our gym and not have anything happen in return? You said you wanted to fight Master Bear, not me. Turned out I had some room in my schedule. You and me, alone. Now, let's go. Sure, I can crush you myself. The henchman left forward, getting an early hit in, catching me off guard. He was stronger than I was expecting. What's wrong, Happy? Spending too much time hugging trees and drinking tea with your turtle grandpa? How is he, by the way? I hear he's not doing too good. You're about to pay what you did to him. I landed a really hard hit, which I could tell really shook him up. Nah, nah, not like this. You won't beat me. Suddenly, a bunch of monkey guards came running into the room. You coward, always hiding behind others. You talk tough, but you're weak. If Buff 
wolf bear wasn't around to protect you, you'd have disappeared a long time ago. I managed to knock out the crowd of monkeys. The monkey henchman looked around, then took off running up a flight of stairs to the roof of the club. I chased him to the top. What are you so afraid of? I thought you were going to crush me. What are you doing at that turtle gym? How did you become so strong? It's called training. Maybe you should have tried it instead of running your mouth. The monkey henchman was cornered at the edge of the roof. Hey, come on now. I just wanted to rough that old turtle up a bit, you know? It's not a big deal. We're not so different, you know? We're both strong-willed. So what do you say? Let's call it a draw and I'll get Buff Bear to call the fight off. No, I punched him so hard he flew over the edge, disappearing into the night. I had no more time for slimy monkeys. As I ran down the stairs, I noticed there was a note on the monkey's desk. I picked it up and took a look. Do not worry about Zozo. Even if it comes to a fight between me and him, I have a man on the inside. We will poison Zozo before the fight and ensure my victory. This must be from Buff Bear, but a man on the inside? I'll have to keep an eye out. On day 79 to 84, I arrived back at the base. As I got closer, Perry came running out. Zozo, come quick. Master Balboa has been asking for you. I think this is the end. I hurried inside and saw Master Balboa was looking even worse than before. He looked like he didn't have much time left. Zozo, my end is near, but I needed to speak with you. I'm sorry, Master Balboa. I've been rash. I know I need to call off the fight. If that is your final wish, I will honor it. And finally, you understand. Huh? What do you mean? Zozo, I know you. And while I know you mean that when you say it, your desire for revenge will grow stronger with every attack Buff Bear launches. Even the strongest warrior can't run in two directions at once. Wait, do you mean to say you want me to fight him? I do. I've known this from the moment Ernie stepped into the ring with that bear. It was always your destiny to avenge Ernie and save this gym. But I needed you to understand that you cannot defeat the bear with a heart of rage. You've been preparing me this whole time, and I didn't even realize it. Thank you. I'm afraid someone here is trying to sabotage me though. I found a note from Buff Bear saying so. If a friend is going to cross you, they might have their own reasons why. Be patient and have compassion so you may learn why. Goodbye, Sozo. I will be with you. Master Baboa turned to his side and vanished. I couldn't believe he was gone. Suddenly, there were some blinking lights as experience poured in on me, leveling me up into an even bigger kangaroo with more hearts. Master Balboa's final gift. I won't let him down. As a show of my gratitude, I headed outside to do some work on the statue. There was something new I felt I should add. Now that Master Balboa was gone, it might not look like much, but soon enough, it will be something great. On days 85 to 89, I walked around the gym, visiting with each of the new friends I had made. Each of them had a piece of advice for me. Tim spoke of speed in the fight using fast movements to evade the enemy's attack in order to land my own. Harry showed me what he had learned about his tail and shared with me a secret he had discovered that allowed him to hit twice as hard with it. Wilbur spoke to me about the power of perseverance. Sometimes things get hard in the fight, but by keeping your head down and continuing to fight, you will always make it through. As Wilbur was explaining, Perry came over. He had a note from Buff Bear. Greetings, Zozo. I accept your challenge and I will meet you in the arena in a few days. Best get ready soon. As I read the note, I noticed Wilbur was acting a little funny. I'd have to keep an eye on him over the next few days. On days 90 to 94, I woke up and decided it was time to make my final preparation. I felt more powered up than ever, but there was still more that needed to be done. There was no way I could let Buff Bear take me out. First things first, I've got to upgrade my armor. The strongest armor comes from netherite, so I needed to head into the nether. I set out to find obsidian. I had ventured deep into a cave where there was lava and was able to collect all the obsidian I needed. Using my newly collected obsidian, I then set up a portal outside and lit it. Going to the nether always makes me nervous, but here we go. I stepped into the portal and the purple haze took me away. Safely in the nether, I got right to work looking for ancient debris. Unfortunately, this wasn't going to be an easy trip, and I was soon fighting my way through. Out of the way! I fought as hard as I could and managed to clear a path. I had to hurry though, there was always something hiding around the corner. After plenty of searching, I managed to get all of the ancient debris that I needed. I also grabbed some gold. This will help me make netherite ingots, but I can also use it to finish the statue. Once I had collected everything, I headed back to the portal. On days 95 to 97, I arrived back in the overworld and made my way back to the gym. Using the ancient debris, I was able to smelt it down into netherite scraps. Then using the netherite scraps and gold, I made some netherite ingots. Now I can get truly powered up. I took all of the diamond armor and gear I had collected and upgraded everything to netherite. I had no idea what Buff Bear was going to show up with, so I had to have the best. After that, I headed outside to finish the statue. Using all of the supplies I had collected, I was finally able to give it the final touches. As I'm sure you figured out by now, it was a trophy of my two friends, Ernie and Master Balboa. As I finished the statue and admired my work, I suddenly had a vision. Zozo, it's me, Ernie. Ernie? I can't believe it. You're back. Well, no, I'm just here, in your head, but I wanted to say thank you for working so hard to avenge me. Yes, Zozo. We won't see you there, but we will be supporting you. We know you can win. Thanks, guys. I was starting to feel a bit lonely, but I feel much better now, especially since someone is going to try and poison me. Zozo, remember, 
They may have their reasons, so meet them with compassion, not anger. I nodded as the two of them vanished away. I'll do whatever it takes to win. On day 98, I woke up to the sound of a knock at my door. It was Wilbur. Uh, hello, Zozo. I uh, thought you could use a pick-me-up before your fight. I made this for you. Wilbur seemed really nervous as he passed the drink over to me. As I took a closer look at the drink, I could very clearly see that it had poison in it. It was labeled. Before I could say anything, though, Wilbur piped up. Zozo, wait. Don't drink that. It's poisoned. Yeah, I saw that. Wilbur, what's going on? I'm sorry for trying to poison you. Buff Bear is blackmailing me. He knows something about me and threatened to tell everyone if I didn't help him. What do you mean? What could be so bad that you would poison your friend? The truth is that I... I love clean water. Bathing in mud is so gross. But if anyone found out, especially the other pigs, I would be ridiculed until the day I become a pork chop. Please don't tell anyone. And please forgive me. The advice of Master Balboa repeated in my head. It's okay, Wilbur. I forgive you. And don't worry. If anyone ever gives you a problem about liking clean water, you just let me know. I've got two fists that will have a word with them. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. I decided that I would even do him one better and got to work building him his own special hot tub. I wanted him to know that he would never get made fun of here. Once the work was completed, I gathered everyone together for one final chat. They were all so excited for me and began to give me words of encouragement. I didn't know what I had done to have so many great friends. As their encouragement grew, I suddenly started to as well. Out of nowhere, I became a big buff kangaroo. Let's go kick some buff bear butt. And don't forget to hit subscribe. I can't do this without your help. On day 99, we made our way to the arena. The day of the fight had come. As I entered, I could see not much had changed from before. Buff bear and I stepped into the ring for our introductions. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the latest rumble in the rotunda! In the red corner, we have the mighty, the majestic, the powerful, the one, the only, Buff Bear! The monkeys in the crowd went wild in admiration. And in the blue corner, a kangaroo. Buff Bear and I were facing each other. He had a sly grin. <laughs> Hope you're not feeling a little under the weather today. You mean like poisoned? I feel great, actually. Turns out your friend is actually my friend. What? That useless pig. After I beat you, he's dead. Keep dreaming. We got ready for the bell. Buff Bear was going down. As the bell rang, we both leapt into action. I had been preparing for this moment for so long, I just had to win. Even then, he was still incredibly strong. Silly kangaroo. You've wasted your time at that old decrepit gym. You should be putting your talents to use as my servant. I'll never be your servant. And you're going to pay for what you've done. To Ernie and to Master Balboa. We continued to exchange blows as the monkeys around us were going crazy. I had to be careful. One slip up and he was going to be able to knock me out. I felt like I was winning and was getting some good hits in. Looks like your time is coming to an end. Huh, guess I'll stop playing around then. Oh no, it was his fight with Ernie all over again. I was in trouble. He started to really hit me and my health was really starting to drop. Just then, I heard a voice in my head. Master Balboa. Focus, Zozo, and use the eye of the tiger. Of course, the best offense was a good defense. I lowered my guard, letting myself take the full impact of Buff Bear's hit. As I did so, the eye of the tiger let me absorb the blow sending Buff Bear out of the ring and into the afterlife. I did it! The monkeys were stunned. They couldn't believe it, but I could. Justice had been served. On day 100, I was back at the gym, right where I belonged. With Buff Bear defeated, we could train and grow in peace. The world had become just a little bit safer, but we had to be ready, always. On day one, I spawned in as a zebra. Wow, I'm so little and I only have three hearts. I need to be extra careful. I looked around and saw some antelope. Then I heard someone calling me. Zozo, you're here. We love you so much. I turned and saw two zebras running over to me. These must be my parents. They nuzzled me with their noses. Oh, I love you guys too. Then out of nowhere, a savannah jeep sped by. A human dressed like a hunter jumped out and started capturing the animals. Run, Zozo. My parents leaped in front of me so I could have a chance to escape. I ran away and hid behind some rocks. I watched helplessly as the hunter caught my parents and put them in the back of his jeep. I was too little to do anything and I felt really sad. I barely had any time with my parents and now they're gone. I couldn't just wait around though. It was getting dark and I needed a safe place to stay for the night. I dug a little hole for myself behind the rocks and went to sleep. On day two, I woke up confused. I was in a hole all alone. Then I remembered my parents and I felt sad again. I climbed out of the hole only to be attacked by some snakes. Oh no, I didn't have any weapons so I had to dodge and run away. They chased after me but I started to cross a river and they stopped. Phew, that was close. The water was really strong 
island, but I finally managed to get to the other side. I really need to make some weapons for myself, otherwise I'll be snake food. I went to work, gathering some materials to make myself tools. Once I had collected plenty of stone, I put up a crafting table and used it to make a full set of stone tools. It wasn't much, but it made me feel a little bit better. This'll just have to do for now. I figured I shouldn't cross the river again, so I found a spot near a tree and made myself a little shelter for the night. It's okay, Mom and Dad. I'll find you. I promise. And with that, I fell asleep. On day three, I woke up feeling hopeful. I knew I could find my parents. I just needed a little bit of help. I'm sure someone knew where the hunter kept the animals he captured. I set out across the savanna when I noticed a baboon getting attacked by a boar. Someone help me. The baboon screamed and tried to run away, but the boar was too much for him. I'll help you. I jumped into action, distracting the boar while the baboon attacked. We managed to defeat him, and we jumped for joy. Not bad for the little guys. Hey, I'm Zozo. What's your name? I'm Barry. Thanks for saving my life. I owe you one. No problem. Hey, do you know where I can find the hunter that keeps trapping animals? He got my parents, and I could use some help getting them out. I can try. The hunter caught my family, too. I followed him to his base, but it's basically impossible to get inside. Maybe we can do it together? Sounds like a plan. But first, we should rest up. You can come live at my hut with me if you want. It'll be safe there. That sounds great. Barry and I headed back to my house, and I made him a little hut right next to mine. It was small, but it was better than living in a hole. Good night, Barry. Good night, Zozo. On days four to five, Barry and I made some adjustments. We set up a perimeter to our base and made our huts a little bit bigger. We also found some seeds so we could plant some food. It was actually starting to feel a little bit more like a home. Let's go hunt a hunter. Barry tried to look scary as he said it, but it sounded a little silly. Too much? Yeah, too much. He shrugged and we headed out. We passed through the desert and made our way further into the jungle. We crouched down as we approached the hunter's fort. It was huge, but I didn't see any guards. Just then, a bunch of baboons came running toward us. At first we thought they were going to be friendly, but then they started to attack us. Oh no, Barry, we need to run. We ran as fast as we could and eventually the baboons stopped chasing us. Why were those baboons attacking us? We're not the bad guys. I think the hunter can control the animals somehow. He wants us to be his servants. That's terrible. Were any of those baboons your family? No, I didn't recognize them. My family must be inside somewhere. We started to head home so we could reassess our situation when we saw a human up ahead. Oh no, it's another human. He's probably probably working with the hunter. We started to run away, but he called out to us. Hello, friends. No need to run. All I want is to take your picture. He held up his camera. He seemed harmless enough, and he approached us slowly. My name is Patrick. Could I perhaps stay with you so I can get some good shots? Sure. You'll be safer with us than out by yourself. Maybe you can help us get our families back from the hunter. Patrick took our picture. I would be happy to help you. The more animals, the more pictures. Then he showed us one of his pictures. We went home and helped Patrick to build a little house for himself. He seemed to really love it and took pictures of everything. Eventually, we all got tired and went to sleep. On day six to eight, I woke up to Patrick taking pictures of me. Beautiful! Even when you are drooling, you look great. He printed out the picture on his Polaroid. Yeah, take a look. I looked at the picture. It had me drooling, along with some weird symbols underneath. Huh, maybe it's a weird human thing. Patrick left to go take pictures of the rocks when Barry walked in. I don't know if we can do this, Barry. We are just a small zebra, a baboon, and a very odd human. We are going to need a lot more help in order to free our families. I think I know someone who could help. It'll take a little while to get there, but he's our best shot. All right, let's go. We headed out, leaving Patrick to keep watch of the base. We made our way across the savanna. It was really hot, but we finally made it to an oasis with a watering hole and trees. There were elephants everywhere. He's over there. He doesn't like strangers. Let me talk to him first. Barry turned toward a large tree where an elephant was sitting on a rug. Barry walked over and chatted with him for a minute before waving me over. Welcome, my young friend. What is it you seek? We want to rescue our families from the hunter. He has captured a lot of innocent animals, and he needs to be stopped. The elephant nodded. Yes, I know the perfect artifact that will help you. It is a necklace with the tooth of a lion. It has been lost, but rumor has it that it is buried at the base of a secret underground waterfall. Find the waterfall, and you'll find your necklace. How is a necklace going to help us? Ah, uh, yes. It has the power to give you the strength of ten men, or in your case, zebras. Oh, wow. Thanks so much. Barry and I were much happier as we went home. We could finally defeat the hunter. On days 9 to 10, we arrived back at the base. Patrick was taking pictures of some hippos he had befriended. Wow, what magnificent creatures. We talked to the hippos and found out that the hunter had taken some of their family too. We offered to make them a little enclosure in our base. After finishing up, they were very happy and thanked us for taking them in. I went out to go gather some materials and maybe locate the waterfall. I went back to the river because maybe the waterfall was close by. I crossed the river and saw the snakes that I had met before. Get back, you noodles. I smacked them and was able to defeat all of them. I really have gotten stronger. Maybe it won't be so hard to beat the hunter after all. On days 11 to 12, I kept exploring. I found a rock formation and inside of it was a cavern. I found some more materials and decided to go a little bit deeper. As I went down further, I was suddenly attacked by some nasty spiders. Oh, gross, none of that. It got a few hits in, but I defeated them all pretty quickly. It was then that I felt a surge of power and I transformed into a bigger zebra. Whoa, I feel amazing. I feel like I can take on anything. I continued down the cavern, hoping to find the waterfall, but there was nothing. I felt sad about that, but at least 
least I'm stronger now. I made my way out of the cavern and headed back to the base. On days 13 to 15, I was making my way back to the base when the hunter drove by in his Jeep. I'll be back for you, Zozo, right after I collect your little friends. I was so confused. How did he know my name? What did he mean about my friends? He drove away really fast and I tried to catch up, but it was hopeless. By the time I got back to the base, I realized what the hunter meant. All of my friends were gone. He must have captured all of them, but how did he get in? I looked around and found Patrick's camera on the ground. The last picture he took was of the hunter shaking hands with Barry. Traitor! Barry sold us out! I was so tired from my journey that I barely made it to my bed before I fell asleep. On day 16 to 19, I woke up discouraged. I figured I needed to move my base, so I went about collecting some stuff. I was looking around the hippo enclosure when I noticed Patrick hiding behind a rock. Patrick, you're okay. Yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm just so grateful that I was able to hide before that awful hunter took everyone away. I can't believe Barry made a deal with him. I know, it's crazy. But hey, I found your camera. I thought you might want it back. Patrick was so happy, he took a bunch of pictures of me. Then we went to scout out a new spot for our base. We worked on clearing out an area near some trees and started to build from the ground up. I built everything I thought we could need and even a little bit of extra just to keep us safe. I sure hoped no one would attack us because it was a lot of hard work. Soon, everything was complete. Patrick, we need to do all that we can to protect the animals on the savanna. I think we should build some sort of statue that will help them know that they can come here for refuge. I think that's a great idea, Zozo. We started to gather some supplies and built the base of the statue. Can you tell what it might be? On days 20 to 22, Patrick and I went looking for the underground waterfall that the elephant had told us about. We followed the river up a little ways before running into a pack of lions. We didn't know if they were friendly or not, so we approached slowly. Hello, have you seen any underground waterfalls anywhere? The lions seemed nice enough, but they were looking confused. Waterfall? Why are you looking for a waterfall? We were told by a wise elephant that we could find a special necklace buried at the base of the underground waterfall. It's actually a lion's tooth. The lions looked even more confused. There is no such thing. If anyone would know, it would be us. Now it was my turn to be confused. Then I realized it was the elephant that told me about the necklace. An elephant that Barry knew. It must have been all made up. Come on, Patrick, we need to go find that elephant and see what he actually knows. Patrick finished taking pictures of the lions and we headed to the oasis. Once we arrived, we noticed that all of the elephants were gone. Oh no, what are we going to do? I think I actually hear something over there. Patrick pointed to a large rock formation and sure enough, an elephant was hiding. It was the elephant we had talked to before. Hey you, we need some answers. The elephant trembled. He actually looked pretty scared. Please don't hurt me. My family was captured by that awful hunter. Barry told me if I lied to you, the elephants would be safe. He's a traitor. The elephant looked really shaken up. I felt bad for him. I understand how you feel. Barry betrayed us too. And now the hunter has our friends and my parents. But if you come with us, you can have a safe home at our base. The elephant perked up. Oh, thank you. I would love to come with you. Of course. I don't think I know your name though. I'm Zozo. I'm Neville. Nice to meet you, Neville. We'll take care of you. We headed back to the base and made it home just in time for the sun to set. On days 23 to 26, I went to make some improvements to our base. I added some new fencing, a large garden, and fixed up a place for the elephant to stay. He seemed pretty happy about it, but I was feeling a little discouraged. What's wrong, Zozo? You've done a great job at the base. No way anyone is going to get inside. It's not that. I'm just upset that the lion's tooth necklace isn't real. It was my only hope to get my parents and friends back. I'm sorry you feel that way, Zozo, but guess what? The necklace is real. What? Then you didn't lie to us. We still have a chance to save my family. Well, it is real. It's just not a lion's tooth necklace. It's a special totem. It has the ability to turn you invisible, but it only works on those with pure intentions. That's perfect. It's going to be easy now. I guess I should also mention, the totem is guarded by a crocodile. Nobody can get past him. Between the three of us, I'm sure we can get the totem. Using the materials I had on hand, I made some weapons and armor for the whole team. Then I went ahead and passed them out to everyone. We were ready to fight. We locked the base up and headed out towards the river. On days 27 to 31, Patrick, Neville, and I went looking for the crocodile. We passed a group of hogs on the way, and they tried to attack Patrick. Hey, I only wanted a picture. He tried to run away, but they kept getting hits on him. Neville and I charged at them, and after a minute, we defeated all of them. Great job, Neville. No way is the crocodile going to get us. We started to head out, when we noticed Patrick wasn't following. He was looking down at his feet. Hey, are you okay, Patrick? I just feel pretty sad. All I've done is hide or run away. I couldn't even save any of our friends earlier, and it just makes me feel useless. You're not useless, Patrick. You're a friend, and you've helped more than you know. We all have different strengths. Just use your strengths. Patrick seemed cheered up by this and nodded his head. Thanks, Zozo. You really are a good friend. Patrick hugged me, and then Neville hugged us. It was a little squished, but it was a nice little moment. Neville even managed to take a selfie with Patrick's camera. Nice! We kept trekking through the savanna, all feeling a little bit better about ourselves. On days 32 to 35, we finally reached a watering hole. This is the watering hole, but I don't see the crocodile. I looked around, and sure enough, it looked empty. 
Maybe he went to go hunt somewhere else. When all of a sudden there was a commotion. I felt something try to grab me and I ran out as fast as I could. Whoa, that was close. It was the crocodile all right. He was just super stealthy. How dare you disturb me? Can't you see I'm resting? We didn't mean to disturb you. We just want the totem you're guarding. And why would I give it to you? There was a hunter driving through the savanna, capturing innocent animals. He's captured our family and friends. We only want the totem so we can defeat him. How do I know you deserve it? You could just be lying to me. Well, if I didn't deserve it, then it wouldn't work anyway, right? The crocodile paused. I suppose that is true, but I can't just let you take it. You have to earn it. Bring me the golden apples off of the tree on that hill, then you can have the totem. The crocodile pointed toward the hill. On top was a small tree. All right, we'll do it for you. Not all of you, only you, little zebra. Prove to me that you are worthy. I wasn't sure I could do it myself, but I had to try. A lot of animals were counting on me. Okay, I'll go. I headed up the hill to retrieve the golden apples. On days 36 to 39, I made my way up the hill, but it wasn't just a hill, it was a mountain. Wow, this is a lot taller than I thought. I finally made it to the top and saw the apple tree. Whoa, that tree is bigger than I thought too. How was I going to reach all those apples? Just then, a monkey with a fancy robe appeared right in front of me. Hello, traveler. Come to retrieve some apples, yes? Yes, the crocodile down the mountain needs them. Ah, uh, yes. It's been a while since he has sent someone up here to retrieve some. The last wasn't so lucky. What the heck does that mean? I shall present a scenario to you, and then you must answer a question. Answer correctly, and the apples are yours. Answer incorrectly, and you will die. Wait, die? Are you serious? Here is the scenario. Two monkeys are traveling together down the bank of the river. When they see a banana lying on the ground, it seems to be a normal banana. They look across the river and see a tree. In the tree is a third monkey. He seems to be gathering bananas. One of the traveling monkeys says to his friend that they should take the banana on the ground, since the monkey in the tree is already harvesting bananas. How should the friend respond? I thought about it for a moment. They shouldn't take the banana. It's not theirs to take. The monkey nodded and smiled. You are correct, young zebra. In fact, if they had taken the banana, they would have taken the only good banana, since the ones being gathered were indeed rotten. They would have taken the only banana that the third monkey could have found for days. He would have starved if he didn't have that banana. These are yours for the taking. Wow, thank you. Stay true to yourself and remember what is most important. I thanked him again and he disappeared, along with the tree. Whoa, where did they go? I didn't know, but I didn't want the apples to disappear too. I hurried to collect them before heading down down the mountain. On days 40 to 43, I arrived at the base of the mountain. My friends had set up a little camp next to the watering hole. I went over to the watering hole where the crocodile was barely visible. I retrieved the golden apples, just like you asked. You've done well. The crocodile submerged for a moment before returning with a rock in his mouth. Use it well, young zebra. You have earned it. On the outside of the rock were those strange symbols, just like the ones in the picture Patrick took of me. Maybe it wasn't just a human thing after all. I twisted open the rock and saw the totem. There it is. I better hurry back to the camp. As I arrived back to the camp, Patrick tried to take a picture of me, but I immediately activated the totem and turned invisible. Whoa, Zozo, where did you go? He took a picture of nothing because I was gone. I walked behind him and then deactivated the totem. I'm right here, Patrick. Wow, that's amazing. That hunter doesn't stand a chance. On days 44 to 49, we traveled back to the base. Patrick and Neville went to the river while I went to look for some food. We had been walking a long time and needed a rest. We even found some nearby plants we could eat. All of a sudden, a horde of boars came out from behind the plants. Oh, sorry, are these your plants? Without a moment's hesitation, they started to attack me. Hey, I just wanted some food. You don't need to hurt me. I managed to dodge and defeat all of them by myself. Just then, I felt a surge of power and I leveled up into an adult zebra. Wow, I'm a lot bigger now. I noticed that it had more hearts too. I felt like I was the strongest zebra in the world. Taking down that hunter was going to be super easy. I went back to my friends and we talked about our plans. I think we should continue to build our statue once we get back and then gather some supplies for better weapons. That's a great idea, Zozo. You can teach me to fight better so I can help you. Yeah, we'd love to help with the statue. We need as many animals as possible to know that they have a safe place to stay. I agreed and we headed the rest of the way back to the base. On days 50 to 53, we arrived at the base. Using more of our supplies, Patrick Neville and I got to work on the next part of the statue. It was really starting to come along. Can you guess what it is now? It was looking really good, so we took a break and tried to work on our base. We set up some new enclosures just in case we had more animals come by. We felt really good about our progress when we heard a knock at the door. I looked outside and there were a bunch of lions. Hey, you're the lions we met earlier. Yes, hello. 
We saw your statue and wanted to know if we could stay here. Some of our friends were taken by the hunter, and we have nowhere else to go. Could we stay here with you? Of course. We opened the door and the lion sauntered in. We showed them one of the enclosures we built, and they loved it. They immediately made themselves at home. Thank you so much. We would love to give you a gift as a token of our appreciation. One of the lions gave me some diamonds and gold as a present. Wow, this is incredible. Thank you so much. I immediately began working with the diamonds at my crafting table and made myself some better armor. Wow, this is amazing. That night, we all gathered around the campfire and had a fun time. Patrick even tried to juggle for us. It was a good way to end the night. On days 54 to 57, I woke up to someone screaming. I raced out of my house to find animals running around like crazy. I noticed that the base's front door was open and there were hyenas running around. Oh no, we've got to get them out of here. The lions and I were able to defeat some of them and drive the rest of them away. Phew, that was close. But how did they get in? One of the lions stepped forward, his head hung low. I am so sorry, Zozo. I went out during the night to do some hunting and I must have forgotten to close the door all the way when I came back in. You can kick me out if you want to. I deserve it. He looked so upset, but I knew it was an accident. It's okay. Nobody got hurt and nothing was taken, so we are okay. He seemed relieved, and we all headed back to our houses. When I walked inside, it looked like one of my chests had been opened. I ran over, and I realized my totem of invisibility was gone. Oh, no. Neville heard me from outside and peeked in. Is everything okay, Zozo? No, my totem is gone. Those hyenas must have taken it. Oh, no. We need to get it back. And fast. We told Patrick what had happened, and he agreed to come with us to find the hyenas. I think I might even know where they live. I saw them once near a cavern, and I tried to take a picture, but they tried to eat me, so I ran away. That's awesome, Patrick. Not the almost getting eaten part, the knowing where to go part. He nodded and smiled. I know. I talked to the lions before we left and told them to let in any other animals that needed help. They agreed, and we headed toward the cavern to retrieve my totem. On days 58 to 62, we traveled toward the cavern that Patrick told us about. We ran into some Degus on the way and told them to go to our base if they wanted a safe place to stay. They happily agreed. We also ran into some ostriches and some frogs. We extended ended the same invite to them as the other animals, and they accepted. Wow, I hope we have enough space for everybody. The whole savanna wouldn't be able to fit in our base, but we could sure try. We kept traveling and gathered some food and seeds as we went. We were going to have a lot more mouths to feed when we got back. We finally arrived at the cavern, but it looked empty. Are you sure this is the right place, Patrick? Yes. See, look. We picked up something off the ground in the middle of some tall grass. This is the lens that I dropped before. I was too scared to come back for it, so I just left it. We continued into the cavern, which eventually turned into a large underground cave. We peered over a rock and saw the hyenas down below. There were a ton of them. Some of them were just lounging around, but some were fighting over something. I took a closer look and realized it was my totem. Hey, they have my totem. I whispered to my friends and motioned toward the group of hyenas. There are so many of them. How are we ever going to get your totem back? I thought for a minute and then came up with a plan. I whispered it to my friends and we got into our positions. One, two, three, now! Patrick started flashing his camera from the opening of the tunnel. The hyenas all saw the lights and went running towards Patrick. He hurried and hid behind a rock by the opening as all the hyenas came rushing out. Neville came out from behind his rock and tried to roll a large stone in front of the entryway. I ran out from behind my rock and went down to grab the totem that the hyenas had dropped in the chaos. Got it! I ran up to see Neville struggling with the rock. The hyenas were trying to push it back open. Zozo, can you turn us invisible? Then we can sneak out. There's too many of them. Even if we're invisible, they'll bump into us and find us. Go and defeat the hunter, Zozo. Make sure all the animals are safe. Neville, what are you saying? Don't do it. Neville then pushed the rock out of the way and ran outside. No, Neville! Neville ran outside as the hyenas chased him, getting hits in. There was no way he was going to survive. I heard and had Patrick climb on my back, and then I activated the totem. We both disappeared, and we ran. We watched as Neville was defeated. We had to get out of there. We had no choice but to leave. On day 63 to 66, we arrived back at the base. Patrick and I were very sad that Neville was gone, but we were going to make sure his sacrifice wasn't in vain. I had my totem, and there was no way I was going to let anyone steal it again. I made an even better safe and hid that in a secret spot in my room. Nobody would ever find it here. We helped all the animals in their new homes and planted some more food in the garden. We went to work on the statue, but noticed it was already finished. Who finished the statue? We did. The lions came up to me and all bowed at my feet. We owe you our lives, young zebra. We hope you accept our work on your statue as a way to show our gratitude. Wow, it's not every day that the king of the savannah bows to you. Thank you, but I'm not the true hero. Neville sacrificed himself so that I could get the totem back. You should be honoring him. Then we shall honor our fallen friend and build a statue of him as well. We all worked together and made a statue of Neville standing on the landing of our other statue. He was raising his trunk in triumph. It was perfect, and I knew Neville would have liked it. On day 67 to 70, I woke up to Patrick taking pictures of me again. What?
wonderful. Patrick, not now. I'm trying to sleep. Sorry, but I had a thought, Zozo. What if the totem gets stolen again? Or even lost while we are inside the base? We definitely need a backup plan. We should scout out the base, just in case. That's a really good idea, Patrick. Perfect. I'll meet you outside. Don't forget your totem, just in case. He left, and I looked toward my safe. I actually felt safer with it here, so I didn't bring it. I would tell him later. We gathered the animals to let them know we were leaving. We told them that if any animals came by, they were more than welcome to stay, unless they were hyenas. And don't forget to shut the door all the way. One of the lions looked away in embarrassment, but he understood. All right, we will be back in time to make some final preparations. Then we will get our friends and families back. Everyone cheered to that, and we took off. On the way there, Patrick took some pictures while I gathered some seeds. We also ran into some small monkeys. We told them where our base was, and they started to head that way. It felt good to know that we were helping. On day 71 to 74, Patrick and I snuck around to the same spot where Barry and I had been earlier. We looked around the base, and it seemed bigger than the last time. I can't believe it. I looked where Patrick was looking, and I saw Barry. It looked like he had gotten bigger. There were other baboons there, and Barry seemed to be bossing them around. He sold us out so he could be the boss of the baboons? Well, I guess so. I still couldn't believe it. Barry had been my friend, and he seemed genuinely interested in helping me. Hey, Zozo, I'm glad you are my friend. Thanks, Patrick. Where did that come from? I was just thinking. And you've been really awesome to me. Just wanted to thank you for everything you've done. Then Patrick hugged me. Thanks, Patrick. All of a sudden, we were surrounded by baboons. How did I not even notice? Huh, <laughs> right on time. I looked and I saw Barry looking down at us. We don't want to fight you, Barry. Well, that's funny, because I do want to fight you. Barry swung his arm and smacked Patrick. No, stop it. As soon as you give me the totem. What? The lion's tooth necklace? It doesn't exist. You know that. No, Zozo. The totem of invisibility that you got. What? How did you find out about that? I have friends on the inside. All of a sudden, Patrick got up and walked over to Barry. No, Patrick, you're working for him? Why? I had to, Zozo. After our base was attacked the first time, Barry told me to keep my eye on you. He threatened to hurt you if I didn't help him. The hunter wanted more animals, and they told me to gather them all in a safe place so they could collect them later. How have you even been talking? I've been sneaking out at night. I told them about the totem a few days ago. The lions thought they had left the door open, but it was me. It's all my fault. Neville is gone. Patrick hung his head down low. He looked so sad. Barry hit Patrick again. Enough, you. Now, Zozo, give me what I want, and maybe I won't hurt Patrick again. I don't have the totem with me. What? Why didn't you bring it? I thought it'd be safer at the base. Why do you need it anyway, Barry? Why do you think? The hunter will be able to turn invisible and trap any animal he pleases. And I'll be his right-hand man, or baboon, king of the monkeys. It won't even work for you, Barry. It only works for the pure of heart. I had to earn it. So you say. I think you just think you're better than me. He hit Patrick again. Stop it. I'll take you to our base. That's just what I wanted to hear. Move it. On day 75 to 78, we slowly traveled back to the base. Patrick and I were bound and dragged behind the other baboons. I wondered why they even agreed to help Barry. I tried to talk to one of them. Psst. Hey, we can get you out of here and you can live with us. You'll be safe there. The monkey looked at me sadly. We'll never be safe. Not with the hunter and Barry around. It isn't the worst, actually. The hunter gives us food and a place to sleep, but we are basically his servants. We can't leave because they'll just find us again. I felt really bad for the monkey, but we couldn't give up now. We can defeat them. If you help us escape, we can all work together. The monkey thought about it for a second, but then Barry started yelling. Hey, no talking to the prisoners. He hit the sad monkey, who immediately ran up ahead, pulling me along. Well, at least I tried. We soon stopped at a water pond to rest. I walked over to Patrick. He wouldn't even look at me. Patrick, I know why you did all of this, and I don't hate you. He looked at me. Really? Yeah, you were just trying to protect me, but I'm not giving up. We will defeat Barry and the hunter if it's the last thing I do. Patrick looked back down at his feet and sighed. I don't know, Zozo. We are kind of in a sticky situation. I think maybe we can get the baboons on our side. All of a sudden, Barry hit me. No talking, prisoner. Keep moving. I tried to formulate a plan the rest of the way. At this point, we just had to hope for a miracle. On day 79 to 84, we were getting closer to the base. Suddenly, Barry stopped. Bring Zozo forward. The sad baboon brought me closer to Barry, still keeping me bound. Zozo, you will go in and retrieve the totem. You will then tell all the animals to gather outside for a meeting. You won't tell them about us, or I will destroy Patrick. I'll do it. Just don't hurt him again. I made my way to the base and went inside. A few animals greeted me, and I quickly said hello, then walked away. I went to my house and opened the safe. The totem was still inside. I grabbed it and went back to the middle of the base. Everyone, I need your attention. Patrick and I have an important announcement to make, but we need you to come outside to see. The animals all gathered together and we started to go outside. I felt so bad, but I hoped that maybe we could defeat the baboons and Barry together. As we walked out, I didn't see anyone. Where did they go? Then the baboons and Barry jumped down from the trees. They ambushed us and my friends started to panic. Zozo! It's okay, I'll handle this. I was just about to attack one of the baboons when all of a sudden they surrounded Barry. Wait, what? What are you doing, you fools? Capture them! Stay down! It was the baboon that I had talked to. I guess he had gotten the other baboons to agree to fight. Hey, you're helping us. We want our freedom back, and you seem like a capable guy. We'll help you. 
Perfect. Wait, where's Patrick? I heard Barry laugh. It's too late for your friend, Zozo. He's gone. No, I ran further into the trees. I looked around and I finally found Patrick. He was sitting up against a rock. He didn't look good at all. Hey, buddy. Did we win? This one? Yeah, but we still need you for another fight. Patrick laughed weakly. I'll try my hardest, but I'll need some help. Of course. I helped him up and let him ride on my back as we slowly made our way back to the base. We got back to the clearing, but we didn't see Barry anywhere. Where's Barry? The animals all looked at each other. I thought you were watching him. Me? I don't even know who that guy is. The animals all grumbled and pointed at each other. I shook my head. It doesn't matter. He's gone now. Wait, look. Barry had gone into our base. On days 85 to 89, I chased after Barry. He had some flint and steel and was going to light our base on fire. Barry, stop. This is crazy. You can't stop me, Zozo. I'm going to be king of the monkeys if it's the last thing I do. Strange. That's what I was thinking earlier, but about my friends. Barry, stop. It isn't too late for you to change. Why would you want to be king of the monkeys when you can be a friend to all animals? You sound like a hippie. What's a hippie? Never mind. I'm done talking. Barry set the side of the ostrich enclosure on fire, when all of a sudden a big splash of water rained down on him, extinguishing the fire. I looked up and saw the water had come from the trunk of the Neville statue. We had a water feature while you were gone. One of the lions was pressing a button on the side of the wall. What absolutely perfect timing. I walked towards Barry. This is your last chance, Barry. Come join us or I'll have to defeat you. He looked so angry. No, I will be king of the monkeys. I will. I... <laughs> All of a sudden, he slumped down and started to cry. I stood there, shocked. I don't want to be king of the monkeys. Honestly, I just wanted some friends. Well, to be fair, you have a weird way of showing it. I still didn't trust him completely, but I helped him up. It's okay, Barry. You have a home here. On days 90 to 94, Barry moved back in. Some of the animals weren't too happy about it, but he tried his hardest to make it up to them. He made some cool improvements to people's houses, the base, and even helped Patrick. He seemed to really feel bad about what he had done, but he was making it better. Later, he came up to me. Zozo, I need to tell you something about the hunter's base. Okay, what is it? I know a secret way I can sneak into his base around the side. Oh, awesome, so you can open the door. It's not that simple. The controls for the gate are in his private room. Ah, I see. I thought for a moment. You need to go back and pretend to still work with him. You need to betray him now. What if he catches me while I'm trying to do this? He won't, I'll be sure to protect you. Okay, I trust you, Zozo. On days 95 to 97, we all made our preparations. We forged armor and swords for everyone, just in case. Now, Zozo, I'm too weak still. I need to stay here. But Patrick, I need you. We've come this far together, and I need you there with me. He can ride on my back. One of the lions bowed to Patrick. I shall carry you, and I will promise your safety, good friend. Patrick agreed. I'm proud of all of you. Today, we are going to rescue our families and our friends. The Savannah will be free again. Everyone cheered, and we headed out to the hunter's base. On day 98, we arrived at the hunter's base. It looked the same as usual, which was good. Barry came up to me. All right, Barry, this is your cue. He looked nervous. It'll be fine. You remember the signal, right? He nodded. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. He headed toward the side of the base and disappeared around the corner. We waited a few minutes and then we heard a loud monkey call. That was our signal to go. Then we saw the front gate start to open. Good job, Barry. We charged through the front gate and into the courtyard as we started looking around. I even saw my parents. Zozo. Mom, Dad, we're here to rescue you. My friend started working on getting the cages open while I headed upstairs. On day 99, I found the lair of the hunter. He had all sorts of animal pelts all over the place and even more guns. Sheesh, this place gave me the creeps. I knew we would meet again, young zebra. I turned around, ready to attack. The hunter was there, but he was holding Barry hostage. Give me my friend back, hunter. Oh, you mean this traitor? I don't think so. I think instead I'll just add him to my collection. He waved his gun around the room full of pelts. No! I activated the totem and disappeared. I knocked the hunter away from Barry and told him to run. Then I charged the hunter. He blindly shot around the room, but he had no idea where I was. Barry wasn't so lucky, though, and got hit as he made his escape. That's a cheap move, Zebra. Disappearing so I can't see ya? Says the guy who captures animals and then enslaves them. He got a few lucky shots in, but I was able to deliver the final blow. I unequipped the totem and ran over to Barry. He had been hit and he looked pretty bad. Oh no, Barry, I'm so sorry. I promised I would keep you safe. It's okay, Zozo. I did what I needed to do. Thanks for being my friend. Barry put his head down and was gone. He had made many mistakes, but in the end, chose to do the right thing. On day 100, I felt a surge of power and I leveled up into a large adult zebra. I was stronger than ever and knew that from now on, I could protect all of the animals in the savannah. My friends had figured out how to open the cage doors, freeing all of the animals from the hunter's base. I was finally able to talk to my parents. It was a beautiful reunion. We were all free at last. If you want to see what I'll do next, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching.